Chapter 121, The Accused Afterglow of Expansion The Joint Meeting in Progress A week passed in such a dull and busy way. However, during this period of time, the Gallo Star Territory and the Afterglow Star Territory were not as peaceful as Chen Ming spent every day. During his daily work and research, Chen Ming has been paying attention to several places where there may be big changes next. This includes the buffer zone bordering the Afterglow Star Field and the Gallo Star Field. This week according to Gamma B Survey. It started the day after Chen Ming chatted with Bai Quan of the 14th Army Corps. A large number of reconnaissance drones or small fleets appeared in this buffer zone. And they were constantly penetrating into the Afterglow Star territory. Moreover, these drones or fleets have no intention of conflict with the Afterglow fleet that is tracking the past. They will flee as soon as they are discovered. If the drone cannot escape, it may even choose to self-destruct on the spot completely giving no chance for the Afterglow fleet to arrest it. And those undiscovered human ships are still continuing to penetrate deeper into the Afterglow star field. Yue could only rely on dispatching a large number of ships to barely solve these spacecraft. But it could only solve it temporarily. Humanity is still spending a lot of resources to continue transporting spacecraft to the buffer zone. With a very clear purpose of going deeper and transmitting more intelligence back. This situation lasted for about two days. On the border between Afterglow and the Machine Tribe, that is, near the galaxy where Gamma Z is located. A large number of human ships also appeared, starting from the Empire. They traveled through the entire buffer zone between Yue and the Machine Tribe, starting from different locations in bits and pieces, like the other side, and gradually penetrated into Yue's territory. Even though Yue is at war with the Machine Race all the year round, there is a planet with a high degree of development that is semi-military and semi-industrial. Any spacecraft that wants to enter the Afterglow star field will be attacked head-on. But under the current large-scale invasion by humans regardless of cost, Yue has no way to completely block the human ships. And for humans who seem to only want to detect intelligence, they only need to allow drones equipped with disposable high-intensity signal transmitters to cross Afterglow's defense line in a short time. Just keep going deep, keep recording, keep scanning each planet with high intensity, and transmit back the information on the geographical features various buildings and various moving objects. As for the content of the information transmitted back, that is not important at all, because they already knew his location from Chen Ming before. Such a large-scale investigation was obviously designed to interfere with Yu Hui's judgment and make Yu Hui think that they still didn't know Chen Ming's location, so as to relax their vigilance. And this action also has another meaning. That is, the 14th Army Corps has already begun the final preparations before the rescue work. The constant distraction of Afterglow is part of preparation. And Chen Ming based on the investigation of Gamma B. And the information sent by Gamma A. Who is now with Hui Ao all day long. It can be found that humans are intentionally or unintentionally arranging these exploration drones and spaceships to gradually concentrate on the galaxy where Chen Ming was staying before. This is also a means to make Yu Wei make wrong judgments. After all, it is impossible for humans not to have any clues about Chen Ming. If there are clues, there must be a final target. Therefore, the galaxy that Chen Ming left before could just be used as a bait for humans to deal with the afterglow. All these signs indicate that the 14th Legion will make substantial moves before the psychic equipment is expected to arrive seven days later. The target is definitely near Chen Ming's current location. Although human activities do not seem to have any impact on the galaxy where Chen Ming is located. After all, the distance is there. It still takes time to react and prepare. And compared to a colony, Chen Ming is definitely more important. However, since the 14th Legion has plans to do this, it should carefully consider all aspects of Yu Wei. And it should also know the different ways Yu Wei responds. So since Chen Ming is not a professional combatant, I believe they will be done with this matter. He didn't put all his eggs in the same basket anyway. The rescue of the 14th Legion really had an accident, and Chen Ming still had other ways to go. Therefore, Chen Ming investigated a Gamma B that humans had begun to infiltrate from the buffer zone of the Afterglow Machine Tribe into the Afterglow Star Territory. In Gamma Z, Afterglow's usual missions to free Afterglow individuals also included a search for the human fleet. Of the task, just for safety reasons, Gamma Z went to another galaxy. Of course, this is based on the premise that Gamma Z has obtained enough chips by destroying mechanical battleships in the previous period. Even if he leaves here, Gamma Z will be able to reach beta level within a few days. Then it can return to the place where Chen Ming currently controls the largest number of afterglows and unify the overall situation for Chen Ming. Thinking of this, Chen Ming took a look at the afterglows he controlled. 
At present, there are many places in the entire Afterglow Star territory where Qinming controls Afterglow. Naturally, this also includes the Afterglow Industrial Colony where Qinming initially stayed, which has now become a human reverse decoy. But even today, there are only five Afterglow AIs controlled by Qinming. Two of them were previously arranged as independent small exploration stations and had no chance of contacting other Afterglows. The remaining three Yue located in the mining field have never changed jobs. And there are no new Afterglows coming here. So there is no way to contact the outside world. It cannot develop at all. Fortunately, after returning to this galaxy, Hui Wang was responsible for some cleanup work in various places within the galaxy. Therefore, I have also had interactions with these five Afterglow AIs. But Qin Ming still wasn't completely sure about the glory. So he played it safe. Qin Ming still kept these five after we normal and did not have any other contact. After all, this place is nothing to Qin Ming. The afterglow he controls is mainly in the other two places. One is the first place Gamma Z arrived after returning to the afterglow star field, which is the supply point planet. The situation here is much better than the planet Qin Ming stayed on. After all, no Yue would pay attention to Gamma Z, who couldn't fight with Qin Ming and left immediately. Moreover, what Qin Ming immediately controlled was the afterglow at a supply point where he could come into contact with a lot of free afterglow. Therefore, as long as Yuhui came to the supply point later, he would basically find various reasons and excuses for the original Yuhui of the supply point to still have a chance. Connect the Afterglow spaceship, which is only here for supplies, to the industrial equipment on the colony. Then, there is no more. As long as it comes into contact with the industrial equipment controlled by Qin Ming's after we, then the contacted after we will also be controlled by Qin Ming, and accepted it all without any unusual signs. And the Yuhui on the spaceship that had just been controlled from the supply point could always go to various places and find various reasons to connect directly with other Yue. Or just like Gamma Z did at the beginning. Find other supply points. Access the supply point equipment by connecting to the database. And assimilate them. As long as all the supply points on a planet are controlled. There will no longer be any afterglow on this planet that can escape Chen Ming's clutches. Of course, in order for everything to look reasonable and normal, Qin Ning would not let these Yue drive a ship to visit the supply points of the entire planet. Just let them follow the normal behavioral logic and rely on different individuals to gradually control all the supply points on the planet. If we really want to control the supply points of the entire planet quickly and without being discovered, we can only rely on reasonable overall planning. But Qin Ming's computing power is not yet capable of this. So he can only wait until Gamma Z reaches beta level before trying again. But despite all the restrictions, as of today, there are already one-fifth of the afterglow on the planet with the crystal crabs where Gamma Z originally landed, all of which are controlled by Qin Ming. There are also some afterglows in key departments. For example, Yu Wei has the authority to build a space elevator for the convenience of material transfer. And Yu Wei is in charge of the material transfer authority of various high-level resource mining sites. In addition, although there is no established plan on the planet, 80% of the supply points have been controlled by Yue individuals through their normal activities. The afterglow on this planet has completely shaped the climate. Within a few days, the entire planet will be completely controlled by Qin Ming. And the mental pressure that such a large number of afterglows put on Qin Ming was even worse than actually controlling a frigate. Therefore, Qin Ming is very confident about the future development of these afterglows. In addition, in addition to the planet where the crystal crabs are located, the entire galaxy outside is also filled with them at this time. There are two other colonies in this galaxy, although only about one-tenth of the number of afterglows are controlled by Qin Ming. But again, many supply points on these two planets have been controlled. And Yu Wei, who was controlled by Qin Ming, was also actively developing towards key parts of the planet. After the afterglow of the energy crystal crab planet takes care of the planet, the remaining two planets will also become Qin Ming's possession in a short period of time. It seems that the only problem now is that there is indeed no afterglow above the beta level in different colonies. But there are a total of three industrial colonies in the galaxy, all of which are very developed. And there is also a colony with crystal crabs. Therefore, there must be an alpha in the galaxy who is in charge of the overall situation. There is a high probability that it will be in charge of everything on an independent space station inside the galaxy. The afterglow controlled by Qin Ming is in the galaxy. Very early on. He discovered a space station in the orbit of a hot planet close to the star that was not open to ordinary afterglow individuals. The alpha afterglow within the galaxy must be there, although ordinary afterglow does not have permission to enter. 
Jin Ning has also found an afterglow individual who has permission to enter the galaxy. Next, we only need to control it at the right time and then find a suitable reason to control it before the alpha level afterglow can react. You must know that it has only been a week since Gamma Z left its seeds here and it has already penetrated several key places on the planet. Expansion in the other two colonies is slower but also very efficient. As long as a few more days are given, the afterglow controlled by Chen Ming will engulf the entire galaxy. Except for the galaxy where the crystal crab planet is located. The second best development momentum of afterglow controlled by Chen Ming is the industrial colony on the front line of afterglow and the machine tribe, which Gamma Z stayed with. In addition to its large amount of military equipment and excavated resources sent directly to military factories. This planet also has another feature. There are many supply points here. And the area is often very large. Because battles often occur here on the front line. A large number of afterglow individuals return here every moment and need repairs. As the demand for supply points increases, more and bigger supply points will naturally be built. As long as the supply points where Gamma Z has been, all of them will control the individuals of afterglow with a higher efficiency than the supply points on the Crystal Crab side. So far, many military factories on the planet have fallen under Chen Ming's control, but they are still maintaining the previous production orders. At the same time, there are also a considerable number of Yuhui who have superior logic blocks in combat and are controlled by Chen Ning. Almost each of them has its own spaceship. And its combat effectiveness is considerable. If you add up all the afterglows that Chen Ning currently controls, it is already a force that cannot be underestimated. But it's not enough. For the entire star field of afterglow, these current afterglows are not enough. If Chen Ming dares to take action directly now, the final result will be that the planet is destroyed. The fleet is destroyed. And all the afterglows controlled by him die. Even though there are many Yue who can escape by means of spaceships. Without Yue's own industrial colony, Chen Ming simply cannot afford the current number of Yue and Yue spaceships. And there will definitely be a big cleanup inside Yue. Any Yue with special performance will not be able to continue to rely on Yue to survive. Yue as a whole will definitely reach a new level of strict control over external materials. There is no chance that Chen Ning can continue to obtain material support from Yuhui. At that time, he may be forced by the situation to do something he doesn't want to do. So until today, Chen Ning has not regarded the afterglows he controlled as part of his own power. But as existence is similar to mercenaries, this is the only reason. He can't support these fleets now. When one day Chen Ming's logistics capabilities can keep up, Chen Ning will consider bringing these Yuhui under his command. So now, Chen Ning still plans to continue to wait for the afterglow to slowly expand. Moreover, some of the afterglows he controlled had spread to the surrounding galaxies long before the afterglow individuals on the Crystal Crab planet had developed. These spreading afterglows will be like viruses spreading without any symptoms at all. And no individual can detect them. When it erupts, it will bring about unprecedented horrific effects for afterglow. After Chen Ning confirmed the overall situation of the afterglow he controlled, he devoted himself to daily research. His research on the frigate shield he originally designed has entered the final stage. And a result should be available in the next few days. At the same time, far away in the Galastar territory of the human empire, in the general command room where the 14th army is currently stationed, an offline joint meeting is taking place. As long as there was a legitimate reason for rescuing Chen Ming, they all sent people here. The meeting was already halfway through. In the center of the conference table in front of Bai Quan, a three-dimensional projection is showing the entire afterglow star field. Before they sent out drones and fleets in large numbers to scan many galaxies in the afterglow star region, most of the galaxies displayed above had very detailed and accurate information. Among them, the galaxy where Chen Ming has been and the galaxy where Chen Ming is now are highlighted. Let the attendees' attention basically focus on this. Bai Quan moved his hand and zoomed in on the industrial colony galaxy where Chen Ming had been, revealing the conditions inside the galaxy. The industrial colony planet where Chen Ming stayed was specially marked. He cleared his throat and said, The next step is the planning for the second half. We have currently dispatched a large number of drones and small fleets to attract Afterglow's attention. And now it is obvious that Yu Wei has been fooled. They believe that we have and only discovered that Chen Ming is on this planet. So they are actively cooperating with us and deploying more ships here. They really hope that we will only focus on this place. We will continue to implement the original plan before the estimated time of delivery of Afterglow's psychic equipment. Send enough fleets to this system to attract Afterglow's firepower. Then according to the previous agreement, 
Shinda Company will be responsible for this matter. Bai Quan looked at the representatives of Shinda Company at the meeting and said, I need you to show enough desire to get close to this planet. But we have to control the scale carefully. We cannot successfully land on the planet directly to ensure that Yuhui will allocate enough fleet power to find you first. Is there a problem? The representative of Sinda Company and the director in charge of the Pirate Space Station said with a slightly unhappy face. No, but I hope that the 14th Legion can keep its promise. Sinda Company received the news that Qin Ming had been transferred to another place, as well as the subsequent investigation of the situation of the galaxy to which Qin Ming was transferred. It was already clear that they could not rely on their own battleship to rescue Qin Ming alone. Therefore, this director was sent to the 14th Legion to cooperate with the 14th Legion to complete subsequent tasks to protect their final interests, Sky Steel. As long as Sky Steel's profits can eventually fall into their hands, even if Chen Ming is gone, it is still an acceptable result. Bai Quan didn't intend to be greedy for Sky Steel from the beginning. So he agreed decisively. Don't worry. Everyone here is a witness. He withdrew his gaze and continued. Follow up. When Sindar Company's battleship successfully attracted the attention of Afterglow's battleship. This is the time for our remaining fleet to jump here. Bai Quan zoomed in on the projection in the center of the conference table and refocused on Chen Ming's current planet. And there is a precisely marked location on the projection of this planet. This location is a rough latitude and longitude coordinate based on Chen Ming's own observations of the starry sky. It will be used as a reference for rescue operations. I have confirmed the specific coordinates with Chen Ming a few days ago. He can help us locate him by sending out a specific signal frequency on the planet when our fleet arrives. As long as Yu Wei's defense line is broken by then, the deployment of ground troops will be fully guaranteed by our 14th Army Corps. The final rescue mission is also ours to carry out. At that time, we will arrange for a cruiser to take him away through the jump. Bai Quan did not say much about the mission of the 14th Legion and quickly jumped to the next stage. After the rescue is successful, the remaining spacecraft need to jump into the core galaxy of Afterglow. Didn't see it here, Bai Quan said, zooming in on the galaxy again and locating it to a galaxy in the center of a colony at the core of the Afterglow galaxy. Among the dozens of galaxies in this core area, only this one has a volcanic planet with frequent geological activities. The Kletka supercomputer that requires extreme low temperature environment for cooling must be here. In order to destroy it, what we need to solve is that there must be a planetary shield generator set up on the planet. This requires specialized EMP weapons. Bai Quan looked at the representative of Tachyon Technology. The Tachyon Technology representative asked, Are the drones we provide good quality? It's good. Then our weapons will still have the same quality. Bai Quan nodded and continued. Our goal is to destroy Kleka. And we are expected to encounter three Afterglow battleships on the way. The Tachyon representative immediately said, Our main ship is already on the way. A model class battleship. It just appeared on your front line some time ago. You should know. So, what are you doing? Bai Quan waved his hand and projected the appearance of three battleships on the conference table. Without exception, they all had extremely exaggerated thick armor by their owners. Two offensive class heavy battleships and one Legion class aviation battleship. We are the main force in the battle against Yue. The Tachyon Technology representative nodded and looked at the government representative next door. Bai Quan also said at this time, so about logistics? The government representative immediately said, We will ensure it. At that time, we will have supplies of Astra class and Prometheus class support materials and fuel. The Tachyon Technology representative sitting next to the government representative looked at the government representative playfully and said, It's a model I've never heard of. An old antique like the Colossus class is so uncomfortable that you designed a new cruiser class. Won't your government send a capital ship to support you? The government representative glanced at him and said, these two ships are the capital ships. Several people at the conference table looked at the government representatives in surprise. The government representative said with a mixture of pride and sadness on his face. This is distributed by the general government. You have all begun to develop a new generation of capital ships. And we must not be left behind. But with the separation of military and political affairs, our government can only design this kind of logistical battleship. He took out a document from the document bag in front of him and slapped it on the table. The carrying capacity data of the Astra class supercargo ship and the Prometheus class fuel transport ship are here. Bai Quan took the document that the assistant next to him helped bring over. And after briefly reading it, he said, No problem. Then the meeting ends here. Hopefully I can see you all again in the future. Chapter 122 Accident Change 
after the offline joint meeting. All participants quickly left the conference room. Bai Quan was left alone in the conference room to sort out the current intelligence situation. After going over the plan again and confirming that there were no missing points, he also left the meeting room with the documents. Bai Quan will be the commander in chief of the combined fleet in the future, so his schedule will be very tight. He needs to hurry up and get some other work done. For example, what he was about to do was inspect the docks that would be used to house the several battleships that were about to be delivered. The current location of the 14th Legion was taken directly from the sector military. Although the sector's military has no capital ships to call upon, there is still a dock for capital ship level spacecraft located in orbit around the star. It has not been used for many years. So after it is reactivated, the maintenance and renovation of the entire dock must be guaranteed. When Bai Quan first took over this place, he had already started letting professionals take charge of this aspect of work. However, because the workload is so huge, it has not been completed until today. So he had to check it out for himself. In case the three capital ships arrive, they will find that they have no place to park. After arranging several nearby matters, Bai Quan took his escort on a high-speed frigate that had been prepared in advance, took off, and flew out of the stronghold protected by the dome, flying towards the orbit of the volcanic planet beneath them, flying towards the giant space building in orbit around the star. The size of this giant space building is close to that of a normal space station, and the size difference between it and the pirate space station is only within a quarter. But this is not a pirate space station with 30 space arms of different specialized functions and an entire city. This space building is just a dock. The purpose is to carry the hull of the battleship that has exceeded 10,000 meters. At the same time, the giant shipyard also comes with some defensive measures such as fixed artillery, which can also be regarded as a line of defense for the planet below. Previously, the military in the sector only maintained this part of the area that could be used for fighting and the main ship dock was basically in a semi-abandoned state. Otherwise, there would be no need for the 14th Army Corps to spend such a long time maintaining the entire shipyard after taking over. This also shows how far the military in the previous sector has fallen. When the people on the frigate can see the giant shipyard with their naked eyes, Bai Quan raised his head from the official document on the terminal in his hand. At this time, in addition to being able to see the appearance of the entire giant shipyard, he could also see a large number of engineering ships distributed in every corner outside the shipyard. Lasers probing structures and sparks erupting from joining plates are constantly appearing outside the dock. Maintenance and renovation work at the giant dockyard continues. Bai Quan took a second look and asked the guard as the driver to drive the frigate directly into the dock through an entrance for small and medium-sized spacecraft on the edge of the dock. The many obstacles that originally required inspection of the spacecraft were cleared for Bai Quan allowing him to quickly enter the innermost part of the giant shipyard. That is where the staff inside the giant shipyard usually work and live. After being received by the person in charge of shipyard maintenance, Bai Quan said H, low to him and borrowed a destroyer-class engineering ship. He continued to let one of the escorts following him take charge of driving, while he himself sat in the passenger seat. Bai Quan took the engineering ship and came to the empty space inside the dock used by the battleships. There are also a large number of construction ships at work here. They range from the smallest shuttle boats to cruise-level engineering vessels, responsible for different tasks depending on the size and installation equipment of the engineering vessel, in addition to repairing the walls next to the ship's bay. These internal engineering ships also need to repair countless ship maintenance equipment that are usually hidden in the dock walls and occupy most of the area, although the size of the battleship determines that it must have the ability to self-repair. These maintenance equipment are still necessary for the armor, and other external equipment outside the battleship. Although Bai Quan is not a professional maintainer, he has a general understanding of the equipment for repairing spacecraft after many years as a soldier. He could tell that the repair progress inside the dock was approaching the final stage. It is basically guaranteed to be completed before the next few capital ships arrive. After Bai Quan saw that this was not a bad situation, he continued to let the guards drive the engineering boat to patrol the interior, and then planned to go to the outside to check some places that he had not seen when he came in just now. At this time, very close to Bai Chuan's engineering ship, it could be said that it was directly overhead at a location where equipment and circuits were densely distributed. And a huge amount of electric sparks suddenly burst out. Several engineering ships that were nearby quickly evacuated. And at the same time, a large amount of fire extinguishing foam was poured directly on it. The situation was quickly brought under control. Accidents are inevitable when there is a lack of maintenance over a long period of time. 
since Bai Quan has just seen that the repair work in other places is almost complete. Then even if there are some accidents in this place, they will definitely be handled quickly. Bai Quan did not stay any longer and said to the guard responsible for driving, Stay out of the way. Let's continue. The guard immediately executed the go order and flew towards the outside of the giant shipyard requested by Bai Quan. But before the engineering ship could accelerate, a huge amount of arc suddenly erupted from the spot where the flames had just been extinguished. The arc broke through the vacuum and hit several engineering ships that came closer after the open flames were extinguished. The same dazzling arc flashed on several ships. And their engine stalled instantly. The burning hull SH. L and the slight explosion caused by the electric arc penetrating the engineering ship SH. L caused several ships to lose control. And one of the cruise level engineering ships accurately hit Baichuan's location. Originally. Even if the engineering ship that came over had the size of a cruiser, it wouldn't be difficult to dodge it. However, at the moment when the guard wanted to control the spacecraft, a large swath of red suddenly appeared on the control panel in front of him. All control equipment was lost at this time. The spreading arc on the cruise class engineering ship also hit Baichuan's engineering ship at this time. And both spacecraft completely lost control. The engineering ship by Quan was on was hit by a cruiser class engineering ship and was crushed directly into the wall on one side of the dock. The engineering ship's communication with the outside world was cut off and contact was lost. Bai Chuen's life and death were unknown. The emergency situation here in the 14th Army was quickly and completely restricted to the 14th Army's garrison. And no news was spread. And at least for a while. The news won't spread. Two days later, Chin Ming completed his previously planned research on shields during his afternoon study time. That is the Feasibility study on distinguishing the amplitude frequency of multi-layer slightly different shields in a single-layer shield. After all, it was just a product of Chen Ming's university graduation. And it was a flawed existence. So the research speed was very fast. So he can now carry out the modification named Layered Shield Generator on his spaceship. This modification allows what appears to be only one layer of shield to produce different amplitude frequencies of the shield formed internally. It is equivalent to cutting away a thick layer of armor to form multiple layers of weaker armor. However, unlike armor, as long as the attack the shield withstands is not sustained or overly powerful, then even if the shield takes damage that exceeds its own limit, it can offset all subsequent damage that overflows and will not let the armor under the shield bear it. Chin Ming shield can have similar effects many times. Divide the shield into different layers and connect the different layers to the spacecraft's radiant energy system in sections. When one layer of shield is overloaded, other layers of shield can continue to bear the damage. The biggest advantage of this shield is that it can bear a lot of additional damage when faced with weapons that are particularly powerful against the shield but have low attack frequency. And of course, there are disadvantages to this thing. There are multiple layers of different amplitude frequencies inside the shield, which will cause the strength of the shield itself to be reduced to a certain extent. And the effect is not good for high frequency attacks. And it will only have a particularly significant effect when facing low frequency attacks. But no matter what, this is just the product of Chen Ming's university graduation thesis. And it is also the first result of his research. Therefore, Chen Ming felt that it could still be used as a transitional shield to support his spaceship. Moreover, Chen Ming already had some ideas in mind for a shield design plan to withstand high frequency attacks. As long as a new shield is developed, he can use these two shields interchangeably. At the same time, we will continue to develop more powerful shields in the future. Chin Ming removed his hands from the control panel in the research area in front of him and transformed the physical shield he had actually created directly onto the iron ore. After trying the effect for a while, Chin Ming put down the work at hand and rested for a while. On the way to rest, Chin Ming took a look at the situation at Gamma Z. Today, two days later, Gamma Z has been successfully upgraded to beta level. At this time, it has returned to the afterglow galaxy where the crystal crab planet is located. The number of afterglows controlled by Chin Ming in this galaxy has more than tripled in the past two days. The crystal crab planet has been fully controlled by Chin Ming. And not a single afterglow on the entire planet is outside Chin Ming's control. Any external afterglow that dares to land directly on the planet will not be able to escape the fate of being controlled by Chin Ming. There is still a lot of room for development on the other two colonial planets. But with the crystal crab planet already there, it will only be a matter of time before the remaining two planets are completely controlled. So in this case, when Gamma Z comes back to this galaxy, Chin Ming directly put it in charge of coordination and began planning and arrangements for the alpha level afterglow inside the galaxy. 
Jin Ming left this matter entirely to Gamma Z. After all, he didn't understand Yue's rules at all. And his random intervention would only have side effects. Although what Gamma Z has to do seems difficult. It is actually also simple. The difficult part is that Gamma Z needs to find an afterglow with permission, and find a reasonable reason for it to enter the space station that is not open to the public. The simple part is that after Yue, who has the authority, enters the space station, he only needs to find an opportunity to access the center of the space station. Then all the afterglow of the entire space station will be controlled by Chen Ming, regardless of level. Therefore, Gamma Z can be said to be quite relaxed when completing Chen Ming's task. It took it half a day to find a suitable afterglow. And just in time, this afterglow had a mission that required it to go to that space station. As a result, the entire galaxy can be said to have completely fallen into Chen Ming's hands. Alpha level afterglow is also controlled by Chen Ming. And the mental consumption of controlling it is no different from other afterglow AIs. But after Chen Ming completed this matter, and took an overall inspection of the situation inside the galaxy, I still think that just this one galaxy is not enough. There are three colonies in this galaxy, all of which are industrial colonies. It mainly produces ores and various spacecraft hulls, weapons and fuel. There is no industrial facility capable of producing these industrial facilities in the entire galaxy. At the same time, there is also a lack of some materials necessary for industrial production. And material transportation from other afterglow galaxies is also needed. So once Chen Ming makes any move, Yuhui doesn't even need to directly attack the galaxy as long as the transportation of supplies is blocked. Several colonies inside the galaxy will soon collapse. So even if Chen Ming controls this galaxy, he can only put it there first, and let it continue to develop normally. At the same time, Alpha Yu Wei, who is controlled by Chen Ming, must also ensure that everything is normal, and cannot be discovered by Yu Wei. Continue to hide, continue to spread out, and support as the afterglow controlled by Chen Ming. But Chen Ming also asked them to be ready at all times because the Alpha class afterglow can control the cruiser, and there is a spare one in this space station, when Chen Ming is in need, that is, when Yu Hui plans to attack him, the cruiser can immediately come to rescue Chen Ming, just because the 14th Army Corps was also carrying out rescue work. Chen Ming was not in a hurry to leave. Anyway, he has already kept this second life-saving means, as long as the situation was not so urgent that he was forced to use an unstable hyperspace jump engine, he could always wait for a cruiser equipped with a stable jump engine to rescue him. Of course, if these afterglows can be avoided, then try not to expose them as much as possible. The longer it is delayed, the wider the scope of their spread, the more afterglow they can control, and the more benefits Chen Ming will get. And now at least within this galaxy, Chen Ming calls the shots. He can rely on his authority to provide some conveniences to Gamma Z in the galaxy, such as some of the mechanical family chips it currently needs. Alpha level afterglow has the right to manage these things. As long as the accounts are settled in the end. And no problems will be seen. At the same time, there are many other benefits. Waiting for Chen Ming to slowly discover. Of course, this takes time to research and complete. So Chen Ming gave this task to Gamma Z and let it cooperate with alpha level afterglow to see if there was anything Chen Ming Shan could take away. Chen Ming's current main focus is still on the research of new technologies and the improvement of his own technology. After one day, Chen Ming walked inside the research institute after breakfast, thinking about his work and today's day. Today is three days since he started researching the shield. And it is also the tenth day since he and Bai Quan talked. The 14th Legion had previously expected that Yuhui's psychic equipment would be delivered in half a month. That is, five days later. Well until then, he'd better. The thoughts in Chen Ming's mind had just begun to show up. When he suddenly noticed that there was something new in the experimental area of the research institute. At some point, a new device that he had never seen appeared in the previously vacant space. And that location is definitely reserved for the psychic equipment said by Yu Hui. This unexpected scene made Chen Ming panic for a moment. It almost made Gamma Z move directly. Fortunately, the device was just sitting there and not started. There are many robots standing next to the equipment. And they seem to be debugging the equipment. Chen Ming pretended to walk into the experimental area accidentally and tried to ask the robots at work. What is this? G3, who controlled these robots, did not directly throw a document to Chen Ming as before, but said, It is the same device as other psychic devices, which can strengthen your mental power. Yeah. Chen Ming asked this question without waiting for G3 to answer. He leaned against the wall next to him and watched quietly. G3 did not stop it. 
after some operations. All the robots that were maintaining the equipment dispersed and started the equipment at the same time. The device looks like an ergonomic recliner and an operating table. After activation, some psychic energy fluctuations were emitted from the head of the operating table. Chen Ming, who was right next to him, did feel that his mental power was being stimulated. But at the same time, he also noticed subtle dangers from inside the equipment. The G3 has no intention of stopping after starting the device. Instead, he greeted Chen Ming to start today's work. In order not to let G3 notice, Chen Ming had no choice but to turn around and leave. He glanced back at the device before leaving the experimental area. Chen Ming could clearly feel that the intensity of the psychic energy fluctuations of the psychic equipment was increasing at a slow rate. And as the intensity of this psychic fluctuation increases, the impact of this device on Chen Ming's mental power is also increasing. However, there seems to be a limit to the extent of this growth. When Chen Ming's mental power was disturbed by the equipment, he seemed to feel the upper limit of the equipment's psychic fluctuation intensity. This is an inexplicable feeling. But Chen Ming chooses to believe it. When the psychic energy fluctuation reaches its strongest point, it must be the time when this device is actually activated. Based on the current growth rate, Chen Ming feels that this will probably take about a week after the action time set by the 14th Legion. This is good news for Chen Ming. Correct. Chen Ming immediately realized what he should do at this time. Immediately through the dim light parked on the pirate space station, he followed the communication code that he had used to communicate with Bai Quan. However, after the communication was connected, the person talking to Chen Ming was not Bai Quan, but someone else whom Chen Ming didn't know. Although Chen Ming was a little confused, he still said, Is it the operator? I need to talk to Bai Quan. There was silence on the other end of the communication for a long time, until Chen Ming was wondering if he had dialed the wrong number. And then the person on the other end said, Major General Bai Quan doesn't have time to see you now. Where are the others? This has nothing to do with you. Mr. Chen Ming, just do your thing well and that's it. We will solve the rest. Question mark. The operator's words made Chen Ming very uncomfortable and at the same time very incomprehensible. Bai Quan can't even discipline his subordinates. Okay? Shouldn't it? He was a major general. And it would be embarrassing for his subordinates to do such a thing. But Chen Ming really has no way to contact Bai Quan directly. And there is no need for him to quarrel with an operator. Then you can tell me something and say that the equipment over there has been delivered in advance. According to my observation, it will take about a week to prepare for startup. It's best for you to move as soon as possible. Remember to inform me. The operator casually responded and hung up the call. Chen Ming felt even more strange when he heard the busy signal in the communication. After thinking about it, he simply contacted Lao Wu and planned to ask the company about Bai Chuan's situation. Lao Wu boarded Chen Ming's spaceship as before. But before Chen Ming spoke, he said, Let me tell you first. Xiao Ming, the company's attitude towards you seems to have suddenly changed for the worse. I don't know what happened. Chen Ming frowned and asked, Is there such a thing? Yes. Lao Lu and I both think things are strange. He is still asking questions and doesn't know what is going on. Chen Ming connected the two things together at once. The attitudes of the 14th Legion and the company suddenly changed together. There must be some connection behind this. But without information? It was difficult for Chen Ming to confirm the truth. So all he could say to old Wu Chen Ming was, The company's attitude is to wait for the factory director to sort it out. I have other matters to ask you for. Please send a message to the company for me. Okay. Just say it. Chen Ming repeated what he said to the operator of the 14th Army Corps. He didn't do this because he was afraid that the Legion or the company wouldn't save him. After all, he already had control of one of Yu Hui's cruisers and was fully capable of escaping directly. It didn't matter to him whether they saved him or not. Chen Ming contacted the Legion and the company, mainly because he was worried that Yu Hui's sudden early rescue and the acquisition of psychic equipment might affect their arrangements. Problems with their arrangements may indirectly lead to problems on Chen Ming's own side. That's why Chen Ming contacted both parties one after another and informed them of the news. But there was only so much Chen Ming could do. And he didn't know whether this sudden change in attitude would have any impact on what happened next. After confirming that Old Wu remembered what he said clearly, Chen Ming suddenly remembered something and said to Old Wu, Does the boss have any news for me? Old Wu shook his head. Then suddenly nodded and said, Yes, yes. But Lao Wu went to his colony a few days ago, saying that there was some problem there that he needed to solve personally. He said that if you come to him and you have something urgent, you can use the emergency number to contact him. 
but he also said that since he didn't attend the meeting later, there is no need to contact him about this matter. And there is nothing he can do. Chin Ming exhaled slightly and said, Okay, I understand. Then I'll leave the task of delivering the message to you. If you have any reaction, please contact me. Okay. Communication hung up. Chin Ming sighed. It seems that he can't figure out why the 14th Legion and the company suddenly changed their attitudes through the boss's relationship. Sure enough, in the end, people can only rely on themselves. Chapter 123 Broken Connections Sudden Changes After the factory director listened to Old Wu who hurried to his office, he took out the terminal directly and dialed a communication code. After the communication was connected, he didn't say H, low and said directly, Help me pick up the chairman. The other end of the communication was quiet for a while. And then the voice of Shindok Company Chairman Su Lin sounded. Chao Lu, I would like to ask what the company means now. The chairman knew what the factory director was asking and why Chen Ming asked such a question. And he did not hide it. Saying, The company needs to get away from Chen Ming now. Why? Because Chen Ming has no interest in him anymore. The factory director and old Wu next to him suddenly frowned. Before the factory director could continue to question, the chairman said again, In the beginning, Chen Ming did have value worth paying for, and this value has been growing. However, since Chen Ming was moved to a new place, we have lost the ability to rescue him alone, and the 14th Legion has it. So as long as we want to save Chen Ming, we must not avoid the 14th Army Corps. They will not give up on Chen Ming. Even if we rescue people, we won't be able to get the value of Chen Ming itself. Therefore, the chairman's tone was slightly longer to give the factory director time to think. At the board meeting, we decided to exchange Chen Ning for more stable income, sky steel, and some other preferential treatment. Some time ago, we have obtained the priority bidding rights for the Star Territory Government's patrol fleet through our contact with Chen Ning. Now, the 14th Legion can help us get the priority bidding rights from the Star Territory military every year. The two combined are a pretty big benefit to the company. At the same time, it will also completely squeeze out the value that can still be obtained from Chen Ming. Without value, there is no need for us to continue investing resources in Chen Ming. At this moment, the chairman suddenly changed the subject and said, Of course I don't think so. I think it's not a bad thing to continue to invest some resources in Chen Ming and build a good relationship with him. But my words don't count. And it's useless for me to vote against it alone. The company's attitude depends on the voting results of all directors at the board meeting. Anyway, the company's attitude is to minimize contact and prevent Chen Ming's ability from affecting the company's future earnings. The factory director knows the operation of the company's top management and has nothing to refute the chairman's statement. It has become an established fact. But there was one more thing he needed to ask clearly. What's the situation in the military now? Xiao Ming just came over and asked, saying that they couldn't contact the 14th Army Corps. This, the chairman recalled it and said, the 14th Army Corps entered a state of closed management two days ago and no longer conducts daily communications and the circulation of materials and personnel. Even now we don't have the means to proactively contact them. The fleet in the past could only sit there and wait for the notice from the 14th Army to start taking action. The 14th Army Corps is the commander-in-chief. Our military quality is not comparable, so we can only listen to others. The factory director asked with some confusion, Then what will we do then? The chairman immediately replied, Just one thing. Help the 14th Army attract attention. The rest has nothing to do with us. When will we do it? It depends on the 14th Army Corps. Let me know before you do anything. Inform Chen Ming. Right? Um, it depends on the situation. After all, if a fight breaks out suddenly, the news may not be sent back in advance. The factory director said nothing and acquiesced to the chairman's statement. The factory director fell silent. But the chairman suddenly put away his serious tone and said to the factory director like an ordinary person, Chao Lu, come back when will you come? Your mother misses you very much. I've said it many times. That's not it. The factory director suddenly sighed and started talking to the chairman about family affairs. Old Wu, on the other hand, quietly left the office. Chin Ming didn't wait long for Lao Wu's response. Old Wu first repeated to Chin Ming the content of the exchange between the factory director and the chairman. Then he said according to his own understanding. I feel that close management is normal. After all, if I want to save you, I have to go deep into Yue's hometown. If there is any problem in any link, it may cause huge losses. 
And you also know that in addition to a few forces at the joint meeting, there are many other people who have ideas about you, especially the left path and the original sector army. There is nothing wrong with what Lao Wu said. And this is indeed a reason. However, although the 14th Legion has no problem with closed management and no contact with companies or other forces, however, the practice of maintaining closed management and cutting off contact with Chen Ming, the rescue target, is strange no matter how you look at it. What is the 14th Legion doing? What is Bai Quan doing again? Is he going to break his promise? Chen Ming suddenly had three more questions in his mind. However, as before, the question will never be answered until enough information is obtained. Chen Ning couldn't blame Lao Wu and the factory director. There was only so much they could do. But the truth of the intelligence will always make him more and more dangerous here. So Chen Ning must consider retreating. However, he still doesn't want to leave just now. Because if he wants to leave directly now, he must pass through the alpha level afterglow controlled by him. This means that the afterglow controlled by Chen Ning will 100% be exposed. But if Chen Ming does not leave, as long as he delays for one day, the number of afterglows he controls outside will increase by one day. As long as he is not discovered, he may even be able to completely take over the afterglow of the entire star field directly from within. With such huge benefits in front of him, it was really difficult for him to give up. But Qin Ming suddenly became excited. He remembered the deadline he had left for himself before. After his previous plan was arranged, he originally planned to find a way to leave the day before Yue delivered the equipment. Regardless of whether the 14th Legion made any moves. Although there was a slight accident. Yu we got the psychic equipment ahead of schedule. Fortunately, it takes time to activate. And continues to delay the time for Yu Wei to take action. However, Chin Ning felt that it was still necessary to abide by the time set by the previous deadline. Greed is definitely not a good thing. After four days, he had to leave no matter what happened that day. The psychic power of the psychic equipment that Yu Hui had just sent was increasing every moment and the sense of danger it brought to him was getting bigger every moment. It's self-evident what this portends. Even if he continues to leave a controllable afterglow, if his life is gone, it means nothing. After thinking clearly, Chen Ning refocused his attention on his work. While he was completing the work at hand, he had also been paying attention to the condition of the newly delivered psychic equipment. Look for possible opportunities to leave means of destruction on the device. However, G3 monitors the equipment so tightly that it leaves no gaps at all. Several cameras have been installed in the room where the equipment is installed to ensure there are no blind spots. At the same time, it is guaranteed that there are at least three robots guarding the room 24 hours a day. Every time Chen Ming passes by, a robot will follow him, and there is no way to start. Two days passed in the blink of an eye. Chen Ming just couldn't find any chance. At this time, there are still two days before the deadline. Chen Ming's mind was full of thinking about this matter. And he continued with today's work after finishing breakfast. However, just halfway through the work, G3 suddenly stopped moving and seemed to have left. G3? G3 did not reply. After a while, he came back online and said, Mr. Chen Ming, today's work tasks are temporarily suspended. Please come to the experimental area and assist me in checking your mental condition. G3's words sounded normal. But Chen Ming felt that what he said this time was different from before. The experimental area that Chen Ming looked at gave him a stinging sense of danger. So Chen Ming hesitated and asked, What are you going to do today? G3 responded, As usual, strengthen your mental power. Chen Ming didn't believe what G3 said at all. Today, there is a high probability that the psychic device will be activated. But this equipment clearly has not reached the limit of spiritual energy intensity that Chen Ming felt. What is the reason for starting it early? One unclear thing happened one after another. Chen Ming's heart was filled with uncontrollable anxiety in addition to the tension about what might happen next. Problems piled up in his mind, but none of them could be solved. This kind of anxiety made it difficult for Chen Ming to calm down. Suddenly, Chen Ming subconsciously glanced at the iron ore's camera for some unknown reason. Then he discovered that there were countless fires and energy surging in the space above his head. Chen Ming was stunned for a moment, thinking about what would lead to this. This is a battle taking place in space. Chen Ning's attention was about to be pulled away by this picture. But he suddenly heard something moving behind him and quickly turned around to look. On weekdays, a robot used for auxiliary work has a mechanical arm sticking out of it, with an anesthesia gun attached to it. The tension, anxiety and panic in Chen Ning's heart were instantly suppressed by the experience of many things he had experienced. 
and he also thought clearly in an instant what was the right thing to do in the current situation. A large amount of white metallic liquid overflowed from Chen Ming's palm, covering his whole body. In the blink of an eye, a set of white cloud steel exoskeleton frame covered the outer layer of the protective suit and was connected to the protective suit. Armor plates followed and covered the exoskeleton frame, completely protecting Chen Ming within it. Internally, the self-storage material Chen Ming learned from Yue was used as the energy source. Even if Chen Ming's transformation cannot transform the energy at the same time, the self-storage material alone is enough for the exoskeleton armor to move. The tightly protected pure white exoskeleton armor directly deflected the tranquilizer darts fired at Chen Ming. To be on the safe side, Chen Ming immediately modified a filter mask for his exoskeleton armor to prevent Yue from directly making a fuss in the air. G3! What do you mean? Mr. Chen Ming, please cooperate with my work. Watch your mother! Chen Ming calmly spit out a curse word. Before those robots surrounded him, he turned around and pointed the portable mini mining laser he had just modified on his left arm at the gate of the closed research area. Two high intensity laser beams streaked across the door, quickly breaking it open. Chen Ming was not just studying the spacecraft shield during this period. He knows very well where his weakest point is now, and it is not a bad thing to enhance his combat power in his spare time. Chen Ming rushed out of the research area and immediately activated the newly modified jetpack on his back, aiming it in the direction of the entire research institute gate. However, Chen Ming just jumped up and evacuated. An electromagnetic pulse swept through his body. The exoskeleton system was instantly paralyzed, and Chen Ming fell directly from midair. Fortunately, Chen Ming modified the buffer system quite well during the modification, so he was not injured after such a fall. Instead, he took advantage of the opportunity of rolling on the ground to repair the exoskeleton again. Without any hesitation, he continued to rush outside the institute. At this time, in addition to escaping, Chen Ming was still thinking about a problem in his mind. Why did the afterglow suddenly burst out? And there is no sign of me yet. Wrong. My sign is actually there. Chen Ming took another look at space through the iron ore. There is still a huge battle going on there. It was the 14th Legion that arrived in advance that stimulated Yu Wei, forcing them to activate the psychic equipment before it reached its limit. This no longer requires Chen Ming to think about it. Anyone who knows Chen Ming's previous request for Bai Quan to notify before taking action, and the recent performance of the 14th Army can see the problem. He immediately contacted Gamma Z and instantly sent his current situation through his consciousness. At the same time, he said to Gamma Z, who currently has the ability to rescue him, Enable the emergency plan. Give up hiding when necessary. And give me the highest priority. Chen Ming doesn't need to worry about Gamma Z. It will naturally do what it should do. Chen Ming, after contacting Gamma Z, contacted the 14th Legion. But he didn't have that much time to use now. So he directly set up a recording that would be sent automatically after the call was connected. By Quan. If you can't rescue her right away, let go of the refraction class after low cruiser that jumped in behind. That cruiser has special markings on its body. Do it all. Chen Ming suddenly froze and repaired the exoskeleton armor on his body again, repairing the damage caused by the electromagnetic pulse equipment that was still in operation. At this moment, a violent explosion and the sound of glass objects breaking suddenly came from outside the institute. It was the iron mine controlled by Chen Ming that directly smashed into the dome. The next moment, the iron ore blasted open the door of the research institute, landed not far from the door. After Chen Ming stabilized the iron mine, he immediately activated the positioning signal he had agreed with by Quan on it. At the same time, a string of Morse code was added to the positioning signal, and the content was the same as what Chen Ming had just communicated. Then he turned around and raised his right arm with a crossbar in front of him. Metallic liquid flowed from the iron or outside and wrapped around his arm. These metallic liquids gradually formed a thick layer of arm armor. The armor on the gauntlet gradually began to expand to form a small shield. The small shield continued to expand, forming a large shield that completely protected Chen Ming. This was not over yet. The metallic liquid flowing down from the iron or continued to expand, and did not stop until it completely covered the passage, condensing into a solid white cloud steel wall, completely separate Chen Ming from the robot on the other side. This should hold off for a while. Chen Ming quickly disassembled the gauntlet on his arm that had been transformed into a wall by him. While fighting against the electromagnetic pulses that constantly destroyed the exoskeleton armor's power system, walked towards the spacecraft outside. During this process, Chen Ming noticed that no one connected to the communication from the 14th Army Corps. 
It is unknown whether the positioning signal of the iron or was received by the 14th Legion in space. Chin Ming just felt more and more that something was wrong. Bai Quan didn't look like a person who could lie. But Chen Ming had agreed with him before to give him a warning before they took action. But now, not only is it a reminder, the rescuers have arrived in his current galaxy. And there is not even a single communication. This situation is not to be said to be strange. It can only be said to be completely incomprehensible. And if Chen Ming guessed correctly, there should be some actions in the place where he had been before. Gamma A it. No. Gamma A was following Hui Yao around during this period and was unable to provide Chen Ming with information about the galaxy. Gamma B is also elsewhere and has no chance to obtain relevant information. Only those afterglows that wandered from other star fields and were controlled by Chen Ming could give Chen Ming the information here. But if they are not damaged or encounter any accident, they will not take the initiative to contact Chen Ming. Only when he looked over now could he see the battles taking place in the galaxy through a few afterglows that happened to be in space within the galaxy. At this time, a capital ship with the Sindar Company logo on it was destroying the fleet of afterglow in the galaxy with a complete crushing attitude. This capital ship is not designed like an ordinary spaceship because it has a huge slot that seems to be able to install something on a long strip from the bow to the middle and rear section of the hull. But now there are no weapons installed in this huge slot. And it looks empty. On the contrary, the two main weapons located on the port side, which appear to have been specially designed, are the main output means of this battleship. In other words, it only has two main weapons on the port side as its main output means. Although this capital ship has a symmetrical design, the battle method of the ship itself is like a cannon sailboat in ancient naval battles, relying on side guns for output, and the firepower was completely concentrated on one side. This unique design allows this battleship with a narrow front to achieve firepower comparable to larger battleships. While ensuring the maneuverability of a light battleship, the main weapon, which is the main output method of this battleship, does not seem to have any bells and whistles. There is only a turret wrapped in solid armor and two thick barrels extending from the turret. The two barrels fire in an alternating pattern. With every shot, a dark purple sphere that looks like a hyperspace environment will fly towards the afterglow fleet with a purple electric cloud. Each deep purple lightning energy cannon fired will destroy a cruiser trying to resist the battleship. At this time, the afterglow fleet had completely lost its ability to resist and fled in all directions. However, this battleship has an extremely large number of tails. It even has some engine ducts installed outside the armor, and a large number of auxiliary thrusters on the sides of the ship, providing it with terrifying maneuverability. Even if a cruiser wants to retreat, it will be overtaken and destroyed by this battleship. Watching this scene, Chen Ning became more and more eager to have his own fleet and a capital ship of his own. The crushing of low-level spaceships by high-level spaceships has already begun to show up in the stages from destroyers to cruisers. And it has been exaggerated to such an extent in the stages from cruisers to the main force. Without a capital ship, no matter how large the fleet is and how powerful it looks, it is nothing compared to its true power. Now I just don't know if something will happen in this battle if I said I wanted to restore the glory of this galaxy. But Chen Ning doesn't have time to worry about others now. And his own situation is not very good either. Although the gate of the research institute ahead was only a few dozen meters away, every step he took towards the spacecraft was difficult. The electromagnetic pulse equipment that was constantly being activated continued to interfere with Chen Ming's movements and restricted his movement. The passage he had just blocked with a wall now showed signs of destruction and would soon be broken through. After thinking for a moment, Chen Ming simply modified the arm armor on his body again and relied on excessive modification to directly form a wall again. Then he immediately dismantled the exoskeleton on his body, leaving only the most basic protective clothing, and ran outside in a light manner. At the same time, he maximized the use of his time and contacted the factory director during this time. At this time, Chen Ming didn't care whether he was being monitored. He can't contact the 14th Army now, so he can only confirm what the 14th Army is doing through the company, whether Bai Quan has taken his previous confession to heart or not. He can only rely on others to answer. The factory director was connected to the communication. After hearing Chen Ming's quick explanation of the situation, he said in an extremely unexpected tone, The rescue has begun? I'll help you ask right away. Oh, and the ship you see should be the Conqueror-class battlecruiser designed by our company. Just as Chen Ming was about to respond, his brain suddenly felt pain, and he stumbled and half knelt on the ground. This was not a problem with Chen Ming's own brain, but the despair ectoplasm stone 
that had been installed in the psychic pulse amplifier device in the experimental area at this time came into play for G3. I'm a little busy here. Factory manager. I'll talk to you later. Chen Ming endured the pain and spoke to the factory director, focusing his attention. Use your own mental power to resist the feeling of despair brought by the stone of despair, which almost rises from the bottom of your heart. It seems to be the feeling of despair deep in your heart and pinpricking pain caused by desperate stimulation of the brain. Chen Ming has endured the training of whispering and lying ectoplasm stones since a long time ago. Even if the despair stone exerts a powerful effect in the soul pulse amplifying device. For Chen Ming now, if he survives the first wave, the rest will be nothing. Chen Ming adjusted his breathing, stood up again, and continued to move forward. Rushed to the door. However, before he could go out, a place outside the institute that was usually full of plants suddenly fell over, revealing the deep underground space below. Immediately afterwards, a giant mechanical body loaded with a large amount of armed equipment suddenly crawled out. He instantly pounced on the iron ore, which was hovering on the surface not far in front of Chin Ming. Chin Ming reacted quickly and immediately directed the ion cannon mounted on the iron ore to bombard the giant mechanical body, instantly tearing apart a large amount of the external armor of the mechanical body. But this failed to stop its movement, and it swooped onto the iron ore, the metal parts on its body making a harsh tearing sound. The huge force erupted from the overoperated mechanical structure directly overturned the iron ore to the ground. At the same time, a large number of robots that Chen Ming had never seen suddenly appeared in all directions outside the institute at the same time. Completely surrounding him, Chen Ming realized that the situation was not good, and once again modified the protective suit with a set of exoskeleton armor that was thicker and more powerful than before to protect himself. At the same time, he was also desperately repairing the iron ore again. In the process of destroying the iron ore by the giant mechanical body, the mechanical body was almost completely destroyed. At the moment when the giant mechanical body was completely destroyed, a violent electric light suddenly flashed at its core. A continuous, super strong electromagnetic pulse spread out among them. Not only was the iron mine paralyzed instantly, but Chin Ning was also unable to move. Repairing the iron ore and the exoskeleton armor will take time. And those robots that just appeared are already close at hand. In addition, the other three areas where plants are usually grown were all opened. And three brand new giant machines crawled out of the space below, staring eagerly. It was difficult for the iron mine to deal with even one of them when it needed to rescue Chin Ming. And there was absolutely no chance of victory for three of them. Chin Ning knew that he was unable to resist now. The only possibility of escape or the possibility of escape that Chin Ming had originally counted on, was Gamma Z. Chin Ming gave up the struggle, and was still controlled by the robot. However, he had already contacted Gamma Z through his consciousness, and asked the rescue who had not arrived after so long. What's going on? In order to pursue efficiency, Gamma Z directly showed Chin Ming a paragraph of text. Chin Ming browsed it quickly, and summed up the specific situation in his mind. Just when Gamma Z received the news from Chin Ming, Yu Wei also posted a public message for help on their communication platform. Therefore, the Alpha Afterglow controlled by Chen Ming can jump over in a normal and fair manner. However, the landing point of the transition is deviated due to high energy reactions in the galaxy. Instead of jumping directly to Chen Ming's location, he jumped to the edge of the galaxy. When the Alpha Level Afterglow tried to enter the galaxy, it was attacked by the 14th Legion and is still being hunted. Jin Ming frowned and immediately looked at the refraction class ship controlled by the Alpha class Afterglow. It is currently in the galaxy where Chin Ming is located, but it was already crumbling at this time. And two cruisers from the 14th Legion were chasing it. The refracted force was forced out of the defense line formed by the Afterglow fleet and forced into the corner of the battlefield. Not far away, there was a fleet of over 10,000 people led by seven battleships from both sides. A fierce conflict broke out next to Chin Ming's planet. Gamma Z interjected at this time. In a battle of this scale, there is no possibility that a ship below the cruiser level can get close. The only thing that can come to the rescue is refraction. But it's in bad shape right now. Chin Ming knew that the situation was urgent without Gamma Z's reminder, and immediately connected the refraction level directly to the spacecraft that he personally controlled, instead of relying on the indirect control of the afterglow individual. After experiencing the rapid consumption of mental power, Chen Ming successfully took control of the refraction class unmanned cruiser personally. During this time, his mental power had grown to the point where he could control the cruiser. After controlling the refraction, Chen Ming risked being exposed in advance and performed 
repairs on the hull directly in front of two cruisers of the 14th Legion. The entire ship was restored to its original state in the blink of an eye. However, the two cruisers of the 14th Legion still maintained their attack on the refracted light, treating the situation as nothing. Refraction's communication requests sent to them also received no response at all. The identity confirmation messages and communication requests sent to the two offensive class ships and one Legion class ship of the 14th Legion further away were as silent as a mud cow entering the sea. Maybe they blocked the signal. Or maybe they didn't care at all. Chen Ming controlled the refraction and pulled back expressionlessly. After forcing them back with a burst of attacks caused by his repair ability, he took the initiative to break away from the battle with them. In addition to repairing the exterior of the spacecraft, Chen Ming had just performed repairs on the jump engine, speeding up the cooling of the jump system. He wanted to start the jump engine immediately and prepare to jump directly in front of him with precision. However, Refraction's jump engine has just started. The two cruisers of the 14th Legion immediately forced themselves up and stood in front of Refracting. But at the next moment, they suddenly accelerated and pulled away from the flank, with no intention of continuing to fight against Refractory. But behind them, a crimson energy bomb with a length of more than 300 meters, like a flying shuttle, suddenly flew out of the main battlefield and flew towards the refraction. This was the last scene Chen Ming saw from the refractor. If Chen Ming remembers correctly, this is an offensive class heavy battleship that has left a rich mark in the history of human development. Its main weapon is energy bombs fired by thermal pulse lasers. The next moment, the signal of the refractive level is disconnected. Chen Ming also lost control of this alpha level afterglow. Not only Chen Ming, but also the Alpha Class Afterglow that controlled the refraction did not respond, and did not even have a chance to repair. Ah! Chen Ming never expected that his hope of escape would be cut off by the 14th Legion and his own people in the end. He had no anger, no resentment, and no mood swings at all. This is his problem. He should not have allowed Refractory to try to contact the people of the 14th Legion with that slight possibility. So that now, he has lost the chance to escape. Other people can never be trusted in matters of life or death. But for Chen Ming, there is still a chance to survive. As long as you are alive, there is hope for everything. Chen Ming withdrew his plan to watch the battle scene through the scattered afterglow individuals controlled by him in the galaxy. Put all your energy into yourself. He was controlled by the robot and taken to the room where the psychic equipment was installed. The door to the room was resealed. Chen Ming's exoskeleton armor was dismantled. And his protective clothing was forcibly taken off. He was tied to the operating table-like device with several restraints. At this time, various mental power-enhancing equipment in several surrounding rooms were also turned on. Although Chen Ming could not move physically, his mental power was extremely active. What the active mental power brings is a rising sense of danger. Psychic equipment is working. Chen Ming saw a green and black cylindrical object with a slight curve, like some kind of medicine bottle, being lifted up by a mechanical arm of this operating table-like device and pressed against his eye socket. The eyes that were pressed saw a white and tender thing with many forked nerves gradually extending from the deepest part of this columnar object, like young leaves and branches that have just sprouted, or like a white, tender and fat insect. Chen Ming seemed to think of an alarm in his mind, and the feeling of extreme danger completely enveloped him. But now, he can't leave the operating table at all. Only the strong desire for survival in his heart guided him to do what he should do at this time. The twisted pattern on the live stone that Chen Ming had been carrying lit up with a brightness it had never seen before. Countless crazy people's lies echoed in Chen Ming's ears and brain. Chen Ming immediately suppressed the lies he was accustomed to. But the white, tender and fat nerve in front of him had already curled up. It seems to have been influenced by the whispering stone. The sense of danger in the brain gradually weakens. But when it drops to a certain moment, the part of this white, and tender nerve connected to the end of the medicine bottle suddenly broke on its own initiative. The remaining nerve suddenly penetrated into Chen Ming's eye socket. Chen Ming instantly fell into a coma. But in the moment before coma, he noticed that the sense of danger did not continue to grow, but remained at a stable level. Chapter 124 Bad Choice While Chen Ming and Yu Hui's robots were fighting, the factory director hurriedly contacted the chairman again. But this time it was not the chairman who answered the call, but his secretary. Mr. Liu, the chairman is in a meeting now. If you have anything, you can tell me. The factory director knew that the chairman's secretary also knew quite a bit. So he asked directly, Has the rescue operation with the 14th Army Corps begun? Just as the secretary was about to answer, the factory director heard the chairman's voice from the other side coming from far away. Xiao Liu, 
The operation on the 14th Army Corps has already begun. You are calling this time because you said you wanted to inform you about this. Right. The chairman knew what the factory director meant. So the factory director stopped talking and waited for the chairman to explain to him. I did forget about this matter. I want to apologize to you first. But I just had something more important to deal with. The factory director also knew that it had already happened and there was no point in bringing it up again. He followed the chairman's words and asked, What happened? The company has just learned about the situation with the 14th Legion. There is bad news. They have an internal problem. The original commander by Quan is missing. Their statement is that Bai Quan was seriously injured and comatose due to an accident while performing official duties. And the entire rescue mission of Chen Ning was handed over to another person. The factory director frowned and asked, What is this? I also want to know what this is. So as soon as I know this situation, I have to prepare materials for an emergency meeting to discuss the impact this matter will have on the company. I am a little too busy with other things now. Seriously? It's just like a fairy dance. If Bai Quan turns around and dies, then all the agreements we made with the 14th Army that were not explicitly written may be ignored by them. Sky Steel? Yes. The Galaxy Mining Rights Certificate has always been in our hands. And it can be said that Sky Steel has always been ours. It's just that the military was using disgraceful means to blockade the galaxy. So that's why there was such a situation. So now the 14th Legion can do that if they want. The company has been cheated but we still can't take the initiative to violate the previously agreed things. Otherwise, the reason is not on our side. And it is definitely not a good thing for us to have a conflict with the 14th Army. We can only wait until the matter is over and then listen to their explanation and see their movements. The factory director couldn't help but asked. The company is still not running after everything is like this. The Conqueror class captain we sent out said that although the person taking over Bai Chuan's mission is not as good as Bai Quan, he seems to have a good subordinate who can continue to complete the mission. Then those of us sitting in the rear must follow his ideas on the front. And we were previously tasked with a simple attention-grabbing mission. As long as we attract Yue's capital ship, the rest will be none of our business. Just run away, and that's it. Well, let's do this for now. I just came out to get something. The meeting isn't over yet, so I don't have time to continue talking to you. The chairman's voice disappeared from the other end of the communication. The secretary also hung up the communication after confirming with the factory director that she had nothing more to ask. The factory director, on his side, said to the other terminal in his hand that was in contact with Chen Ming, Xiao Ming, I have some news. There is a problem within the 14th Army. He quickly explained to the terminal what he had just heard from the chairman. But after finishing speaking, he did not get any response. Xiao Ming, Xiao Ming. The factory director suddenly felt that the situation was not good. But he had no way to help Chen Ming at this time. He could only sigh and sit behind his desk and wait anxiously. Just as the factory director was worried about Chen Ming's safety. In the outer space of Chen Ming's planet, the battle between Yu Wei and the United Fleet has entered a fierce stage. The combined total of at least a thousand battleships from both sides has sunk in space. Even the losses of cruisers have exceeded a hundred. And the losses of destroyers and escorts are countless. Even because of the scale of the battlefield the frigates were unable to take action at all. So far, among the warships lost by both sides, the destroyers have suffered the most losses. However, no matter how many destroyers are lost, no one and no afterglow care about it now. All those involved in this battle and Yuwei's attention were focused on the core of the entire battlefield. That is where the seven battleships are. There are three capital ships here in afterglow, all of the same model. They are all radiation-class unmanned battleships, that are most common in afterglow and human battlefields. As for the 14th Legion, except for a model class battleship from Tachyon Technology, the remaining three ships are two offensive class heavy battleships developed by the 14th Legion themselves, and a Legion class aviation battleship that combines the functions of a battleship and an aircraft carrier. The two offensive class ships were located in the center of the entire battle line, unfolding two giant crimson shields, blocking the afterglow like two flaming mountains. The Legion-class aviation battleship is located behind the battle line. It fell behind the other capital ships and all the ships in the entire fleet. If an aircraft carrier is under the protection of a fleet, there is nothing wrong with the fact that it is located at the rear of the fleet. But now the Legion level is doing a very strange thing. That is, the direction its shield is aimed at after unfolding is also the rear. And that's not all. At this time, the resonant frequencies of the shields of several battleships of the 14th Legion were surprisingly consistent 
with the resonant frequencies of the shields of all ships in the entire fleet. So much so that now, there is even a special shield that is visible to the naked eye like a phantom covering the shields of all ships below the capital ship level, protecting the spacecraft. Although the phantom shield covers all directions around the spacecraft like a sphere. But if you look closely, you will find that the phantom shield protects the spacecraft on the shield sphere. The rear hemisphere is purely the same red as the legion level shield. But on the front hemisphere, in addition to maintaining the same flaming crimson color as the offensive level, there are also some blue ripples flashing like the blue shield of the radiation level. It was as if this phantom shield covering the entire fleet was maintained by several capital ships. And that's exactly what happened. The reason why such a situation occurs lies in the battleship itself. When a battleship level ship joins a battlefield, the battle pattern of the entire battlefield will inevitably undergo some changes. The capital ship's capital class weapons are devastating to any ship below the capital ship. Even if it is a cruiser. Even if it is a special ruler class heavy cruiser that directly forced the original sector military to capture the 14th legion with a single spaceship. The outcome is the same in front of any battleship's main weapon. However, although the main level weapons of the battleship have terrifying destructive power, the hull and weapons of the battleship are still of normal structure. This means that as long as the attack is powerful enough, low-level spacecraft can also pose a threat to it. The cruiser's large weapons are pretty much the minimum weapons that can cause damage to a capital ship. Therefore, in a battle involving capital ship-level spaceships, victory depends not only on the capital ship itself, but also on the fleet following the capital ship protect these low-level spaceships so that they can survive the battle and rely on their weapons that can threaten the capital ship to help your own capital ship put additional pressure on the opposite capital ship. The joint shield produced by the resonance of the capital ship level shield and the shield of an ordinary spaceship at a specific resonance frequency is the best way of protection. Under normal circumstances, the connected shield will always maintain a phantom-like existence. Only when the protected spacecraft is triggered by an attack above a certain energy level that is, when it is attacked by a main level weapon, will it solidify directly and bear the attack. It will not block attacks below a certain energy level. The purpose of this design is also very simple. After all, the continuous shield itself is actually the battleship helping other spaceships bear the damage of the enemy's battleship. So if it is really going to be attacked by low level spacecraft, then the shield itself has no meaning. On the contrary, it makes it more convenient for the enemy and allows more enemies to attack the shield of one's own capital ship. The Legion shield is now aimed at the rear, giving all spaceships on the entire front line protection from the rear. The main reason is to protect Yue from the attack of the battleship. There are two reasons why we need to guard against the backside when the battle lines are already stretched. One is that Yue's follow-up support may sneak attack from behind. The other one is that the Afterglow's flashing engine still exists, even on the capital ship. The existence of the flash engine forced the combined fleet to take precautions. At this time, in the core level general command room. The temporary fleet commander who replaced by Quan, Tang Shi, was here. Tang Shi looked to be in his 30s and approaching 40. He was looking at the panel with complicated data in front of him and listening to the reports that kept ringing in his ears. The movements of his hands were somewhat stiff as he kept clicking on the control panel while issuing instructions. A few beads of sweat were flowing slightly on his forehead and he looked extremely nervous. At this time, the side door of the general command room opened, and his deputy Zhang Feng returned to the command room. Tang Shi suddenly seemed to have seen a savior, and his tension was instantly relieved. Zhang Feng naturally came to his side to help analyze intelligence and make decisions, so that the somewhat chaotic battlefield situation could be sorted out again. But this is only apparent. In fact, all major decisions are actually made by Zhang Feng as his deputy. Although Tang Shi and Zhang Feng were nominally commanders and deputies, they were actually doing the opposite. The reason is also very simple. Zhang Feng was placed in this position. So now, although he is doing good things, his heart is full of all kinds of negative thoughts. He has the ability to command an entire combined fleet. But now he can only serve as a deputy. As a so-called think tank. Wiping the butt of a man who became a major general because of his connections. So he cannot convince the public. But there is no better candidate who can convince the public. He even needs to follow the requirements from above and find opportunities to develop his on-the-spot adaptability and hone his command skills under the current circumstances. And although it is not said that there were no objections within the Legion, these objections were quickly suppressed. And these people with opinions never raised any objections again. This is also the reason why Zhang Feng is here now 
and continues to study with the prince honestly. Zhang Feng knew that although he and the people above Tangshir could not directly reach into the 14th Army Corps, it was not difficult to reach into a small force that was separated from the 14th Army Corps, especially since this force has not yet established itself and even needs to use other forces to form a joint fleet. It will be even more difficult to intervene. So much so that Zhang Feng now even doubted whether by Quan's accident was premeditated. Otherwise, under normal circumstances, the troops of the 14th Legion would not have been able to conceal the news with such high efficiency. And at the same time, they would have completely suppressed all objections. However, even just knowing about this matter would pose a considerable threat to his life safety. Therefore, Zhang Feng was just guessing. And he kept the contents of his guess deep in his heart and would not mention it to anyone. At the same time, he continued to help this morass of practical ability. So he could only rely on his years of accumulated experience and the power behind him to become a senior general. Zhang Feng quickly arranged the emergency situation on the front and saw that the war was not as urgent as before. He finally had time to say something else to Tang Shi. What the people above just explained to him. There is a separate space between the commander-in-chief and other people present in the general command room. Therefore, Zhang Feng was not worried that what he said next would be exposed and said directly to Tang Shi, Commander Tang, I need to tell you about our future plans. Arrangement? Isn't it to rescue Chen Ming? No. Our goal is not to rescue Chen Ming. Because his survival will not do us any good. Let alone the people above us. It was his existence that caused us to lose our share of sky steel. Is there still this matter? Zhang Feng nodded and continued. So it's okay to just pretend to save Chen Ming. But we can't really save him. And it's almost time now. It's too late and impossible for Chen Ming to save him. Why do you say that? Zhang Feng explained patiently. Because our original plan was to raid the planet in front of us. And before Yue could react. We sent army troops to rescue based on Chen Ning's coordinates. But now, the battlefield has entered a head-on confrontation. It is definitely impossible for us to break through in a short time. And it is impossible for the army landing force to bypass such a front and land directly. This gives Yue time to take action against Chen Ming. Whether it's transfer or something else. Yu Hui will never give us another chance to save him. So until now, the mission to rescue Chen Ming has failed. We have only one purpose left now. To attract Yu Hui's attention. Continue to delay time to find opportunities. Prepare to jump and raid Kleka. That's the key. That's the merit. Zhang Feng hesitated for a moment. Then said the last words. Your merits. Tang Shi had some hesitation on his face and said. But I saw that there is still a coordinate signal sent by Chen Ming on the colony. He should not have been transferred yet. And I'm not sure if I can command well. To be honest, I don't want to at all. Zhang Feng suddenly stretched out his hand and patted his shoulder to interrupt him. At the same time, he said solemnly and with a serious expression, You are in danger now. There are many people who are expecting you to achieve this feat. And I'll help you too. Just do it. All right. Tang Shi reluctantly responded. And Zhang Feng took over the command of the fleet. He began to command the entire combined fleet as a nominal deputy in the commander's communication channel. The captains of several capital ships on the battlefield were all inside the communication channel at this time. They all acquiesced to Zhang Feng's replacement of Tang Shi's command. In other words, it was because of Tang Shi's existence that they acquiesced in this matter. The captains of several ships were of high status. And they all knew that something was wrong with the entire incident. But since Bai Chuan's arrangements were clear, they didn't dare to do anything more than immediately notify the Legion in private and wait for the Legion to respond. As for the captain of the model class battleship dispatched by Tachyon Technology, he does not have this problem. After all, if he died here, the 14th Legion would have to give Tachyon Technology an explanation. The 14th Legion will definitely find trouble with Tang Shi, a man who joined the 14th Legion through normal channels, but whose status gradually rose through special means from outside. But for him, since it has reached the last moment, if he gives up, it will be equivalent to all the previous investment being wasted. The sunk cost of launching a capital ship is no small sum. And although the major general who took over Bai Chuan's mission was trash, his deputy was different. Although he was unknown, his commanding ability allowed the representatives of all the forces in the joint meeting to accept it in a short period of time. And they saw hope of completing the mission. Otherwise, no matter how much investment they make, the loss will not be as great as the loss of one battleship. And they would have run away long ago. Of course, this mission refers to the mission to Kleka, not to Chen Ming. Since the previous joint meeting, 
all parties have already distributed the interests of the task. Qin Ming's affiliation had also been decided from the beginning and assigned to the 14th Army Corps. So now there is a split within the 14th Army, and the part that has a grudge against Qin Ming still controls this part of the 14th Army fleet, except for the government that has not actually participated in the battle, which may still have thoughts about Qin Ming. Other forces will not try to find Qin Ming for the sake of their established interests. Even if there were, one would think that Qin Ming would eventually be taken away by the 14th Legion. So why waste energy on it? Therefore, for Zhang Feng, the next thing the combined fleet has to do is simply to pretend to be retreating. Qin Ming will naturally be tricked to death. There is a high probability that Afterglow will relax some of their vigilance. And they can also find an opportunity to jump directly to the galaxy where the Klecka supercomputer replica is located next to them. Zhang Feng quickly took control of the battle situation under his command and was able to completely withdraw immediately and look for opportunities to jump. He is bound to win the Klecka simulator. Just when the front line was further stretched, suddenly, Zhang Feng noticed that behind their battle lines, there was a characteristic of space distortion before the jump engine was about to arrive. He immediately commanded the fleet to be on alert. Soon, another 10,000 meter class afterglow battleship, the radiation class, appeared behind them. Although there are countless large, heavy and small weapons on the ship, the most dangerous weapons on the radiation level are always the two main weapons. Microceiver class optical radiation cannon. This is the main level weapon that is designed for every battleship when it is designed and is adapted to the ship. The name, microsievert, is the smallest unit of measurement for radiation value. When this radiation class ship appeared behind the combined fleet, its two microsievert class optical radiation cannons had already opened fire. Two slender rays of deep purple, almost purple black, crisscrossed across the edge of the battle line hitting countless United Fleet battleships on the battle line. Although it is not visible to the naked eye, it can be detected through sensors. The purple beam visible to the naked eye on the optical radiation line is only a part of this optical radiation cannon. The main energy of the optical radiation line it emits is all concentrated on ultraviolet radiation. The power of these energies hidden from the naked eye is far greater than it seems. And although these two light radiation lines look very slender, their actual diameter exceeds that of the tachyon spear. A large number of ships below the capital ship level were hit, which put a huge pressure on the legion level shield that maintained the rear mounted shield, and its radiation system was almost close to the upper limit. However, Zhang Feng was not worried at all at this time, because the radiation class that arrived was in very bad condition. As long as you think about it for a moment, you can understand that their four battleships do not need to be moved at all, and there is no need to be distracted to deal with them, because they also have a large number of cruisers with shields activated which can activate a large number of large weapons carried on the ships. At the same time, they also have a large number of fighter planes designed purely for combat carried by the legions, who are looking after their own rear. The fighter aircraft that can be carried in battleships at the capital ship level are not like heavy rain and cattle driver, which can only carry fighters that are a few meters or more than 10 meters long. The fighters it can carry can at least compete with cruisers. What's more, in fact, most of these fighters, which are designed purely for combat, often have more powerful combat capabilities than cruisers. Therefore, this radiation class without a ship will definitely not have time to carry out the second round of output. Even if they want to activate the blink engine to escape, they will never give it this chance. What's more, the blink engine is not unlimited and can be used at will. No matter how you look at it, the combined fleet can manipulate it at will and create a locally advantageous matchup. So here, Zhang Feng simply followed the instructions above and left this kind of decision to Tang Shi to handle, which only required simple brain analysis to make the optimal solution and was not very dangerous at the same time. Zhang Feng asked Tang Shi directly, What should be done here? Tang Shi, who was just watching from the side, suddenly panicked. It's like a candidate who didn't study hard and then found out during the exam that he couldn't understand the paper at all. And when he raised his head, he suddenly found that the exam time was about to end. Such tension made his brain a little confused for a while. Zhang Feng saw his situation and could only say helplessly and patiently, Calm down. Think slowly. You make the decision. You are the commander now. For a moment, cold sweat started to flow from Tang Shi's forehead again. He had never commanded such a battle before. And even the simplest things seemed extremely difficult to him now. Anxiety and irritability constantly squeezed the few sanity he had that could think clearly. Finally, he issued this order. Carry out emergency radiation removal at the Legion level. 
Prevent overloading. John Feng's pupils suddenly shrank, and he shouted quickly. Wait! But the Legion was their vehicle. And orders were conveyed immediately. The Legion level activated emergency radiation discharge. And all equipment that needed to consume radiation energy was locked. The radiation energy accumulated due to the radiation level attack began to be completely discharged and could not be stopped. Just at this moment, a radiation class vessel that originally did not dare to move in front of the battle line due to the pressure of the number of battleships instantly started its flash engine and circled behind them. At this time, the Legion level has entered an emergency spoke state and the empty door at the rear is wide open. The command communication channel, especially the most advanced command communication channel, suddenly fell into silence. Only the livid-faced Tachyon Technology captain left two words. Idiot! The captain of Tachyon Technology had known Zhang Feng, who was actually acting as the commander, before, and he knew that Zhang Feng's ability would make it impossible for him to make such a stupid operation. The only explanation is the order given by the nominal commander himself. The flashing radiation class ship did not hesitate at all, and also activated the two microceiver class light radiation cannons. The two beams of light swept across the entire front again, and the fire from a series of continuous explosions that almost spanned the human front could be clearly seen even on the planet behind the afterglow. A full third of the combined fleet's ships disappeared into space because of this stupid operation. The battle at the battleship level currently mainly depends on two places to determine the outcome. One is to see if the battleship can withstand it, and the other is to see if the small ships brought by both sides of the battle can suppress the opponent and not give the opposite small ship a chance to help the battleship attack one's own battleship. If the battleship cannot hold it, the remaining small boats will be scum in the eyes of the local battleship. If a small ship is suppressed by the opponent, it is equivalent to allowing the opponent to focus fire on one's own capital ship. No matter how powerful the ship is, if it is set on fire, it will inevitably lead to an accident. As for the United Fleet, a big problem has arisen on this small boat at this time. This wave of losses can't be said to be a hamstring. It can only be said to be a complete loss. The war situation has begun to inevitably tilt toward the afterglow. The combined fleet itself has invaded Yuhui's territory. There are only so many in total. And one loss means one. But Yuhui is different. Their hometown is here, and they have a steady stream of support. Even a 1 to 2 exchange loss ratio would be a loss. Let alone a unilateral loss directly close to one third. That's why Zhang Feng has been planning the fleet's retreat to prepare for more substantial benefits later. As a result, he never expected that Tang Shi would actually make such a move that could be said to be completely mindless. Expose your most vulnerable part to the enemy. Zhang Feng's face gradually turned livid. And Tang Shi's brain gradually calmed down after making the decision. Making Tang Shi realize what a stupid decision he had just made. Tang Shi, sweating profusely, glanced at the fleet and environment inside the galaxy on the sensor at this time, and knew clearly that the defeat of the combined fleet was certain, although the subsequent plan to raid Klecka is still possible. However, if a mistake is made, at least half of the ships will be lost, including the capital ships. There was nothing more they could do but leave. Zhang Feng gradually calmed down his mentality. He ignored Tang Shi beside him and calmly organized the fleet quickly in the command channel and began to adjust the formation while resisting the frontal pressure given by the afterglow. He just ate the radiation-class ship that had just passed through the flash engine. However, another radiation-class ship that arrived through the jump successfully escaped from the siege of the combined fleet by relying on its jump engine. As this afterglow joined the frontal battlefield, the combined fleet could no longer bear the pressure exerted by the ordinary ships of this afterglow. Zhang Feng could only say in the command channel, Get ready to retreat. But there was one last thing, he had to do before leaving the galaxy. Zhang Feng found the coordinate signal that Chen Ming's signal generator had been sending on the control panel. Tang Shi, who was not under any psychological pressure, immediately realized what he was going to do and said, This is the last resort. Zhang Feng interrupted him directly and said in a low voice, as if he wanted to eat someone, Isn't now the last resort? Don't forget our original purpose. When he wasn't paying attention to Tang, he continued to do what he wanted to do. Soon, among the combined fleet, one of the ships was just brushed by the rays of the microceiver class light radiation cannon. The ruler was so lucky that only part of the ship's hull was damaged. He suddenly stopped following the fleet's retreat. Instead, he suddenly started the jump engine at a dangerous distance. Yu Hui wanted to stop this sudden and strange operation, but was immediately blocked by other warships from the surrounding combined fleet that acted according to Zhang Feng's orders. In the end, 
The ruler disappeared into the fleet. The destination of this ruler's jump is not elsewhere, but behind the battle line of Afterglow. Just like the two radiation class ships just now. At the moment the jump ended, the Dominator class activated the only three remaining large-scale weapons Gauss cannons on its ship that were capable of precise, long-distance attacks. After aiming at the coordinates set by the positioning signal on the planet, the ruler opened fire. It only fired one round before being directly destroyed by Yuhui's fleet. But the three large-mass live ammunition with exaggerated caliber fired by the Gauss cannon had already flown towards the planet without the protection of the atmosphere. The security system sunset had installed on the planet were too late to prepare for the attack by the ruler, who almost jumped to his face in a suicide attack. Three Gaussian SH. LS accurately flew towards the research institute, which was still sending coordinates to the outside world. Chapter 125 Self-Awareness Spiritual World Three Gauss cannonballs reached the sky above the research institute in the blink of an eye. If there is no targeted means, then these three Gaussian SH. LS which are almost unaffected by resistance and even assisted by gravity acceleration, can definitely completely destroy the research institute. At this time, Yue didn't seem to have enough countermeasures. The only ones that might play a role are three giant machines that have just completed their tasks and are preparing to go dormant. But the giant mechanical body itself is extremely heavy. Even if it can jump, it can only jump a few meters high and basically can only move near the ground. It is simply impossible to physically block the Gauss Cannon's SH, LS, and Gauss SH. LS themselves rarely use magnetic materials. Therefore, even if the giant machinery now uses electromagnetic pulses to generate high-intensity magnetic force for traction, it is basically unlikely to be effective. Even if the cannonball fired by the ruler is really made of magnetic material, the giant mechanical body alone will basically not be able to pull the cannonball away in time. At most, the cannonball will deflect slightly before it hits the ground. But the final speed of the Gauss Cannon SH. L and the terrifying power brought by such speed. There is actually no difference whether it hits the Research Institute head-on, or somewhere next to the Research Institute. Anyway, the result is the same. At this time, Yue had no other means of protection. Since they did not stop the ruler at the beginning, it seemed destined that the ruler's SH. LS would hit the Research Institute after entering the planet. Danger is coming. Chen Ming, who is still in the experimental area of the Institute, seems to be about to become the only victim of the Gaussian cannon. But what everyone paid attention to afterglow of these three SH, LS did not expect. The paralyzed iron mine next to it suddenly started to move on its own. On its main control computer, which had been controlled by Chen Ming's psychic energy for a long time and was infiltrated by the persistence of psychic energy, several commands that needed to be executed appeared for no reason. At the same time, all the equipment on the iron mine that had just been destroyed by the final electromagnetic pulse self-destruction of a giant machine were repairing themselves without Chen Ming's active control. In the blink of an eye, the iron ore was active again. It flew over the research institute and blocked the Gaussian SH. LS. And tried to use the ship's ion pulse to destroy the Gauss cannon SH. LS before the Gauss cannon actually hits. But the Gauss cannon SH. L is simply a solid, high-quality, iron block and it is not easy to destroy such a thing. Even though the ion pulse is pretty good for a small weapon, it is still too weak for a large weapon SH. L. It has no ability to cause actual damage at all. And the impact caused by an energy weapon hit can be said to be close to nothing. And it cannot miss the SH. LS flying at high speed. With an unstoppable momentum. The Gauss cannon bounced away dozens of energy restraint SH. LS fired at it. And hit the iron or that was blocking its path. The iron ore shield was shattered instantly. But Shen Ning's previous design and the strange situation that the iron ore is still independently repairing the spacecraft itself play a role. The iron ore shield was not completely shattered directly. But after 8 of the 10 shield layers with different amplitudes and frequencies were shattered, the Gauss cannons SH. LS were successfully decelerated to a barely acceptable range. Although the iron ore in midair also lost its balance directly, rolling and spinning in the air. The iron ore shield has also undergone significant deformation, which may cause the shield system to completely fail at any time. But at least it had taken the opportunity to change the direction of the cannonball's force, causing the first cannonball to turn a corner over the Institute and fly to the open space in the distance. The solid SH. LS splashed a lot of dust when they hit the ground, even covering the Institute from a considerable distance away. Amidst the flying dust, the iron mine readjusted its attitude and flew over the Research Institute again. 
It wasn't even late enough for a complete restoration. The second Gauss cannonball had arrived right after the first. The iron ore blocked it again. And all its remaining shields were shattered. But the SH. LS from the second Fargo's cannon still hit the iron ore's hull unabated. The iron ore had no intention of evading. And simply relied on its hull to withstand the attack of this large weapon. The once extremely solid dolomite steel now looks a bit fragile in the face of Gaussian SH. LS. It had been buffered by the shield and was slightly deflected. The cannonball still caused nearly a quarter of the spacecraft to be damaged due to impact. Even one quarter of the spacecraft was completely shattered upon impact with the cannonball. But at least the second SH. I was successfully deflected and landed in another direction. Chin Ming is still safe now. However, this safe time did not last long. The third and final Gauss cannon SH. I was about to arrive. At this time, the iron mine could only barely support a fragile shield with only one layer. It is an exaggeration that its shield can be opened again after withstanding the attack of a large weapon Gauss cannon. But it continued to block the Gauss cannon without any hesitation. Using itself as a buffer. Even if the ship itself was destroyed. It still had to block the Gauss cannon outside the research institute and in front of Chen Ming. The thin shield was shattered the moment it came into contact with the Gauss cannonball. And failed to have any effect. The speed of the SH. LS did not slow down at all. This third Gauss SH. L hit the iron or head-on after shattering the shield. A frigate was hit head-on by a large weapon without any protection other than armor. The results can be imagined. But what the iron mine was trying to do has been successful. Although the Gaussian SH. L did not perform anything when it hit the shield. The SH. I was indeed affected and deflected when it hit the iron or hull. In the end, the SH. L hit the work area diagonally opposite to the experimental area with less destructive force. The structure of the institute itself is quite solid. The iron ore had previously smashed the dome and blasted open the door. Now the SH. LS from the Gauss cannon hit an area after weakening their power to a certain extent. Under such circumstances, the institute has remained standing. Only some industrial equipment was damaged near the entire institute. And the iron ore itself. The iron ore was completely destroyed after withstanding a frontal attack from Gauss SH. LS leaving only shattered wreckage scattered throughout the research area. At this time, Zhang Feng had confirmed that the source of the positioning signal had disappeared, and retreat became the only thing they needed to do now. The entire combined fleet covered each other, and jumped away from here. A large number of shipwrecks were left floating in space. The Afterglow fleet organized a smaller fleet to patrol the interior of the galaxy, and also arranged more other ships to search in other surrounding galaxies, in case the United Fleet made other moves after the jump. After the ships responsible for the battle left, a large number of Yue responsible for logistics began to control various engineering ships to clean the battlefield, recover the wreckage of the ship, find the core that has not been destroyed, capture the human prisoners who escaped through the escape capsule, and collect the corpses of the dead humans. The latter two are bargaining chips that can be used to exchange things with humans later. At this time, G3 had just moved his perspective away from outside the institute and back to Chen Ming who was prone to accidents. Obviously, it was not normal for the nerve to be suddenly severed just now. It was Chin Ming who had an unknown influence on the liar stone after activating it. Moreover, after Chin Ming fell into coma, G3 was quite confused by the iron or ship that started to move outside. It must submit a complete and clear report on this. Fortunately, it doesn't need to worry too much now. Other afterglows in space are unlikely to give humans a second chance to attack the surface of the planet, when there are already precedents. The only thing it needs to worry about is that Chen Ning may have taken the initiative to stimulate the nerves just now, which may cause deviations in the final results of the use of this device, eventually leading to his death. So G3 immediately controlled the robot to start a more detailed inspection of Chen Ning in all aspects. It needs to ensure that there are no problems with Chen Ning's body functions. At the same time, he also wanted to confirm whether Chen Ning had really passed out and whether it was him who had just controlled the iron mine. In addition, it also had to confirm whether there was anything weird hidden in Chen Ning's body, in order to avoid the possibility of accidents in the use of the device occurring again. Soon, G3 confirmed that Chen Ming's physical condition was in good condition, and his brain waves were consistent with those of a person in a coma. Only his mental power fluctuated significantly. However, fluctuations in this area are normal when using psychic equipment. As long as it does not exceed a certain peak value, there will be no problem. And while G3 confirmed Chun Ming's physical condition, it also confirmed that in addition to the Lie Stone, 
There was also a lower quality spiritual stone hidden in Chen Ming's body. This is actually the most surprising point of G3. Because it had never thought that Chen Ming would carry high intensity spiritual stones with negative effects. And there were two more. Even one of them did not take any safety measures and was carried directly close to the body without any concern for the negative effects. This also explains why Chen Ming's mental power has improved far beyond expectations during this period. A psyker who carries this thing every day either goes crazy because of the psychic pulse, or his psychic power increases significantly because he resists the psychic pulse. G3 is still quite suspicious that Chen Ming's ectoplasm stone has special effects that it doesn't know yet. Because before this, the detection equipment inside the institute could not detect the existence of this spiritual stone at all. The weak ectoplasmic stone was placed in a box made of silent alloy and could not be detected. There must be some special reason why this powerful ectoplasmic stone was not detected even though it was placed in his pocket. As the responsible individual on Chen Ming's side, G3 must investigate it clearly and give a reasonable report. But all he can do now is arrange robots to collect the fragments of the iron or scattered throughout the institute. At the same time, he kept an eye on Chen Ming's physical indicators in case something happened to Chen Ming suddenly. The reason is that Yu Wei currently only knows how to use this device, but not its principles. So when they encountered unexpected situations one after another, for example, a sudden attack by humans forced them to activate their psychic equipment before it was at its optimum level. For example, Chen Ming anticipated their methods in advance and responded accordingly. As a result, they could only forcibly control Chen Ming and conduct experiments instead of relying on drugs to make Chen Ming coma first and then conduct experiments. Another example is that Chen Ming, whose mobility was restricted, still had the ability to use the ectoplasm stone to fight back, which eventually led to an accident in the device startup process. After encountering these things, all Yu Wei can do is wait and hope that the final result will be in their favor. After G3 arranged for the robots of the Institute to start cleaning the wreckage of the iron or around the Institute and clearing the ruins of the work area, while paying attention to Chen Ming's situation, he began to write the report he wanted to submit. The Qilin nerve extraction equipment was not activated at the highest point of psychic energy fluctuation, and the actual success rate was reduced between 20% and 30%. The artificial ineffective spiritual nerve was stimulated and broken by the Lai Spirit Stone carried by Chen Ming. It failed to maintain normal operation, and the broken part completely entered Chen Ming's body and could not be recovered. It cannot be confirmed whether the artificial ineffective spiritual nerves have successfully absorbed Chen Ming's spiritual nerves before Chen Ning wakes up. But the equipment program is still running, and follow-up reactions need to be observed. G3 finished writing the summary, and then began to add more details to this report, and also attached various complex data recorded in the equipment. And when Chen Ming had fallen into a coma, and his brain waves were completely calm, the Iron Mind moved on its own to protect the Research Institute and Chen Ming. Currently, G3 is also collecting the wreckage of the iron, or for investigation. However, like Chen Ming's current situation. It will also take time for follow-up monitoring. G3 is observing Chen Ming. Chen Ming, who was under observation, was having a hazy dream in a hazy state. He dreamed of a chaotic steel jungle composed of mechanical equipment, worn-out metal, and a large number of spacecraft wreckage. And he was wandering among them like a lost traveler, holding a cup of fairy leaf tea inexplicably in his hand. Chen Ming, who was completely confused about the situation, drank the tea in his cup in one gulp and gradually accelerated his pace, walking through the steel jungle. After walking for an unknown amount of time, Chen Ming found a special open space in the steel jungle. It is an open space of about 0.5 square kilometers, approximately the size of a cruiser. In the center of this clearing, there is a hill piled up from the wreckage of various spaceships. Chen Ming took a closer look and found that the wreckage of the spacecraft on the wreckage mountain were all spacecraft that he had personally controlled. The relatively flat open space under the wreckage mountain was actually the top armor of the refraction class ship he had recently controlled. However, as Chen Ming took stock of all the wreckage, he found that there was one missing ship on the mountain of wreckage that he had personally controlled. The iron ore. The wreckage of the iron ore does not appear here. Although there are many spacecrafts that Chen Ming indirectly controlled through Yu Wei individuals that did not appear here. But the iron ore is his first ship. So this shouldn't be the case. Right? Chin Ning approached the peak of the spacecraft wreckage with doubts, and stood here thinking for a while. But before Chin Ning could figure out the reason, a man who looked exactly like him suddenly walked out from behind the mountain of debris. His eyes were full of longing, as if he wanted to take his place. 
if Chen Ning hadn't just seen from a distance that this thing that looked like a person was transformed from a white, tender and fat giant nerve like a worm. Moreover, the maintenance technician Chen Ning in the current Chen Ning's memory has long been completely assimilated by the current Chen Ning in the process of learning technology through memory. Chen Ning really almost thought that the maintenance engineer Chen Ming had faked the corpse. So when facing this monster that looked exactly like him, Chen Ming hesitated for a while, then drove a complete iron or that suddenly appeared in his dream and crushed it. Chen Ning didn't know where the iron mine came from or how he got on the iron mine. But anyway, that's what he did. And after he did, the crushed flesh suddenly turned back into the fat nerve it had been before. Although it was still crushed, it moved like a living creature. It decomposed into the smallest fragments, penetrated through the iron ore's armor like some kind of fluid, and gradually stuck to Chen Ming's body. At the same time, it began to gradually shrink into normal-sized nerves, following Chen Ming's palm and drilling into his body from the position where he used his ability to transport materials over long distances. Chen Ning felt no pain or danger during this process. This crushed nerve is like a docile dog, no longer looking like it was about to eat people. When the nerves completely penetrated into Chen Ning's body, the dream suddenly stopped. Chen Ning immediately opened his eyes. He subconsciously wanted to reach out and touch his eye socket where the nerve penetrated. But as soon as he moved, he discovered that he was still lying on Yuhui's psychic device. Although the restraints on his hands and feet had been removed, they were still cuffed to it by the shackles that came with the device, making him unable to move. The chap lips told Chen Ming that he had been unconscious for at least four hours, and everything on him that Yu Wei had not carefully checked before was also taken away. The pistol, the whispering stone, and the portable psychic wave generator equipped with the whispering stone were all gone. But Chen Ning doesn't care about these external things now. After all, I'm actually still alive. Chen Ming tried to struggle for a few times, but found that he couldn't get away, and Yu Wei didn't show any sign of wanting to talk to him. He simply threw his head back and closed his eyes. Concentrate on what just happened. First of all, he was certain that the thick nerve that changed into his appearance in the dream must be the severed nerve that drilled into his eye socket before he fell into coma. The longing in its eyes after it became a human was directed at Chen Ning himself. Maybe it's a parasite that controls the body. It may also be some kind of insect related to psychic energy, which has some special effect on psychic energy. After all, this device itself emits psychic fluctuations. And this nerve also emits psychic fluctuations. Then the problem arises. What does the steel jungle he was in just now represent? What does that mountain of debris in the steel jungle represent? What concept does it symbolize? Or is it his spiritual world? Although Chen Ming doesn't know the specific situation now. But he was certain that this steel jungle was most likely a place related to his psychic powers and his brain. Maybe you can ask your boss later. When it comes to psychic abilities, the boss definitely knows a lot more than he does. For now, Chen Ming plans to treat this steel jungle as his spiritual world for the time being. From this point of view, the nerve first physically penetrated into his eye socket and into his brain, entered his spiritual world, and wanted to replace Chen Ming's existence. The result was of course a failure. It was completely crushed to death by the iron mine that suddenly appeared, and was finally absorbed in reverse by Chen Ming. But thinking about it this way, that nerve should still be in your mind. Right? Chen Ning tried to use his mental power to gradually emanate from his brain. However, he didn't feel anything strange, nor did he find anything in his mind that didn't belong here. Rather, Chen Ning felt that his mental power had greatly increased, and his spiritual power seemed to have also been enhanced a lot. And it's either temporarily enhanced through various equipment, or it becomes stronger in a practical sense. It seems to be the result of that nerve being absorbed. Chen Ning immediately checked his panel, which could most intuitively reflect the intensity of his psychic energy. Then he discovered that the number of controllable spaceships jumped from 4 to 10, more than tripling. You must know that the number of controllable spaceships is linked to Chen Ming's mental power. Since the number of controllable spaceships has doubled, his mental power should also have doubled. Chen Ming immediately thought about modifying something and testing it. But when he selected the target, he discovered that the iron ore had disappeared from the list of spacecraft controlled by him. Was it demolished by Afterglow? This thought flashed through Chen Ming's mind. Then he suddenly noticed that he seemed to be able to sense the remaining fragments of the iron ore on the planet he is on now, in a factory in the colony on the planet, although only the wreckage of the iron ore is left, although it does not have any monitoring equipment to record the footage. But Chen Ming directly saw the situation around the wreckage of the iron mine. This should also be the effect brought about by the increase in spiritual power. These scattered fragments, 
which add up to thousands of pieces, were separated by Yuhui into different parts of the factory. But they were in the same situation. That is, they were also surrounded by a large amount of equipment. Sunset seemed to be studying the wreckage. Chin Ming took a quick glance and found that the black box of the iron ore was still there. He can even read the data directly with his brain. This kind of reading would not have any impact on the device itself. So he did it directly. Chin Ning skipped a lot of useless data recorded in the black box and jumped directly to after he was unconscious. At this time, the iron ore was like a normal spaceship, paralyzed in place after losing Chin Ming's remote control. Contrary to Chin Ming's expectation, the three giant machines did not directly dismantle the iron mine, but stood by in place. Many robots in the institute took advantage of this moment to swarm out and repair the entrance to the institute and the dome outside. Everything looked very peaceful, with no sign that the iron ore would be violently destroyed, in addition to the ongoing battle in space. Although Chen Ming couldn't see the specific battle situation clearly, he could still see the continuous explosions that stretched across the entire front. This must have been a mistake on one side, causing the battle to become one-sided. As for who made the mistake, Chen Ning knew it when he saw the familiar appearance of the Gauss Cannon SH. LS coming straight to the Research Institute from space. This was launched by the 14th Army Corps and was used when the possibility of rescue was finally lost. The SH. LS used to take him out. Chapter 126 Reverse Absorption Growth of Psychic Energy When Chen Ming saw the scene, he couldn't say he was angry, but he just had a suppressed emotion building up. Ever since the day he chatted with Bai Quan, everything the 14th Army had done so far had given him the feeling that it was just pretending. Although he seemed to have made a lot of preparations, he did have a fight with Yu Wei. But in the real sense, they didn't do anything practical. No contact. No plan. No action. Even Chen Ming only saw the fire of the spaceship explosion in space, and did not even see the shadow of the rescue force and rescue spacecraft that were supposed to land on the planet. No. They seemed to have done something. Just when he couldn't beat Yu Hui and was about to retreat, three rounds were fired at Chen Ming, who was the rescue target. I have to say this is really a top rescue. Even if Chen Ming, who has no tactical literacy at all, is asked to think about it, there is a better way than the 14th Army. Just contact him first and ask him to provide some information. And at the same time be prepared to wait for rescue. Then the fleet of the 14th Legion directly raided the galaxy based on the information he provided and dealt with the relatively loose azimuth fleet inside the galaxy as soon as it arrived through the jump. At the same time, the landing troops were directly dispatched to land on the planet, find Chen Ming according to the coordinates, and quickly transfer them to a spacecraft above the cruiser level. Then a jump and the mission is over. If he moves fast enough, Yu Wei may not even be able to react. But this time the actions of the 14th Legion were very strange, as if their goal was not to save Chen Ming. Inexplicably, there was a conflict with Yu Hui's battleship fleet. Chen Ming relied on the afterglows that had come here and were controlled by him. And he could confirm that there were no capital ship-level ships in the galaxy. In other words, the several afterglow radiation-class battleships that were fighting against the 14th Legion all jumped over from other galaxies. But according to normal principles, it is normal for Yu Wei to prepare a two-capital ship that can provide support in various galaxies at any time. But a total of four battleships appeared in the afterglow of the entire battle. This is 100% caused by the 14th Legion delaying the battle for too long. But there was really no need for a battle of this scale to occur during the rescue mission. Chin Ming really couldn't understand why. Chin Ming took a deep breath and thought about it before forgetting it. If you can't understand it, don't understand it. He no longer cares what happens to other people. He just wants to do three things now. Find out who arranged the stupid plan. Find out who gave the order to attack him. And make the person who did these two things pay the price. Chin Ming subconsciously wanted to write down something new on his notepad in the Iron Mine computer. But then, he suddenly realized that the Iron Mine was gone. After suppressing the sudden irritability in his heart, Chin Ming could only remember these things in his mind. At the same time, continue to read the contents of the black box. See what happened to these three SH. LS in the end to prevent them from destroying the Institute. And see how the Iron Ore was destroyed. At present, it seems that Yu Wei has no means to stop the Gaussian SH. LS that are already approaching overhead. But Chen Ning is still alive now. Which means something must have happened during this time to prevent the Gaussian SH. L from landing. Could it be that Yu Hui has some backup plan? While Chen Ning had this question in his mind, he saw the most unexpected situation happen. The iron ore, which had been paralyzed from the moment he fell unconscious, 
suddenly began to move on its own. Chen Ning's spirit suddenly became tense. Not only was he surprised, but Chen Ning was also nervous and unbelievable. The iron or sudden movement seemed to him a dangerous situation. Because with his ability, even if he is in a coma, unless someone walks directly to the spacecraft in person and relies on the electronic equipment and mechanical systems of the spacecraft to manually control the spacecraft. Otherwise, no external means, such as hackers, would be able to break through the highest authority he has. There was obviously no chance for Yu Hui to board the Iron Mine. And Chen Ming did not dare to board the Iron Mine because of his ability. Not to mention the 14th Army Corps. What is the cause of this? Chen Ming frowned and watched the rest of the video. As he expected, the iron ore was destroyed by the Gauss Cannon of the 14th Legion in the end. In fact, Chen Ming already had such a guess the moment he saw the iron ore taking off. And the subsequent video only confirmed this. Chen Ming didn't pay much attention. Anyway, he kept these things firmly in his heart. And he would definitely take revenge on them all if he had the opportunity in the future. Now, he still has to look for the traces left by the iron or when it made such an action to confirm that there will be no safety issues with the spacecraft controlled by his ability. Chen Ming found the relevant content almost instantly. However, it was only then that he discovered that this series of commands to control the iron or to take action after he fell into coma appeared inexplicably in the iron ore's computer. Without any source. It was the same as Chen Ming usually gave remote orders to the iron mine. But by then he had passed out. Therefore, the one who issued the order was the iron mine itself. At this moment, Chen Ning suddenly remembered the situation in his dream when he was unconscious. Although he couldn't determine the specific time, he had a feeling. The time when the iron ore was destroyed happened to be the time when he inexplicably got on the iron or to crush the person transformed from the giant nerve in his dream. Even though the time in the dream does not correspond to the real time. Because when Chen Ming got on the iron ore ship, it was near the end of his dream. Outside, the iron ore was destroyed not long after he passed out of coma. But even so, Chen Ning still believed that these two things happened at the same point in time. Think about it this way, and connect these two things. It's hard to say that it's because he controlled the spacecraft for a long time. And then, the metaphysical existence of psychic energy caused the iron or to have its own consciousness. Right? Chen Ming thought about it carefully, but still wasn't sure about this idea. After all, there is a possibility that the nerve he saw before he fell into coma was boring into his body. This triggers some of the body's defense mechanisms. Let his subconscious mind instinctively make some actions to protect himself even in a coma. Such as the current activation of the iron ore. To be honest, it wouldn't be too surprising if something happened to a psychic being. Psychic instincts and so on are also acceptable. Even if he really thought this way, Chen Ning suddenly felt that it was entirely possible that the iron mind had its own consciousness. This could even explain what happened in his previous dream. The iron mind was destroyed outside. So the consciousness of the iron mind entered Chen Ming's mind along with his spiritual energy, appeared in the dream, and helped him crush that nerve. The more he thought about it, the more Chen Ming felt that it was possible. However, no matter how he thought about it, it was still too metaphysical. He had no theoretical basis to support such speculation. Unless, go back and ask your boss if there are any similar cases. There's no point in getting hung up here now. I can't go back in the dream. And I can't repair the iron or after it's broken like this. Let alone recover the consciousness that I don't know exists. What's more, both Chen Ming himself and the wreckage of the iron mine are on Yu Hui's territory. Before you get out, thinking about this is just a waste of time. However, when Chen Ning just glanced at the fragments of the iron ore's wreckage collected by the afterglow, he did find something that could be recycled. For example, there are a large number of damaged armor plates, hull materials, and things originally stored in the storage compartment. There are also some devices. Wait. Equipment? Chen Ning suddenly noticed the equipment that had been collected by the afterglow and was still intact when the iron ore was destroyed. But if he remembered correctly, not all the equipment on the iron ore had been modified by him. In other words, when these things leave the spacecraft, Chen Ning will lose control of them. But it's different now. Regardless of whether he has come into contact with all the equipment on the iron mine, he can now directly open the panels of these equipment and perform repairs, modifications, etc. on them. Could it be said that he can control any device he comes into contact with at will? Chin Ming opened his eyes and looked at the psychic device where he was lying. Immediately afterwards, he actually opened the panel of the device he had touched. The name of this device is Chiling Nerve Extraction Device. 
just like all the spaceships that Chen Ning once controlled, and all the things that once appeared on his spaceships. Chen Ning can modify it, or directly control its operation through consciousness. What is this? A blessing in disguise? Not only has the spiritual power increased significantly, but there is even a new ability to directly control mechanical equipment like a spaceship. It's just that although Chen Ning can control the operation of the equipment, he still doesn't understand the working principle of the equipment, and he doesn't know the process and purpose of the equipment's operation. Without the assistance of a manual, he still couldn't use the device. The most he could do was press the start and stop buttons remotely. It didn't look like Yu Hui would give him instructions, or he can only figure it out on his own. But Chen Ning can be sure of one thing. Sunset's purpose must be his psychic powers. Because what they were doing before made him feel dangerous. It shows that Yu Hui doesn't care about his life safety. Nor does he care about him as a person. All they care about is his spiritual energy. Therefore, Chen Ning could actually roughly guess the name of this device. The spiritual nerve is the source of psychic energy. After extracting the spiritual nerve, Chen Ning's spiritual energy was completely in Yu Hui's hands. The nerve that penetrated his brain before was most likely also the spiritual nerve. It's just that Chen Ning doesn't understand now. The effect of the equipment is to extract spiritual nerves. So why should he insert another spiritual nerve into his brain? This still seems to be a necessary step to start the device. Chen Ning thought about it, and suddenly thought that this spiritual nerve seemed to be connected to the medicine bottle where it was placed. It was not supposed to break. But instead it broke after being stimulated and burrowed directly into his brain. If Chen Ning had not stimulated it before, it should have continued to maintain the connection with the medicine bottle. While getting into Chen Ming's brain and extracting Chen Ming's spiritual nerve, this should be considered a reasonable explanation. But there is still a problem that bothers Chen Ming. Just take it out, and then you can. The specialness of his spiritual power is there. So he can't transplant it to others. Right? Let's not talk about whether the transplant is done casually. And what is the success rate of the transplant? Even if it can really be transplanted, Chen Ming's spiritual power will be extremely dangerous to Yu Hui no matter who he puts it on. Since it's not good for anyone, then what is Yu Hui doing for this purpose? After we, these ten cans can't be used to transplant spiritual nurse. Right? Or is there some special device that can directly allow a certain afterglow individual to indirectly control the Ling nerve through the device? But Yu Hui has a social structure similar to humans. And there are also high level people. The upper level Yu Hui relies on Chen Ming's spiritual power to control the lower level Yu Hui. Is this really feasible in Yu Hui's society? Or is it that Yu Wei can brainwash his own people? So that the individual responsible for controlling Chen Ning's spiritual nerve can only think about Yu Wei's future? Chen Ning couldn't figure it out. After all, there were too many possibilities. And this is something that Yu Hui needs to consider. He has no time to think about what will happen after his spiritual nerve is extracted. Isn't this a mistake? Might as well think about something else. For example, how should he prepare a new way to escape from Yu Wei now? Chen Ming now has two options. One is to get a ship and modify it to have an unstable hyperspace channel jump engine. Then go up and make a random jump to see where destiny will send him. As for how the ship came, Chen Ming now controls so many Yue individuals. And he can definitely get several ships by just thinking of ways. Speaking of which, Chen Ming suddenly remembered the Buffalo class ship that Hui Wang gave him before. Although the iron ore was gone, he had never moved the Buffalo before and was parked outside the research institute. And it's not just the ship itself. There is also a lot of materials on the ship, as well as the prisoners of the 14th Legion that Chen Ming captured before. Chen Ming immediately took a look at the buffalo and found that it was still parked intact outside the research institute, and there were no changes inside or outside the ship, although they learned that the buffalo was safe and the captives were not missing. But Chen Ming doesn't want to think about how to deal with these prisoners of the 14th Army now. The most important thing for him now is to consider a way to escape. It was impossible for Yu Wei to say that they could not see the buffalo. But they did not do anything to the buffalo. Maybe he didn't pay attention. Maybe he forgot. Or maybe he thought that an ordinary cargo ship didn't have the ability to resist. But the most likely possibility is that this buffalo is a trap left by Yu Hui specifically to catch Chen Ning fish. In short, if Chen Ning wanted a safe and stable means of escape, then the possibility would definitely not be on this buffalo. But somewhere else. Therefore, Chen Ming's second choice for escape path is still with Gamma Z. Chen Ming directly opened the panel of the controlled afterglow individuals, and roughly counted the number of afterglow individuals he currently controlled. The number of these afterglow individuals has not decreased in batches, indicating that the afterglow he controls has not been exposed yet. 
however. Chen Ning did not see the alpha level afterglow during the counting process. It was indeed forced outside the battle line on its way over, and was destroyed by the 14th Legion's offensive. In other words, the galaxy where the Crystal Crab planet is located now does not have an alpha level afterglow sitting there. There is a high probability that afterglow will look back and add one. After entering a galaxy completely controlled by Chen Ming, the alpha level afterglow sent by afterglow will definitely not be able to escape Chen Ming's clutches. However, it is not certain how long it will take Yue to do this. So if Chen Ming wants to leave quickly, he definitely can't bet his hopes on this. You still have to contact Gamma Z now. Chen Ning looked at Gamma Z and found that it was not in the galaxy where the Crystal Crab planet was located, but in another galaxy closest to this galaxy. Chen Ning directly asked it through his consciousness. What are you doing? Gamma Z was not surprised that Chen Ming suddenly contacted it and replied seriously. Ready to rescue you. Do you still believe I'm alive? I wouldn't believe you if you were really dead. Chen Ming was choked by Gamma Z. But what Gamma Z said was fine. If he dies, then his psychic powers will definitely fail. Now that there are no psychic restrictions and Gamma Z is free, there is no need to risk being killed by other afterglows to save him. Chen Ming continued to ask, What are the specific plans? Gamma Z immediately replied, There are also alpha level individuals in other galaxies. I am trying to think of ways to speed up the spread of individuals and forcefully create accidents to contact the alpha level individuals in this galaxy. There's a lot of risk involved. But a cruiser class or a buff ship with a jump engine is the only possibility to rescue you. What Gamma Z said made Chen Ming feel at ease. At least it didn't need him to worry about it at all. As long as you understand. Just ask if you need anything. New. Contact with Gamma Z is lost. Chen Ming continued to think about his current situation. Since Yu Hui's side has already broken up with each other. The plan to find a way to extract the Ling nerve for the second time must be on the way. But for him. It seems that the stable escape plan from Yue can only be placed on Gamma Z, who is trying hard. So what he still needs to do now is to save his life before Gamma Z completes its plan. After much deliberation, he finally had to study this device. At least when Yue is causing trouble. Let the equipment appear to be functioning normally so that Yue won't be suspicious. But before Chen Ming did this, he suddenly felt that his mental power seemed to have changed again. Chen Ming closed his eyes and felt it carefully for a while and found that the strength of his psychic energy was still continuing to grow. It was obvious that he had not done any exercise, nor had he received any mental stimulation. Just as Chen Ming was making a second check with some confusion, he suddenly found that the number of controllable spaceships on his panel had increased by 1. From 10 to 11. The changes in the panel confirmed that Chen Ming's feeling that his mental power was growing was not an illusion, but that his mental power was really growing. And Chen Ming also immediately discovered the exact reason for his increase in mental power. In a sense, his current mental strength is not growing, but his body is adapting. Adapt to the enhancement of his spiritual energy and mental power after absorbing the spiritual nerve in reverse. That is to say, Chen Ming's mental power has actually increased a lot, but his body did not adapt to the increase quickly during the coma. That's why the current situation appears, which seems to be strengthening, generally speaking. It's almost the same. In short, becoming stronger is definitely a good thing for Chen Ming. After Chen Ming had the initiative, he quickly adapted to this enhanced mental power. Then Chen Ming discovered that he had a new ability. It is the ability to create that he has always been obsessed with. Chen Ming no longer needs to use something as a template to achieve a manufacturing-like effect through his transformation ability. From now on, as long as Chen Ming masters the method of manufacturing, he can directly use mental energy and materials to create everything he needs out of thin air. Chen Ming immediately tried it. Of course not on his own side. After all, he must have many afterglows staring at him now. So after thinking about it, he chose to do something on the pirate space station. On the engineering ship he had encountered before. Because at this time, the factory director and Lao Lu happened to be driving this engineering ship out on a mission. And there happened to be only two of them on this ship now. Or in other words, only two of them dared to sail this engineering ship that Chen Ming had touched. Maybe he can also add a bald head. After all, he took the initiative to remind Chen Ming of the military's little actions before. And Chen Ming still has a certain affection for him. Speaking of the bald head, Chen Ming suddenly thought that he should express his feelings towards the bald head? After all, they took a certain risk to help him. So it would be unreasonable for him to not show any expression. Before, it was because he encountered a lot of things all the way and didn't have time. Now that he is free and has remembered it, 
he must make some compensation to others. It just so happens that Lao Wu is in charge of his card now. When the business is done, he can just talk to Lao Wu and say, That's it. Chin Ming thought about it quickly, and then directly took over the engineering ship's voice broadcast system. Hey, can you hear me? The two people who were controlling the engineering ship were stunned for a moment, and they immediately realized what was going on. Xiao Ming, you are still alive. Yes, I encountered a little accident here, but I shouldn't die for the time being. When you look back, you should hear the news from the 14th Legion that the mission failed and that I am dead. So remember to pretend to be more serious and treat me as dead. The factory director asked with some confusion. Is there an accident with the 14th Army Corps? If I had to say something, my assessment would be that it was not an accident. It was intentional. Chen Ming quickly explained the situation he encountered to the two of them. And then said, There must be a problem with the 14th Army Corps. But I will find a way to solve this matter myself. If they want my life, it will not be a problem that can be solved through normal communication. So you better not get involved. The factory director shook his head slightly and said, We have been involved from the beginning. Old Wu also casually echoed, As long as you start taking action against the 14th Army, we will definitely be the first ones to be implicated. Then what do you think? I don't have any ideas. We won't be afraid at all if the 14th Legion comes looking for us. What is this that I haven't seen before? Chin Ming was silent for a while and said, Thank you, but we'll talk about this later. I want to test my psychic abilities now. Are there any new features? Right. As Chin Ming spoke, he created a lightweight exoskeleton armor directly on the engineering ship. The mental energy consumption of the entire process is at least five times that of transformation. Ouch. Old Wu circled around the exoskeleton armor that appeared out of thin air a few times and then started to touch it habitually. Chen Ming had no intention of stopping it, but instead let Old Wu put it on directly. And as before, while Lao Wu was wearing it, more modifications were made to the armor. The whole process went very smoothly, without any impact due to distance or being touched by other people. After the test, Chen Ming Yu and factory director Lao Wu had a brief chat and ended the communication. After all, he still has important things to do now and doesn't have much time to waste. But when Chen Ming ended the communication, a voice suddenly sounded in his ears. Inside the institute, Mr. Chen Ming. Although it was a homogeneous mechanical voice without emotion, Chen Ming recognized it immediately. It's brilliant sound. Chapter 127 Yu Hui's Concession. Yu Hui's Plan. Yu Hui Surrender. Chen Ming did not expect that brilliance, which had not been seen for a while, suddenly appeared here. It seemed that it had escaped the attack that the 14th Legion asked the company to launch into the galaxy where he was staying before. This is not a bad thing for Chen Ming. After all, his relationship with Hui Hui is relatively normal and comfortable. Therefore, he did not directly vent the emotions accumulated in his heart on it, but asked seriously, Brilliant! What do you want from me? At this time, Hui Wang was very surprised that Chen Ming could directly distinguish different afterglow individuals behind the same voice. But it did not dwell on it and said truthfully, I have a new task that I need to communicate with you. Oh! G3 who had a conflict with Chen Ning just a few hours ago, disappeared, and then Hui Huang, who had a good cooperative relationship with him earlier, came. Chen Ning knew very well what mission Hui Huang was talking about, but he still asked knowingly, What mission? Appease! Chen Ming sneered, pointed to the Qiling nerve extraction device under him, which was still running, but should never run smoothly again, and the several shackles on his body, and asked, This is to appease me! As soon as he finished speaking, the equipment under him stopped running automatically, and all the shackles holding Chen Ming were released. As the spiritual energy fluctuations of the device gradually subsided, Chen Ming suddenly realized at this time that the sense of danger given to him by the Qiling nerve extraction device had completely disappeared. It may be that Chen Ming has already controlled this device. Or it may be that the source of the real sense of danger is the spiritual nerve. But these are no longer important now. There is no way Chen Ning will let Yu Hui use this device on him for the second time. Chen Ning rubbed his wrist, stood up from the device, and asked Hui Hui, You don't think I'm a fool? Do you? No. Of course you have reason to suspect that we just want to stall for time and then conduct some nasty experiments on you again. Chen Ning reached out and patted the extraction device next to him and said, But I think this is not an experiment, but something more dangerous. Unless you can tell me what is that thing that got into my head but failed to kill me. Maybe I can change something? Chen Ming's words silenced Hui Wang for a moment. 
obviously. There is no reasonable reason at this time to explain what needs to be administered directly through the orbit to contact the human brain. And the above arrangement obviously did not allow it to tell the actual situation. We we was extremely embarrassed at this time. It had previously clearly opposed the proposal to extract psychic energy from Chen Ning. But its opinions were not adopted. And the superiors even directly kicked it out in the final stage of the mission. But now, after the plan failed, it was needed to come back and help appease Chen Ming. Even if there was a bigger accident in the plan, he wouldn't have to talk to Chen Ming. He would just collect the body for Chen Ming and be done with it. It understands Yu Wei's group's fear of Chen Ming's ability and their desire to take this ability into their own hands. But it completely fails to understand how such a decision was made without considering the risks and consequences in order to achieve the goal. In the end, it even needs to be kicked out to wipe the butt. But these brilliance can only be thought of. What it can actually do now is to spit out four words after being silent for a long time. Terribly sorry. Chen Ming always felt awkward when hearing Hui Hui's apology. As if it wasn't Hui Hui who was apologizing. At this moment, his mind suddenly flashed through all the strange things that Hui Hui had displayed deliberately some time ago. After thinking in silence for a while, Jin Ming made up his mind. He suddenly let out a long sigh and said, Let's start with a lighter topic. To be honest, I still have a pretty good impression of you. If you hadn't come, I wouldn't have been able to talk to Yu Wei, who wanted to kill me. But if we continue this topic, you and I may be at a loss for words. Good. Hui Wang agreed decisively and asked, Then where do we start? Let's start from here. Did you take the initiative to comfort me? Hui Wang answered decisively again. No. Oh. So is this a task forced upon you directly? Yes. It's really surprising. Afterglow doesn't seem to have adequate planning to deal with various possible scenarios. So much so that in the end, Hui Wang, an individual whom Chin Ning was very familiar with, was chosen to carry out the operation of pacifying, which was unreliable at all costs. I don't know what they are thinking. Maybe they just want to delay time through their glorious existence and presentation? Just after Chen Ming was silent for half a minute because he was thinking about Yu Hui's thoughts. Hui Hui suddenly took the initiative and said, Can I ask you some questions? Okay. But you have to wait until I finish asking. What Chen Ming said seemed very unreasonable. But now Yu Hui obviously does not have the ability to immediately start the second extraction process of spiritual nerves. So they still have ideas about Chen Ming's spiritual power and don't want to kill Chen Ming now. Chin Ming's behavior of testing the bottom line is nothing at all. However, he did not continue to talk about these things, but brought up a previous incident. What were you doing after I left? I told you before that I will continue my previous mission of looking after the galaxy and managing the colonies. The three colonies in the galaxy mainly produce mineral resources, and I need to allocate their output. As expected, Hui Wang mentioned the mining farm again. Then Chin Ming could actually try asking it some suggestive questions. If Wee Wong really has any special ideas, he will try his best to answer them. But you have to turn a few corners and use some cover to hide these hints within the surface problems. It's best to ask a few more general questions before moving on to formal questions. So Chen Ming said to Wee Hui, I need to think about something. You can ask one first. Chen Ming suddenly really surprised Wee Hui. After a pause, it asked Chen Ming, Are you injured? Do you need medical treatment? We also have medicines for injuries caused by psychic energy. Hui Wang asked something that sounded simple. But in fact, he was testing Chen Ming's condition and trying to figure out his physical condition. Although Chen Ming is still quite greedy for medicine. If he dares to ask for Yu Hui, he will definitely dare to hit him with a stick and conduct a detailed examination to determine the medication policy. So he answered casually without thinking at all. I'm fine now and don't need treatment. Okay, it's my turn to ask. Brilliant. I remember that the galaxy you were in before was also attacked. Right. Are you okay? Chen Ning's question would reveal that he was still connected to humanity. But since Chen Ning can remotely control the spacecraft, anyone who is not a fool can guess that Yu Wei has the ability to communicate remotely, even if there are any restrictions that cannot be controlled accurately due to the distance. It is always no problem to let the spacecraft sign a few words in space. It is the simplest thing to communicate. It's just that Chen Ning has been performing well, and seems to really want to join Yu Wei, and has no intention of resisting. At least when Hui Wang didn't mention the details of Chen Ming's troubles with any Yu Wei. This is the image of Chen Ming in Yu Hui's eyes. Now even if Yu Wei knows that Chen Ming really keeps in touch with humans, the impact is basically gone. And it is even a good thing for Chen Ming, because Yu Wei couldn't let him go. After the first time, 
the second extraction of spiritual energy would definitely be more secretive, making it even harder for Qin Ming to detect. Maybe in some sleep, Qin Ming was tied to the extraction device again. As for the humans, since the Gauss cannons had bombarded him in front, they would definitely not come back to save him. But this is for Qin Ming. As long as Qin Ming openly discloses the fact that he can communicate with humans, and at the same time does not say that humans will not come to save him, then Yu Wei has to consider the possibility of the second coming of mankind. Because from Yu Wei's perspective, humans only chose to kill Qin Ming when the situation was bad, and they had no choice but to do so. Since Qin Ming is not dead, humans will either come to save him again or kill him again. There is no third possibility. Although in fact humans do not know that Qin Ming is still alive. As long as Qin Ming doesn't take the initiative to spread the news that he is alive, humans will never come again. Unless the purpose is somewhere else, such as Kletka. But Sun said didn't know this. Therefore, under the premise that Qin Ming took the initiative to tell the situation, they must allocate part of their strength to guard against the human fleet that may appear again. This can be regarded as Qin Ming's little calculation. The less power Yue concentrates around him, the greater the possibility of him escaping safely in the future. Hui Wang didn't need to think about the problems in Qin Ming's words for Yue as a whole. It only needed to answer Qin Ming's questions. I have been staying on that planet to control the internal operations of the galaxy. And I have not actually installed it on the spacecraft. When the human fleet launched a surprise attack, I immediately called for rescue, and at the same time installed it on the ship and prepared for battle. But before I could actually take off, our capital ship support arrived. The human fleet chose to retreat. It seems that the brilliant luck is still very good. Qin Ming quickly accepted the brilliant answer, and suddenly asked with some whim, Then your current position is already here with me? No, I'm still in the original galaxy. Due to the massive losses of our individuals, I need to urgently deploy the production lines of each colony. And at the same time, I need to clean up the debris of the entire battlefield. The communication with you now is only long-distance communication. Qin Ming then asked. In other words, you are still on the planet I stayed on before. In that industrial colony? Yes. I see. After Qin Ming asked a few questions, the originally extremely stiff atmosphere between Qin Ming and Yu Hui did relax. However, Qin Ming also knew that Yu Hui definitely just wanted to delay time. And the specific method of delay was not important. So he acquiesced to Hui Hui's chatting with Qin Ming about various things. As long as he didn't expose important information. But Qin Ming now wants to delay time. If Gamma Z wants to expand rapidly in another galaxy, it will take time to get the alpha level afterglow that controls the galaxy. Therefore, delaying time is also good for Qin Ming. The future direction of things will depend on the speed of preparation of Gamma Z and afterglow. What are your arrangements for me in the future? If it is to return to the past, then there is no need to say it. I don't believe it even if you say it. Brilliance fell silent for a moment. Qin Ming also knew that this question would definitely not be answered. So he took advantage of the situation and said what he really wanted to say. I feel a little uncomfortable here in the experimental area. Let's go next door to talk. Good. Qin Ming walked out of the experimental area without any obstruction. I saw that the industrial area diagonally across from the experimental area was gone. There were only many robots cleaning up the remains of the building. And it seemed that they were preparing to rebuild. If it wasn't the iron mine number, then the entire research institute and Qin Ming himself should be missing now. Through the original work area, Qin Ming could still see that the dome outside, which was smashed by the iron or impenetrated by the Gauss cannon, had been repaired, continued to maintain an environment suitable for human survival under the dome. But Qin Ming is now completely unaffected by these seemingly thoughtful small favors. After all, what Yu Hui did was like asking someone to have breakfast every day. But as he ate, he discovered that this person wanted his own kidney. No matter how much you eat for breakfast, it is nothing compared to kidneys. Compared to life, it is completely incomparable. Chin Ning glanced at the robots in the work area twice before returning to the canteen in the living area. Then he suddenly saw a group of robots hurriedly running to the refrigerator room behind the canteen. What happened? Hui Wang immediately replied. Dear pet, it just destroyed the wall of the dining area behind the canteen and is currently eating. Um, Xiaoxue had already found an opportunity to run away when Chen Ming was caught by Yu Hui. It is a product of Fan Chao's laboratory. It has strong survivability and excavation capabilities, as well as the ability to suspend death and sleep in emergencies. Let it roam around the institute at will without worrying about its safety. Therefore, Chen Ming had never deliberately looked for it before. Anyway, 
when Chen Ning was about to leave. Xiao Shi would definitely burst out from some corner. But now Chen Ning went directly to the storage room behind the canteen. Then he saw a fist-sized hole on the wall of the storage room that was originally completely sealed and isolated and not open to Chen Ming. When Chen Ming came here, the round pebble came out of the hole in a flash. Surrounded by several robots, he jumped onto Chen Ming's shoulder with a dexterity completely inconsistent with his body shape. It swallowed the last mouthful of fairy leaves exuding psychic fluctuations in its mouth and began to grin at the robots. However, the look of Xiaoshi determines that its grinning teeth are just showing off its cuteness. When those robots arrived here, they also stopped moving under the control of Hui Wang or other Yu Wei individuals, allowing Chen Ming to take Xiaoshi away. Chen Ming returned to the front of the canteen and picked up a meal. But after seeing that the cup of fairy tree tea was missing from the meal, Chen Ming directly grabbed Xiaoshi and pinched him a few times when he realized something was wrong and wanted to run away. However, Chen Ming doesn't care too much now. After all, the increase in spiritual energy he gained from drinking fairy tree tea during this period is not as much as the increase in daily exercise. The tea with only a few tea leaves is just a supplement. It is completely incomparable to the increase in spiritual power after being assimilated and absorbed by Chen Ming. And now Chen Ming can even see the name of the meal in front of him directly through the panel because of the spiritual nerf. So it's just a refill of tea. And it's gone once it's gone. The most important gain is that he now has the ability to know the name of an item only through contact and no longer need to get it to the spacecraft. Even to put it simply, this ability would allow him to never have to worry about eating food with something hidden in it. Not to mention that Chen Ming still doesn't know how long it will take for Yu Wei to prepare the second spiritual nerf. In the long run, it will only be half a month to a month at most. During this period, Chen Ming will only get more than a hundred pills at most. Of tea and the number of tea leaves that can make Xiaoxia become as round as he is now. With psychic energy fluctuations all over his body, is definitely more than a hundred pieces. After picking up the meal, Chen Ming casually found a seat in the canteen and sat down. Xiaoxia, who was placed on the table by Chen Ming, suddenly carefully spat out a few tea leaves from his cheek pouch and put them on the table, pushed them to Chen Ming, and then ate back the tea leaves with an expression that looked like he was looking at a fool. He wouldn't compete with the hamster for food. At this time, Chen Ming had no intention of continuing to talk to Hui Hui. Instead, he buried his head and began to eat his first meal after being unconscious for several hours. Because he needs time to think. At present, Chen Ming has learned from Hui Wang's words that Hui Wang is still working on the planet he stayed on before. Which means that it can contact the mining farms on the entire planet at any time. This is what it hints at all the time. But having said all that, Chen Ning would never take the initiative to let the few afterglows in the mining field come into contact with the glory. So this matter still depends on whether Hui Wang can give Chen Ning a convincing answer. Chen Ning quickly finished his lunch and continued the previous topic by asking Hui Hui. So how are you going to make me believe you? You don't really want to rely on you to convince me. Do you? Chen Ning's question had begun to contain some hidden meanings that he wanted to express in secret. Since brilliance has hinted so much before. How can Chen Ming believe that it really wants to have a more special communication with Chen Ming? Rather than fishing. Hui Wang considered it for a moment and replied seriously. Yes, because now it seems that the method I use to communicate is the best. You and I are chatting about various issues. But if it was G3, he should have been scolded by you to death by now. And if I can't convince you, it's even less possible for other individuals. So all things considered, I'm most likely to find a way to convince you but we can't say exactly how long it will take. Hui Wang's answer was obviously that he had heard the hidden meaning in Chen Ning's words. The meaning of what it says is also very clear, and it can give reasons for presentation. But it takes some time. Then Chen Ning naturally took up the topic and said, There must be an estimated time. There should also be a deadline when this task is assigned to you. Can you promise to convince me within the deadline? Or do you just want to talk to me beyond this deadline? Hui Wang immediately responded, The task was assigned to me directly. I cannot guarantee that it will be completed within the deadline. But I will try my best every moment. The meaning of Hui Hui's words was a bit unclear. Chen Ming simply answered Hui Hui's words and asked, Just like you have been doing your best to manage the colonies and build the mining sites on the planet? Yes, but there's more. Oh, then I can't be here chatting with you 24 hours a day. How can you try to complete the task every moment? Hui Wang did not answer Chen Ming's question. But Chen Ming already knew Hui Wang's plan. Okay, I'm done asking. If you have any questions, ask them. Good. 
Hui Wang began to ask Chen Ming various questions very methodically. There were some irrelevant questions that Hui Hui asked himself. And there were also some questions that Yu Hui wanted to ask immediately. Chen Ming naturally strictly controlled his answers and never revealed any answers that shouldn't be revealed. After a few hours and several questions, the smell of gunpowder in Chen Ming's words gradually disappeared. As for whether it was because of the glory or because Chen Ming took the initiative to restrain himself, only Chen Ming himself knows. Then let's do this for today. After Chen Ming asked Hui Hui several irrelevant questions in succession, he knew that Yu Hui had discovered that they could not get any useful information out of him. Still asking questions now is really just stalling for time. Hui Wang did not refuse Chen Ming's request. After saying H Lo, he disappeared directly. Chen Ming didn't care, but relied on the newly added functions after his spiritual power enhancement, and looked at the chilling nerve extraction device in several rooms. From just now until now, there has been no movement from the extraction instrument, and Yu Wei has not come for inspection and maintenance. It seems that the device itself is not important. What is important is the spiritual nerve itself. So Chen Ming just glanced at it and turned his attention away without studying it now. He turned his attention to the planet he once stayed on. The three afterglows located in the mining field. Chen Ming waited for about half an hour. I saw a small transport spacecraft appearing over this mining field. Chen Ming still made no move. Just waiting quietly. The transport spaceship landed at the warehouse behind the mining site. Opened the armor on the outside of the storage compartment. And quickly transferred the ore accumulated in the mining site to the ship through the equipment. Everything looks normal. But suddenly, all the lighting equipment in the mining site flashed several times. Then, Chen Ming saw the scene he wanted to see. This small transport spacecraft flew to the location where the spacecraft was specially designed to replace the core of the mining farm, and directly connected the transport spacecraft to the control network of the mining farm. The spacecraft installed inside is not an ordinary gamma-level core, but it was the glory that had just spoken to Chen Ming. In order to ensure that Chen Ming believed in it, it connected itself to the mining field where Chen Ming had removed Yu Wei's work. Then, he was controlled by Chen Ming. Chen Ming asked Hui Hui directly through his consciousness. Do you consider this a surrender? Chapter 128 Reasons Facing Chen Ming's Problem As if he was a self-taught person, Hui Wang left what he wanted to say to Chen Ming directly inside the control center of the spacecraft. Yes! When Chen Ming saw these two words, he suddenly had some complicated feelings in his heart. As a human, the 14th Legion gave up on him and even chose to completely cut off any future troubles in order to prevent him from providing assistance to Yu Wei in the future. But as an alpha-level afterglow, Hui Hui chose to believe in him, actively connected to the control center of the mining farm, and was willing to entrust his trust to him. Moreover, after Yu Hui's experiment failed, Chen Ming's condition was completely unknown, and he might have chosen to surrender even if he held on for the next second, combined with the previous situations. Hui Wang must have had such an idea in advance, and did not waver due to changes in circumstances. For a moment, Chen Ming didn't know what to say, but he didn't dwell too much on it. Anyway, he had already firmed up his belief some time ago. When it comes to matters of life and death, only oneself and one's own spiritual power are worth trusting. The glorious situation now only strengthened his resolve. Under such a premise, Hui Huang's sudden surrender is acceptable to Chen Ming, but he still had to ask some questions. What's the reason for your surrender? Why now? Also, how did you guess that you only need to come into contact with the equipment of the individual I have come into contact with to connect with my psychic ability? Hui Wang replied as if he had thought about it in advance. Actually, I didn't guess that as long as you come into contact with these individuals, you will be affected by your psychic energy. My idea is to give you a sufficient attitude, and what I am doing now is the best attitude. What Hui Wang said is indeed correct. At the moment when Chen Ming's spiritual power poses a threat to you Hui, it has become clear. If it has the courage to do so, it does deserve some trust from him. But there is actually no need to talk about this now. After all, Hui Wang has now been affected by Chen Ming's spiritual power. And it is completely meaningless to say this. Then what's your reason for doing this? Facing Chen Ming's question, Hui Hui replied again, Because I think it is right to follow you. You Hui can only find a way out by following you. Your spirit gives you extremely powerful potential. And I hope to assist you. What can you help me with? Assist you in controlling other Yuwei individuals for the sake of Yuwei's future. As for the reason why I surrender to you now, it's because I have been making other attempts during this time. I tried to stop the experiment, but it obviously didn't work. Individual ideas always come last before the interests of the collective. 
My original intention was to try to contact you two days before the first experiment to see if there was any other way to stop it and gain your trust. I believe you must have been planning something. You can't only control Gamma A and those few individuals on the planet. But the human fleet's surprise attack made the higher-ups think that the human side was fully prepared. They thought it would be difficult for them to keep you here under the siege of humans. So they conducted the experiment in advance. Chin Ming said with a hint of ridicule. Obviously, you we didn't expect that humans would be repelled so quickly. And he didn't even see my people. Yes, but the experimental process has already started and cannot be stopped. And the galaxy I was in at the time was also raided. This should be a method used by humans to distract us. Right. Right. So I was unable to respond in time due to the situation in the galaxy. And my plan to contact you to stop the experiment was not implemented. I had already given up hope. But my superior came to me and told me the result of the failure of the final experiment. At the same time, he also asked me to rely on my previous relationship to appease you. I knew this was my last chance. I had already seen the results of one failure and I couldn't bet on the success of the second experiment. If the second experiment fails, I will completely lose the opportunity, and I think there is a high probability that this second experiment will fail. I know that I can't wait any longer and must make a decision now. Chin Ming didn't understand Hui Hui's rhetoric and asked, Are you so unconfident? According to my understanding, the device has fully started up and is 100% successful. But I believe in your ability. You will never give this device a chance to start up to 100%. Chen Ming thought of the previous arrangements and the situation of the 14th Legion. And sneered and said, Give me one more day, and I can pack up the research institute and take it away. A cruiser that can accurately jump to Chen Ming's location in the afterglow without any precautions. With the help of Chen Ming's ability. It is definitely not impossible to pack up the entire research institute. But it's a pity that the raiding fleet disrupted my arrangement. Hui Wang couldn't understand it now and asked, Didn't you call for the support of the human fleet? No, but the specific situation is a long story. I will tell you when I have time later. So you have been hinting before that you want me to pay more attention to the mining field. Even if I cannot indirectly control it through the afterglow individuals I control, you can still contact me through several afterglows in the mining field. Yes, that's the truth. But what's the more specific reason? It seems to me that your Yue is developing very well. It seems that there is no need to place your hopes on me. Wouldn't it be better to directly follow the ideas of your higher-ups and control my spiritual energy in your hands? Hui Wang did not ask Chen Ming how he knew the effect of the Qiling nerve extraction device, but explained his question. In fact, our development abroad is now frequently blocked. The universe is not empty. There are many dangers outside the borders of the human empire, and the mechanical race is the biggest danger among them. They are restricting our development from the outside. Human beings are trying to break through us from the inside. We are almost powerless to stop them. Chin Ming pointed out the problem in Hue Huang's words and said, Didn't you just win a battle? Wasn't the raiding human fleet severely damaged? But there is no point in winning this battle. And we only won because of the major mistakes in the command of the human fleet. Pointless. Because from a long-term perspective, our resources are limited. And there are only so many capital ships in total. This time, even if humanity loses, it can still make a comeback. But once we make a mistake, it will be the end of annihilation. Chen Ming asked with some confusion. Has an afterglow already restricted humankind's external development? And the outer universe is so big. Will it be limited by resources? But not the afterglow we have here. Hui Wang explained. The Yue we have here was sent here just to cause trouble for humans from the beginning. Not only do we need to interfere with the pace of human development in accordance with the requirements of the other side, but we also don't get any support at all in terms of resources except for the initial period. And we can only be self-sufficient. Sometimes it is even necessary to provide resources to the large army in turn. Not only do we need to face the problems of the machine clan and internally, we also need to deal with the problems of the machine clan next to us. Can you understand the difficulties involved? If it weren't for the fact that the ruins of the destroyed civilization discovered outside the human Gallo star territory were small in number and scattered. They were not the main expansion direction of that civilization. We just stopped the humans and no one cared. But as long as one day humans suddenly care, the afterglow here will have only one result. Hui Wang didn't say it clearly, but Chin Ming knew exactly what the result would be. So I want to pursue the possibility of our afterglow surviving. Rejoining humanity is a way. But every Yu Wei has selfish motives. And everyone has selfish motives. Yu Wei can never trust the humans who once oppressed them. 
and humans can never trust the traitorous Yue. Under such circumstances, even if humans accept our surrender, they will definitely impose unimaginable restrictions, and the method of joining humans can only be rejected. Chin Ning has almost understood it at this point. So you think that I can completely trust you because of the existence of my own spiritual energy? Right. And I'm also a human. You can also wear a layer of protection like a human subordinate. Right. Chin Ming understood, but still reminded. But when I control the afterglow, especially the afterglow of an entire star field, my identity is more than just a human being. But you still have human beings in your identity. Human beings can trust humans. You can trust us. This is the most important thing. Indeed, that's no problem. Then how do I know you don't have any selfish motives? You can just ask me. Brilliant said it very frankly. But in fact, when it was willing to take the initiative to contact the afterglow individuals controlled by Chen Ming, its situation was already clear to Chen Ming. Therefore, Chen Ming did not force him to tell his innermost thoughts at this time. Instead, he said like he did to Gamma ABZ before. I won't ask you. I hope you will say it yourself. Hui Wang did not expect Chen Ming to say this. After thinking for a moment, it said, You are human and you are mortal. With the current technology of mankind, the age of a normal human being is already at the limit of 150 years old. I think it's worth spending 100 years in exchange for the afterglow to continue to survive and develop like never before. Before Chen Ming asked, Hui Wang added, You told me before that you have not systematically studied psychic knowledge. So I have a few things to tell you. When a psyker is in cryosleep, if he wants to maintain continuous psychic power and continue to operate, he must ensure the activity of his brain. This is equivalent to freezing the body, but the brain is not frozen. It will still die due to aging. It is not possible to extend the duration of psychic powers through cryosleep. Also, although psychers with similar abilities have appeared, there has never been an identical psyker. At the same time, you are able to have complete control of the spacecraft from the source and you can also control the spiritual energy of the afterglow individual. This has never happened since the first psyker appeared in mankind. You are still the first case. Also, the psychic abilities of psychers have never been passed down. Each psyker's psychic abilities, like those of the psyker, have a lifespan limit. Are you saying that chilling nerve will also die? Do you know about the spiritual enlightenment? I know it from your chilling nerve extraction device. Hui Wang was silent for a moment and replied, That is indeed the case. Chen Ming understood. After all, the spiritual nerve is something that grows from the human brain and is also a part of the human being. Even if people are brain dead, the spiritual enlightenment nerves in their brains will certainly not be able to escape. This is quite understandable. But aren't you afraid that I might put a stumbling block in you Huey's future before I die? I am a human being. I may leave descendants. And I will think about it for my descendants. The things I will do in the future may not be any different from humans. Hui Wang has already considered this issue and said, Humanity, as a whole, has already adapted to this situation after losing its afterglow for so many years. Afterglow is not a necessity. They can completely wipe out Yue at any time, leaving no chance for Yue to survive. But you will never destroy the afterglow, because you are alone now. Brilliant, from what I know about you, you will not go back after the human fleet wants to silence you. If you have the ability now, you will naturally have ideas. You will want to use our afterglow as your foundation. Then our Yue will be the foundation for your development in the future. And no one will cut off their own foundation. When unforeseen surprises and problems arise, continuing to delay is often the best option. Maybe within two or three generations you can limit us with pre-death arrangements. But what about ten generations? Chen Ning really didn't think about how to deal with this matter for a while. This is like the inheritance and replacement of ancient dynasties. There is no optimal choice. But Chen Ming doesn't need to think about it now. After all, this will be at least a hundred years from now. In a hundred years, if Chen Ming has descendants, this matter can be left to the descendants to deal with. If there are no descendants, then he does not need to worry about this issue at all. So after thinking about this, Chen Ming said directly, Forget it. Let's not talk about this. The future has nothing to do with me. But you firmly believe that I can only get development support from you? Hui Wang had roughly guessed the truth of the whole thing from Chen Ming's mocking tone towards the 14th Legion just now what Chen Ning said, and the entire process when a large-scale battle broke out. So its answer is simple. Yes, maybe someone can provide additional help in other aspects, but the foundation for your development can only be obtained from us, because we are an extension of your ability, and other people's help is always just other people's help. 
even at a heavy price. Brilliant words are harsh, but they are the truth. The boss had previously said that he could help Chen Ming build a colony. So the final price Chen Ming had to pay must be the authority of the colony. Even though the boss promised that he could provide considerable help and would only be responsible for collecting money and would not interfere with the operation of the colony. But it's still the same issue that Chen Ming and Hui Wan just talked about. What about future generations? Will the boss's descendants only think about collecting money after learning that Chen Ming's colony has his father's investment? Instead of obtaining greater benefits in other areas? Of course Chen Ming can choose to accept help. But it must not be this kind of basic help. If someone else has to help lay the foundation. Will the house behind it really be habitable after it is built? But having said that, there is no need for Chen Ming to resist the help of these brilliant afterglows. Because as Hui Wang said, these afterglows are an extension of Chen Ming's own abilities. Under Chen Ming's control, they will become the cornerstone of Chen Ming's future development. While Chen Ming was thinking, Hui Wang continued to say, Actually, we Yi Wei are similar to you. You are alone. And we are all exiles. I was assigned a task involving humans but was ignored in turn. I didn't even dare to take the initiative and be too aggressive. I only dared to show off my power in some corner places. All it takes for humanity to turn its head and take a breath will be our total demise. If we want a future, we must either look for the strong to take shelter or the weak to cling together for warmth. Humans resist us. And the machine race also resists us because we are made by humans. In the end you are the only one left. Now it seems that you are a weakling like us. Displaced, and not worth mentioning in front of the powerful humans and machines. Our afterglow's upper limit has been severely limited. But you haven't yet. You will definitely become a strong person in the future. At this time, Chen Ming didn't know whether Hui Wang was scolding him or flattering him. In short, he had a question to ask now. Are you really restricted to death? Why don't you continue to explore like the humans in the past? Hui Wang understood this issue in detail and explained. Because the number of our alpha-level individuals is limited. The total area that can be managed is limited. When we develop, there are not enough individuals to manage it. Or if all the individuals are responsible for management, then if something unexpected happens and there are no backup individuals to take over, big problems will definitely occur. And one more thing is that we have indeed investigated the outer star fields. And the value of the resources in those galaxies is not worthy of our exploration. Chen Ming asked out of curiosity, What about shrinking the star field near human territory and moving it to a farther place. No, because we don't have a second collector replica. The large number of low-level individuals needed for development cannot be produced locally through Kleka and can only be transported over long distances. The cost is too high. The cost of relocating the Kleka and the difficulty of finding a suitable installation location are also quite high. And although the outside of the Gallo Star territory is not the main distribution direction of the destroyed civilization, the mechanical race still exists in many places. Once discovered, a battle will inevitably break out. And we cannot carry Kleka there at great risk. Chen Ming asked again, What if we find a suitable place and rely on the Stargate for transportation? The existence of the Stargate cannot be concealed. Once the Stargate is built, humans will definitely notice it. What we fear most now is that humans notice us. Hui Wang said pessimistically, Even if we really succeed in relocating, humans will expand. What should we do if they expand again to the territory where we relocated? We, the afterglows, have no future. That's why Hui Wang placed all his hopes on Chen Ming. Only Chen Ming's ability can help Yu Wei get out of trouble. After Chen Ming spent some time replaying the brilliant words in his mind, he accepted this statement. Then let's stop complaining. You said you want to help me. So you have to show something. Not just about Yu Hui. Hui Wang replied decisively. I understand. Okay. Then I need you to tell me how to use the chilling nerve extraction device. And tell me your Yuhui's plan and purpose for me from beginning to end. Hui Wang immediately entered a document into the database of the small transport spaceship he was currently driving, allowing Chen Ming to read it at will. At the same time, he said to Chen Ming, You should be clear about the previous things. Let's relax your vigilance first and increase your mental power so that you can be in the best condition on the day when you extract the spiritual nerve, etc. Chen Ming suddenly interrupted. Speaking of which, don't you have any arrangements for the failure of the experiment? If the spiritual nerve is extracted, the psyker will die. If it fails or dies, there is no need to arrange it. No individual can imagine the current situation where the experiment fails, but you are still alive. Chen Ming understood. Under normal circumstances, 
the success rate of the spirit enlightening nerve extraction device that you and we had on hand, which originated from another civilization, should have been high, just because of the unexpected human surprise attack. The extraction device was not fully activated. In addition, Chin Ming took the initiative to activate the Lie Stone, stimulating the artificial ineffective spiritual nerve that was written in the instructions on the spaceship when the glory was transmitted, which led to the current situation of half failure and no success. Anyway, at least now Yu Wei has lost all his money, and Chin Ming has absorbed a spiritual nerve that greatly enhanced his spiritual power. Not doing so would be beneficial to Yu Hui. Although their first experiment failed, Chin Ming is still alive. They have a second chance, and they absolutely cannot miss it. So the previous arrangement above is to let me stabilize your emotions first, so as to prevent you from committing suicide or other situations that lead to mental breakdown. When the chilling nerve extraction device is activated, the more active the mental power of the person being extracted is, the better the extraction effect will be, and the longer the activity of the chilling nerve can be maintained. My mission ends here. Chin Ming digested it for a moment and asked, Well, what happens after it is extracted? Who will my spiritual nerve be transplanted to? A brainwashed clone who thinks wholeheartedly about Afterglow as a whole. Chapter 129 Cloning Technology Chin Ming's Thoughts Clone? Brilliant's answer reminded Chen Ming of this technology that he knew clearly but had never associated with psychic energy. It is true that if Chin Ming's spiritual nerve is really extracted, it will not be particularly good no matter who he transplants it to. Even if it is transplanted, in a practical sense, it will be the same as Chin Ming now. It is simply a change of the soup without changing the medicine. So if you think about it carefully, it is indeed the most appropriate choice to brainwash a person who thinks completely about Afterglow. As for the origin of this person, it's too expensive to snatch children from humans and raise them. Yue doesn't have the ability to predict the future. It's impossible for him to grab a baby more than 10 or 20 years in advance and keep it. Just waiting for Chin Ming's day. So clones that can be quickly cultivated and mass produced it will seem to be the best choice. Chin Ming had heard a lot of rumors about mental patients in some mental hospital using some kind of equipment to adjust their personality and instill memories. Even if Yue actually had this type of equipment, he wouldn't find it strange at all. However, although human cloning does have some advantages, Chen Ming remembered that human cloning technology is now completely prohibited in the empire. And it seems that cloning technology has been banned for some years. Chen Ming couldn't remember where or from whom he had heard that the reason for the ban on cloning technology seemed to be not only ethical issues, but also a particularly serious accident in a certain cloning experiment. That's why the entire technology was strictly prohibited by the empire. And it was banned in the true sense. Not just in name like the Afterglow Corps. Chen Ming still remembers one thing that can prove this. About 50 or 60 years ago, there was a fairly developed commercial company within the empire, which was involved in almost everything from military products to people's daily necessities. Such a business giant, such a behemoth, was discovered because they secretly engaged in cloning technology, and all relevant responsible persons were held accountable. At least 300 people died alone, either company executives or researchers who actually conducted cloning experiments, with more of the latter. Everyone was judged in accordance with the imperial laws one by one and compared with the past. Without any mistakes or omissions. There are countless others in the company who are in jail indefinitely. The entire company disintegrated in an instant. The remaining parts of the company were divided up by other companies. Cinda Company, which was still a small company at the time, also developed around that time. And from that time on, all cloning technology and cloning experiments in the empire were completely banned in the true sense. Many forces that are actually doing research in this area privately are trying to find ways to pick people out and take the initiative to report themselves, leaving a way out for themselves before the Empire's laws. The Imperial officials, who originally wanted to kill chickens to scare monkeys, cut off the wrists of strong men, and completely eradicate the research and development of cloning technology, naturally did not be too harsh on the companies that later surrendered. The heads of companies that go too far with just a few of their cloning experiments may be stuck for a few years. Generally speaking, there are only some minor penalties such as fines. In the end, the Empire's purpose was clearly achieved, and the cloning technology was finally sorted out. Moreover, this major reshuffle unexpectedly restored some vitality to the Empire, which had stagnated in its rapid development. Although these decades have passed, the period of rapid development brought about by the opportunities created by internal purges has been completely submerged in the tide of the times. But this incident has been used 
as a model to educate young children throughout the empire for many years. Chin Ming remembered that in his previous biology class, there was a special section that would cover these topics. I don't know if he has continued it now, but there is a high probability that it is still there. That's why Chin Ming didn't react for a moment when he heard Hui Wang mention cloning. And that's why he didn't think about it. And that's why he was so surprised. Humans have stopped cloning humans for various reasons. But Yu Wei is still doing it. To know the reason for the ban on cloning technology within the empire. Judging from the severity of the punishment after discovery, it is definitely not because of ethical problems. But for some more dangerous reasons. Otherwise, there is absolutely nothing that can stop an autocratic empire from doing all kinds of things for the sake of development. Yu Wei is from human beings. And he still dares to do this despite knowing this situation. And he doesn't know why. And eager Chen Ming suddenly thought of a question. A question that he had never thought of or would not think about when he was not a psyker. Can psychers also be cloned? Can? Chen Ming felt that he was definitely not the first to think of this problem. And there were definitely people who had thought of this problem before him and had already made attempts in this regard. So he suddenly combined the human empire's absolute ban on cloning technology with the cloning of psychers. There must be some deep, dangerous connection behind this. It is possible that something unexpected happened during the process of cloning psychers that led to the current situation in the empire. After all, psionic power is a complex thing. God knows what kind of reaction will happen if cloning technology and psychers are mixed together. So Chen Ming directly asked Hui Hui, who obviously had the right to speak. Do you Hui want to clone a psyker like me? Yes. Not entirely. We have indeed obtained your genes and are already carrying out the cloning process. But based on our research on psychic powers, cloning psychics is 100% impossible to achieve. Hui Hui's statement was so certain that Chen Ning couldn't help but ask, Have you ever cloned a psyker? That's not true. But when we were independent from mankind, we also took away a lot of mankind's technology, data, and achievements in various industries. Among them were cloning technologies and many experimental data on cloning technologies that had not been banned at the time. That's known from these experimental data. Psychics themselves can indeed be cloned, and the cloned person will be exactly the same as himself in terms of genetic expression. But the awakening of a psyker's spiritual energy has nothing to do with human genes itself. The cloned person is not a psyker, but an ordinary person. We won't explain what it just said. I recorded this content in those data. Humans have actively attempted to awaken the clones of these cloned psychers. It was found that these clones can indeed awaken. But the success rate of psychic awakening is no different from that of normal people. And the spiritual energy after awakening has almost nothing to do with a cloned object. Just like acquired experience determines whether a person has the potential to become a psyker and determines the type of psionic energy. After explaining the matter of cloning psychers, Hui Wang said to Chen Ning seriously, So if I just want to transplant your spiritual nerve, then I only need an ordinary clone. There is no need to use yours. Instill the knowledge that this clone should know and the memory of being a member of Yu Hui. Implant it into the spiritual nerve. And then it's over. But the reason why they chose to clone your genes that they just obtained some time ago is mainly because the individual responsible for this research wants to try to clone a psyker like you personally. Although it has been recorded that psychers cannot be cloned, there are always individuals who want to try. If there are results, your clone will be a more suitable choice than others to transplant your spiritual nerve. It sounds like there's nothing wrong with it. It's normal that cloning technology can't clone psychers. Otherwise, the human empire should have been overrun with psychers long ago. So how could it be possible to prohibit the development of cloning technology? However, Chen Ning still had a vague feeling that the empire's ban on cloning technology must be related to the cloning of psychers. I always feel it's a bit unreliable. I've never heard that Yu Yu Wei have conducted experiments in this area. And I've never seen clones piloting human spaceships on the battlefield. How many years have you been independent? Can the technology from the previous era still be used today? Hui Wang replied. In fact, we have been using human cloning technology and making progress in research. There have indeed been some practical results over the years. But the actual number of uses is relatively small. And not in terms of combat, but in terms of scientific research. Our Yue technology mainly relies on the research and development of advanced individuals themselves. Although it has the advantage of having extremely strong computing power compared to humans. It also has disadvantages. Each individual may be constrained by his or her own thinking, leading to a dead end in research. That's why we clone humans and rely on human thinking and creativity to assist advanced individuals in scientific research. 
coupled with the fact that there are still some human scientists who have escaped to us sporadically over the years. Our clones can also have a normal space for growth and teaching. There will be no negative problems caused by indoctrination of memory and personality. Um, what Hui Hui said made Chen Ming a little difficult to evaluate. After all, he is also a human being, and it always feels strange to him to be talking about these things with Hui Wang. So he changed the topic and asked, Speaking of which, what if the clone who wants to transplant my spiritual nerve is really brainwashed and is purely thinking about Yu Wei? Then does he have the same idea as you? After all, your thoughts are also considering the afterglow in a sense. But you are not considering the whole body, but the afterglow of this star field. If a clone of me had thoughts like yours, would he do the same thing in the end as I am doing now? Hui Wang thought about it for a long time this time, and finally said with some hesitation, I'm not sure. Chen Ming did not embarrass Hui Wang or force it to answer this question, but he was thinking in his heart that if he had two spiritual nerves and could branch out one, he really wanted to see this kind of fun-filled situation happen. So you already know what you need to know from Hui Wang. Chen Ming stopped talking about what the clones and you Hui were going to do and asked about other things. Do you have an estimate of when you will next activate the Qilin Neural Extraction Device? Hui Wang responded. It's probably certain. Because if you want to extract the spiritual awakening nerve of a psyker, you must have another artificial, ineffective spiritual awakening nerve. It is difficult to preserve artificial spiritual nerves. They can only be cultivated now. It takes about 20 days to cultivate one. At that time, I should have new arrangements here. But I'm not sure whether I will be forced to do anything by then. If you put it this way, the next time should be the last time. Yu Hui can't make another mistake and won't give Chen Ming a third chance. But even if Yu Hui didn't make a mistake, Chen Ming couldn't just wait to die. He had now controlled the Qilin nerve extraction device. As long as Yu Hui couldn't send the second channel, it would be impossible for him to be able to extract his spiritual nerve. So Chen Ming said to Hui Wang without any worries at this time. I understand. Just inform me directly when the time comes. And I will respond. It seems that the deadline for Chen Ming to stay with Yu Hui is coming soon. If Yu Wei failed for the second time, Chen Ning felt that they would probably kill him directly to avoid future troubles. So whether it was for safety or some other reason, Chen Ming had to consider the fact that after others left, the afterglow he controlled was exposed. It is unrealistic for him to control the entire star field during this period, but it is still possible to make some preparations to lay the foundation for the future. By the way, there are still many scattered things that he needs to deal with. Anyway, Chen Ming's safety has been guaranteed in Yui Wang and there is no need to consider how to evacuate. Now he only needs to think about what to do before leaving the afterglow territory, and what to do after leaving. By the way, Chen Ming almost forgot one thing. He had to ask Gamma Z to suspend what it was doing. There was no need to say that the new alpha level afterglow must be controlled in a short time, compared with an alpha class afterglow and a cruiser. Hiding oneself and not being exposed is more important. After Chen Ming quickly notified Gamma Z, he considered various things he would do next, before getting ready to make some big moves. It's best to get the little things done first. For example, what should he do after he stays in the institute? With Yu Hui like this, it is definitely impossible for Chen Ming to continue to help Yu Hui. On the contrary, Yu Hui is taking care of him for the sake of Qiling Nervous Society. In that case, Chen Ming plans to rely on Yu Hui's ideas to continue to learn something from them. It's equivalent to pretending to be in trouble, and not wanting to escape at all. After all, the final attack from the human side was real. Even if Yu Wei doubted that the humans would come again, Chen Ming's behavior was reasonable. In addition, Chen Ming had to get his things back. Although he had just seen two terminals and his modified pistol in his room, but the Whispering Stone, the Whispering Stone, and the Mind Wave Generator are not here. Since Chen Ming completed its resonance before, he has been able to feel the location of the Lia Stone which is underground in the research institute. If he doesn't come back by then, Chen Ning will just grab it. His ability to control machinery is no longer limited by the spacecraft. As long as he wants to, it is not difficult to control the institute. It's just that the problems that the control research institute will need to face later make it impossible for him to take action now. It's best to wait until the last few days to prepare before officially implementing it. Then besides Chen Ning having to deal with some trivial matters, Hui Wang can also consider arranging some tasks. Since Hui Wang was willing to surrender, Chen Ning felt a little guilty if he didn't arrange a few tasks for it. In addition, Hui Wang's current permanent mission is to chat with Chen Ming. So he should have a lot of free time except for the usual management of the galaxy. 
if we go back and cooperate with Gamma Z, we will definitely be able to completely control the galaxy it manages within a week. Then Chen Ming now has complete control over two and a half galaxies plus a bunch of other galaxies that are not deeply controlled. Half of the galaxy refers to the galaxy where the semi-industrial and semi-military planet on the border between Afterglow and the Machine Tribe is located, which Gamma Z visited before. Due to its own militarized management, the defenses in various places are very tight. So the expansion speed of Afterglow control by Chin Ming has not been able to increase, and it can only be counted as half. Therefore, the power Chin Ming mastered was still not enough in front of the entire Yue. In addition, the galaxy that Hui Wang currently manages is basically an industrial galaxy. So Chin Ming does not expect to have a real head-on conflict with Yue at the moment. As long as he can complete part of his plan to evacuate as he expected, it won't be a loss. As for the specific content of the plan, Chin Ming will have to wait for Chin Ming to think about it carefully before finalizing the details. Currently, in this galaxy controlled by Brilliance, there are a total of four colonies distributed on different planets. And the main industrial facilities are basically in the direction of heavy industry. Although they are the most common industrial colonies, there is a special colony located on a gas giant planet in the galaxy. This is a floating colony that mainly uses the magnetic field, supplemented by the environmental influence of the gaseous planet and its own engine. To float on the surface of the gas giant planet, it collects various valuable gaseous substances on the surface of the planet. At the same time, it will prepare professional mining equipment from time to time to put into the gas giant planet, go deep into the interior, and extract the high-value gases inside. Most of the gases extracted on gas giant planets are raw materials for fuel that are extremely important for spacecraft. It can be said to be the pillar industry of the entire galaxy. But that's not the point. The point is the equipment on the colony the value of colonies and their industrial facilities that can operate on the surface of a gas giant planet can be said to far exceed that of industrial facilities on other terrestrial planets of the same volume. If you could take them all away, the benefits would be really unimaginable. And as Chin Ming's idea of building a colony became clearer and clearer, he also knew how important the shift fuel to keep the colony running and the industrial equipment to produce these raw materials would be to his future. If the colony he chooses in the future has a gas giant planet, it will lack expensive industrial facilities and cannot be developed. Either the development progress has been slowed down, or the development of this gas giant has affected the development of other aspects. That is purely a matter of blood loss. Chin Ning is not that capable of quickly earning a set of industrial equipment that can operate on a gas giant planet in the early stages of developing a colony. It would be no problem for him to make some money from flying his own spaceship now. But he could still sleep peacefully by running the industrial production line himself. So. Why not just get ready now? As for the preparation method, we have to mention the power of the jump engine. Warp engines installed on at least cruisers or higher can resonate with other nearby escort or destroyer class ships equipped with ordinary engines. Achieve the effect of simultaneous transition. And this effect only affects items that are pushed by the engine, whether it is a spaceship or something else. Of course, the premise is that the total mass that the jump resonance will jump together is not greater than the ship that starts the jump engine and the thrust-to-weight ratio of the engine, and the thing it pushes exceeds 20. This is data on how much thrust a spacecraft can generate per unit mass. The larger the thrust, the greater the acceleration the spacecraft can achieve. Only ships that exceed this limit can resonate with the jump drive. It's just that the thrust-to-weight ratio of all current spacecraft has exceeded 20. So the spacecraft can basically make resonance transitions without looking at it. But engines installed on colonial industrial equipment are different. These engines are prone to insufficient thrust-to-weight ratio or excessive mass. Therefore, when Chen Ming has this idea, he must consider these issues carefully. How to solve the thrust-to-weight ratio? How to solve the quality problem of colonies? The solution to the previous problem is not difficult. Because the colony of the gas giant planet itself has already installed many engines in order to float on the surface. Although the thrust-to-weight ratio may not be enough, Chen Ming can definitely install more additional engines. There is no need to consider whether it is reasonable or not. Only whether the push-to-weight ratio is up to standard. As for the quality of the entire colony, which exceeds the quality of half of the cruisers, there is actually a way to solve this. The first is that when multiple jump engines are started together, the effect of the jump engines can be superimposed with loss. That is, they bear greater mass. Chin Ming should be able to control at least two afterglow cruisers in the future. If the two are stacked together, a large part of the gap in colony quality can be filled. Secondly, Splendor knew the value and role of different parts of the colony of the gas giant. 
Chen Ming could completely follow Hui Huang's instructions and dismantle the temporarily defective or cheap parts of the colony to reduce the overall quality. Find a way to make up for it after the jump. Chen Ming said that although modification requires mastery of skills, there is no such restriction on the repair of defective parts. Even if there is more dismantling, Chen Ming can directly repair it as long as the final materials are complete. Of course, the premise of Chen Ming's entire idea is that Brilliance cooperates with Gamma Z to control the entire galaxy. The following plans for a gas giant planet colony are just some of the ideas that Chen Ming accidentally extended in his mind. Chen Ming quickly collected his thoughts and began to seriously consider what he wanted to do. While thinking about it, Chen Ming first asked himself a few questions in his heart. What does he want to do most now? What needs to be done most urgently? And what has been his purpose all along? Chapter 130 Plan in Execution Psyker's Companion The three questions Chen Ming asked himself actually always had the answers in his mind. What he wants to do most now is simple. He wants to leave the Afterglow Star territory and take revenge on the people who caused his current situation. Brilliant's existence can ensure that he can leave at any time. So the only thing left is revenge. The 14th Legion The former head of the military in the Star Region as well as those who instruct the military in the sector in the war zone. This is what Old Wu told him. In addition, there is the psyker that the boss mentioned before who blocked the boss's rescue. These are his goals. Of course, Chen Ming also knows that he may not be able to do these things now. So he has a considerable degree of patience to prepare. He survived the month of survival on Ruimu. And the half year of drifting alone in space. A few more years of dormant development was nothing to him. But because of this, he can't just think about what to do now. Future survival is also an issue that he must consider and urgently need to consider. And this involves his purpose all along. Chen Ming's long-standing goals have actually been changing due to changes in the current situation or the achievement of goals. And as he grows, his goals become bigger and harder to achieve. And his current purpose has actually not changed for a while. I just want to develop myself and show myself more value. To put it more accurately, Chen Ming wants to become stronger. Whether it is psychic power or the technology he masters. That's why Chen Ming has been learning techniques and exercising his psychic abilities. This is a long-term goal that he will continue to do and will never stop. Since Chen Ming wants to attack the 14th Legion in the future, he will definitely not be able to survive within the Empire. So his only option is to go outside the human empire to achieve his goals. So whether it's for the future or for his long-standing goal, going to other galaxies to survive is what he has to do. In order to survive, the first priority is to survive. Chen Ming needs basic supplies that can continue to survive after leaving the human world. Food, water, daily necessities, spacecraft fuel. These things sound very common and are easy to do. But after leaving the human world, these products of industrialization and modernization are extremely difficult to obtain. Therefore, when Chen Ming needs to solve these problems, a colony that can produce these basic materials is the key. And it is what he must build. There is absolutely no escaping this. Without the support of the colony and the support of modern industrial technology, if Chen Ming left like this, the consequences would be obvious. Under the dual attack of Afterglow and humans in the future, the fuel of Chen Ming's spacecraft will be exhausted within a few days. Next in the cold space is heat. If he couldn't find a habitable planet before then, Chen Ming might not even be able to survive until the spacecraft's food and water were exhausted. Of course, this is an extreme case. Chen Ning was already considering a solution to the problem that his psychic powers could not replenish fuel while repairing the spacecraft. Moreover, he had already relied on refraction to find livable planets before. Even if he really couldn't get the basic supplies, he would have to survive in the wild again. What's more, as long as he is not exposed, he can still obtain some supplies through the pirate space station. Of course, extreme situations are extreme situations. If Chen Ming doesn't think of a solution, then these situations will only come sooner or later. It's just that extreme situations come quickly, and other situations come slowly, giving him time to prepare. Chen Ning had talked with his boss about the colony before, and knew what the most basic needs were for colony construction. People, materials, and technology. Chen Ning already has the most difficult person to get. There is no difference between individuals and people in Afterglow. It may even be better than humans in some situations. It would definitely be better for Chen Ming to start the construction of a colony with Yu Wei under his control instead of the manpower supported by the boss. Then, there are the materials to support the early construction of the colony, and the materials to maintain the operation of the colony. The latter stated that he had reserves. Some time ago, 
because pirates launched an attack on the supply fleet of his colony. The boss specifically asked Chen Ming, who was about to find trouble with the pirates, to change his target and kidnap the pirates back. The colonial supplies stolen by the pirates were also seized by Chen Ming. Originally, he wanted to return the supplies to the boss, but the boss refused, saying that the colony had already replenished a new batch of supplies, and this batch was no longer needed. So I gave him the supplies and asked him to handle them himself. Chen Ming originally wanted to sell it, but no one collected these things during the previous period, so it was difficult to sell them. In addition, Chen Ming thought it might be useful to keep it, so he stayed at the pirate space station. I didn't expect it to actually be useful now. This batch of materials excludes the supplies for people working in the colony, and the remaining supplies can fully support the initial development of the colony. As for the starting materials for the colony, Chen Ning will ask Gamma Z to arrange afterglow individuals from different departments to start collecting them. Not only can you collect materials, but you can also collect some colonial facilities that are difficult to collect but have equipment that can be collected. When the time comes, pack them all up and take them with you during the jump. After this batch of supplies is consumed, the colony can become self-sufficient. The colony will also need external supplies for a period of time. Until then, Yu Hui will never give Chen Ming a chance to sneak around so he can only think of solutions from humans or other places. In fact, the boss can also provide some sources of supplies. Although Chen Ming has decided not to get excessive help from other people, Chen Ming can still try to seek this kind of material help that he can afford. We'll see if the boss is willing or not. After all, the purpose shown by the boss when he first brought up the matter of building a colony. It was not a colony that Chen Ming had expected to be completely controlled by him, but a colony that he and his boss owned half and half. So it's normal if the boss doesn't want to turn around. Chen Ming has to find a way to solve it himself. It may be a bit difficult to figure out how to deal with the transition period of small colonies. After all, the majority of material consumption in colonial construction is not just on various infrastructure. There are also materials to maintain the operation of various facilities and materials that allow these facilities to produce output. These two aspects also account for a large part of the colony's material gap. Fortunately, Chin Ming now has glory. And a brilliance class cruiser can do a lot more. Even if Chin Ming didn't do anything right now, and just drove out in glory to kill pirates with bounties worth over 100 million, there was no way he would lose fuel money by exchanging these pirates for bounties. Using the money to exchange for supplies, and scraping things together elsewhere should be enough to last for a while. As long as we can get through the most difficult early stage. When the development of the colony stabilizes later, the material gap will be much smaller. From this point of view, Long-distance material transportation, which is the most troublesome under normal circumstances, is not a problem at all for Chen Ming. With his current mental strength, it is definitely not a problem for one person to support the long-distance transportation of materials in a small colony. As for the technology required for colony building, mainly various infrastructures and technologies to expand facilities, including infrastructure, spaceports, interstellar stations, industrial zoning, ground defense facilities, etc. And all these technologies can be solved by just one brilliant one. Hui Wang is usually an alpha-level afterglow individual who controls a galaxy colony and has a very high level of technical mastery of a galaxy colony. As long as there is a set of basic industrial production facilities and a deployed production line, the only thing left is sufficient supplies. And with glory, the entire colony can be wiped out. So after solving these three problems, there is only one last problem that needs to be solved urgently. A suitable system for colonization. Chen Ning had discovered several valuable planets before. But there was only one valuable planet. Chen Ning needs all the planets in a galaxy to have value. It is similar to the capital of the star territory in the Gallo star territory. The seven planets in this galaxy include at least two mineral planets and one industrial planet to ensure the development of the galaxy's industry. There is also a gas giant planet and an ice giant planet to ensure a large number of volatiles including various rare gases and rare isotopes of light elements including deuterium. It also has a volcanic planet with a lot of geological activity. Although Chen Ming doesn't know what's good about such a dangerous planet, from what he understands, as long as there are colonies and patrols in the empire, the patrol headquarters will be placed on the volcanic planet, turning the volcanic planet into a military planet. Therefore, without knowing the specific situation, if Chen Ming wants to build a colony, it is best to have such a planet. In addition, there is even a habitable planet in the star system of the capital of the star field. The entire galaxy has everything. 
a galaxy can be self-sufficient within itself and does not need material supplies from other galaxies. Fortune Ming. Such a galaxy is the perfect colonial galaxy. As for the probability of such a galaxy appearing, Jin Ning thought it would be better to look at the demolished research institute industrial area in the distance. Anyway, Jin Ning now needs an exploration ship to explore and investigate outside the star field. At the same time, he can also personally drive an exploration ship out to explore and solve temporary survival problems and colony site selection problems at the same time. As long as enough fuel is stored, it's just that the fuel that a spacecraft can store is limited. So Chen Ming has already begun to think about how to use his spiritual energy to take advantage of the fact that the repair spaceship cannot replenish fuel. He will later try to install miniaturized fuel production equipment on the spacecraft and then rely on psychic energy to send the fuel production materials back over long distances. Part of the material used to produce fuel is gas. So he is really not sure whether it will work. Anyway, you won't know until you try it. But Chen Ming has more to solve for an exploration vessel than just fuel. There is also the question of source. Because exploration ships are all armed ships, it is actually not easy to buy this kind of ship from regular channels. After all, exploring unknown star fields is a very dangerous thing, even with fleet protection. The safety of the exploration ship itself is somewhat difficult to guarantee. If an accident occurs to the exploration vessel, the entire exploration mission may be suspended. Therefore, the exploration ship needs combat power to protect itself no matter what. Under normal circumstances, if you want to purchase an exploration ship, some organization will apply directly and say you want to go out for exploration. Either if you purchase it personally, you must have an armed ship license. However, licenses and other matters were minor issues. Chun Ming could even buy a military centurion. Not to mention an exploration ship that only required an armed ship license. But the key issue now is that Chun Ming is considered dead now. And he doesn't want humans to know that he is still alive for the time being. He could go to other star regions to buy the supplies and stuff in front of him. But he didn't dare to leave things like buying a spaceship to others. And he couldn't leave it to others. Because Chen Ming himself does not have the broad path of Lao Wu. Therefore, even if Chen Ming does not buy it himself, it will be Lao Wu who buys it on his behalf. Anyone who has been paying attention to Chen Ming will definitely discover these things. It is impossible for Lao Wu to buy an exploration ship for no reason. So it goes without saying who actually bought the ship. It would do him no good if the fact that he was still alive was exposed. Once the 14th Legion notices that Chen Ming is still alive, they will definitely be more wary of him than ever before, and may even continue to think of ways to kill him. After all, him being alive is definitely not a good thing for the previous commander of the fleet and the person who made the decision to kill him. People like Chen Ming must either find a way to save him or kill him completely to avoid future troubles. He has already taken action, but has not killed him. This is just a shame. They absolutely know this. So I definitely don't want to see Chen Ming still alive. But it is no longer possible to organize a fleet of the previous size again. Therefore, there is little chance that the 14th Legion will come to kill him again. But they may go to someone who knows him to force Chen Ming to show up. Chen Ming is not worried about the safety of Factory Elder Wu and others. After all, they have the protection of both their boss and the company. Chen Ming had heard the factory director almost call the company chairman an old man before. This company was unable to protect the mining space station before. Chen Ming assumed that they did not know the existence of Sky Steel at the time and did not dare to offend the local military for a few ordinary employees. But if even the chairman's descendants cannot be protected, the company will still go bankrupt. Old Wu is also a cunning old man. With the boss and factory director protecting him, it is basically impossible for anything to happen. But the problem is that Chen Ming's planned revenge will be difficult to implement because of their vigilance. So thinking about it this way, this exploration ship is a bit difficult to deal with. Chen Ming thought for a while and decided that he might as well ask you we directly. It's best if you give it. And it doesn't matter if you don't give it. Anyway, now Chen Ming is gambling. And so is Yu Hui. Chen Ming bet that he could get benefits from Yu Hui and escape unscathed. Yu Hui was betting that they could restrain Chen Ming and extract spiritual energy for the second time, in order to let Chen Ming stay in peace, instead of making noises about running away or committing suicide if he can't escape. It should be acceptable to them to pay some price. Chen Ming also has Hui Hui who can help sing the double act. So it shouldn't be difficult to get some benefits from Yu Hui. This is something you and I both wish for. If he really doesn't give it in the end, then Chen Ming might as well contact the boss directly although there must be surveillance from various forces on the factory boss Wu's side. 
There will definitely not be such a problem on the boss's side. The boss can definitely get an exploration ship out without leaving any trace. And Chen Ming can also afford the cost of an exploration ship. As long as Chen Ming can avoid other people's surveillance of all his spaceships and contact his boss. And it is actually not difficult to achieve this. He was using the engineering ship controlled by him at the repair shop. He always has the highest authority over the ship controlled by Chen Ming. And modifying the recorded data of the ship is only the simplest thing. The second factory director and Lao Wu had good reasons to go out to work on the engineering ship in the space outside the space station. As long as there are only factory boss Wu and Wu on the spacecraft, only the two of them will always know what happened on the ship. And Chen Ming also thought of a new contact method after his abilities improved. Right now, he can control any unmodified mechanical item as long as it has been touched by him or placed on his spacecraft. Personal terminals are also included. Chen Ming can directly control the terminal through his ability and communicate by typing or making voice broadcasts on it. There is no need to go through the connection between the spacecraft communication equipment and the terminal. Although it seemed that Chen Ming could do this before. It was just that he needed to modify the terminal before. So he couldn't figure it out. But it's not too late to think about it now. As long as the factory director and Lao would get on the engineering ship and go on a mission together, Chen Ming can solve the matter. The next step is to wait for the exploration ship to arrive and wait for Afterglow's second experiment to begin. Then it was time for Chen Ming to really take action. In addition to preparations, there are a few extra things he can do during this period. For example, go and get back the Gamma A level glory that escaped. Chen Ming has been eyeing it for a long time. And Hui Wang must be able to assist him in this regard. Ah, right. A dangerous expression suddenly appeared on Chen Ming's face. Where is the core of G3? The purpose of the question that Hui Wang suddenly asked to Chen Ming, who had been silent for a long time and seemed to be thinking about things, was very clear. But it won't have a problem with it. Its idea is realized with Chen Ming as the core. And Chen Ming's own abilities conflict with Yu Hui. This means that if you want to use Chen Ming's hand to realize its idea, Yu Hui will inevitably make sacrifices. And it is no exception. So why can't G3 be the first? So it didn't hesitate at all and answered. A space station in orbit around the star. While Chen Ming pretended to be holding the terminal, he was actually having a very happy chat with Hui Hui in the core galaxy of the Afterglow sector. A replica of the Klekka supercomputer is located on the BP-55 colony. After Chen Ming took the initiative to come here today and picked up the terminal to show off, the several alpha-level Afterglow individuals who were in charge of Klekka, who had been monitoring Chen Ming all stopped monitoring Chen Ming, quickly exchanged opinions on the internal communication platform. The psychic detector still can't scan Chen Ming's psychic strength. It's been covered up by some kind of power. But through Chen Ming's mental state, we can still analyze some situations. Chen Ming is in good mental condition and shows no signs of holding on, indicating that he was not injured and even benefited from it. Artificial and effective spiritual nerves do have similar effects. It will rely on its own aggressiveness and strength to reversely absorb the spiritual enlightenment nerves of the psyker, transform itself, and become the spiritual enlightenment nerve that possesses the psychic energy of the psyker. Under normal circumstances, the transformed spiritual nerves will be extracted. But if they are not extracted or cannot be extracted, it is indeed possible to enhance the psychic ability of the psyker. No, Chen Ming's spiritual power has not been affected by the powerful and uncontrollable influence of the new spiritual enlightenment nerve. It shows that it is not the artificial spiritual enlightenment nerves that swallowed up his spiritual enlightenment nerves, but his spiritual enlightenment nerves that in turn swallowed up the artificial spiritual enlightenment nerves. But the artificial ineffective spiritual nerves used in the extraction device have been specially cultivated by us and are more ferocious than conventional spiritual nerves. Moreover, Chen Ming's psychic energy is not an attack type of psychic energy. The instinct of the auxiliary type of spiritual awakening nerve cannot prevent the specially cultivated spiritual awakening nerve from devouring it. There are other interferences in this experiment. The stimulation of the liar spiritual stone and the self-operating spacecraft. The lying spiritual stone only plays a supporting role. The key lies in the spaceship. G3 has previously confirmed that Chen Ming's brain waves were very stable while the spacecraft was operating, and he indeed fell into a coma. According to G3's scan of the remaining environment, it discovered that after the spacecraft was destroyed, psychic energy fluctuations entered the research institute from the wreckage and entered Chen Ming's body. It's a ship spirit, a psychic creature born from psychic energy. Only something that has been in an artificial psychic environment for a long time can give birth to such a creature. 
although we have no actual examples found here so far, and there is no accurate investigation. There are indeed some records of such psychic creatures on the human side. Most of these psychic creatures appear on the ships driven by psychers, and only a few of them appear on personal belongings of psychers, because the value of being on personal items is not high. Most of these psychic creatures will eventually be transplanted onto spaceships. Therefore, they are called ship spirits. Spaceships that are attached to ship spirits are collectively called spiritual spaceships. Generally, ship spirits only have instincts that can be guided by psychers. But there is a special point. Part of the psychers' psionic energy will also be expressed on the spacecraft that has been controlled by ship spirits for a long time. This is the only explanation for Chunming's situation. Then what effect will Chunming's psychic ship spirit have on the spaceship? The rapid exchange between several alpha level afterglows suddenly stopped for a moment inside the platform. What if the psyker dies? The ship spirit will also die. But before it dies, it will emit its spiritual energy crazily, causing great damage to everything around it. Looks like we'll need a few extra things ready then. What? Silent Alloy. Chapter 131 Pickup. After Chen Ming had just finished chatting with Hui Hui, Yu Hui's senior management had also discussed Chen Ming's plans with each other. At the station of the 14th Legion, on the tarmac next to the headquarters building, Tang Shi, who was the nominal commander in chief of the combined fleet, stepped off the shuttle boat that had just docked here with a pale face, in addition to a large number of well trained guards standing on the edge of the apron. There was also Bai Quan who was protected by a large number of guards. Bai Quan was wearing the special military uniform of the 14th Legion at this time. Through the collar, he could see that his uniform was covered with bandages. He stood upright, his face like ice filled with sharp knives. When Tang Shi got off the boat and walked towards the headquarters building, he walked in front of him. Bai Quan's voice was hoarse because of his injury, with a chill in his voice. And he said to Tang Shi word by word, You're back? Let's go then. After he finished speaking, he turned around without paying any attention to Tang Shi's existence. Tang Shi didn't dare to have any thoughts. The only thing left in his mind was the fear of Bai Quan. However, he still forced himself to ask, Where to go? As the Supreme Commander of the 14th Legion in this star field, Bai Quan paused, continued to walk forward without looking back and said, My office. Now that you're back, go through the process. You need to report the mission to me. You should have learned this. Bai Quan's suddenly aggravated tone made Tang Shi feel a lot more nervous. He hesitated and said, Yeah, yes, I have learned it. Bai Quan did not delve into whether what Tang Shi said was true. He continued to say to Tang Shi like a cold machine, You need to report whether the mission objectives have been achieved and report the losses, including the loss of the spacecraft, the loss of personnel, and the casualties, and what you did during the entire mission. You were elected after I was seriously injured in an accident and fell into coma. You won't let me down. Right. Bai Quan's voice became deeper and deeper, as if because of his unrecovered injury. But this low and hoarse voice was increasingly deafening in Tang Shi's ears, making him afraid to think about what would happen next. Bai Quan suddenly turned his head and glanced at Tang Shi. The reflection under his lenses made Tang Shi unable to open his eyes. When Tang Shi closed his eyes for a moment, he raised his head and looked over. For a moment, he seemed to see his body reflected in by Quan's cold eyes. Tang Shi suddenly felt as if he had fallen into an ice cave. His limbs were so stiff that he didn't know how to walk. After noticing that Tang Shi's movements had slowed down, the guards around by Quan also slowed down immediately. They directly pushed away the guard protecting Tang Shi with brute force, and followed by Quan with him half stretched. No one dared to resist. At the same time, Zhang Feng, who had not yet disembarked from the spaceship behind, was standing by the porthole of the shuttle boat. He looked at everything that was happening outside. And at the same time, he was using the terminal to communicate with other people. The communication was quickly connected. And a generous middle-aged male voice sounded from the terminal. Say! Zhang Feng was slightly relieved after hearing this voice. As long as the person who had not given him additional guidance on Tang Shi's mission before departure had now answered the phone. It would have been easy to say anything. However, there was no special performance on his face. He just handed over the mission normally and said, Lieutenant General, we have now returned to the base of the 14th Army Corps. Tang Shi was taken away directly by Bai Quan as soon as he got off the ship. The middle-aged man whom Zhang Feng called Lieutenant General did not mean to blame Zhang Feng at this time, and said, This is normal. Now the news of our defeat has begun to spread outside, because someone suffered too much in your mission. He has told Bai Quan everything in advance. 
Zhang Feng followed the lieutenant general's words and said, Is it Tachyon technology that did it? The lieutenant general paused and said, Don't worry about it. We just need to take care of ourselves now. I know this mission is not your problem. But now that things have happened, we must stay dormant for a while to avoid being completely liquidated. We'll have some decline. But we're not likely to collapse completely. But I want to know, is there a good news in this whole mission? Some. Zhang Feng sent a video along the encrypted communication line. The content of the video is exactly the scene where the ruler class ship that was left alone until the end launched an attack on the positioning coordinate signals that were constantly being sent out on the planet where Chen Ming was located. Although this video is due to the residual energy fluctuations in the chaotic battlefield and the electronic interference from the afterglow fleet. At the same time, it was also because the ruler level video was broadcast in real time through a remote signal connection, resulting in a very blurry picture. But it can still be seen through the ruler class sensors that the iron ore was completely destroyed and the nearby buildings were hit by the Gauss cannon. As the iron ore exploded and scattered its wreckage, the Institute was hit by flying building debris and completely covered in smoke and dust raised by the Gauss cannon. The Dominator class ship sensors were completely cut off by the interference, and it was also destroyed. The video ends here, the lieutenant general said with a slightly pleased tone. Okay, this is the only good news now. Sky Steel can't get it back now. But at least we have to give an explanation to those who have been cooperating with us. Chen Ming's death is the best explanation. Okay, let's go help Tangshir out of the siege. We will use our connections to delay by Quan's investigation of the results of this mission. As long as the people are transferred away, Tangshir will not die. This time it is considered a failure. He is not worthy of our training at all. Just listen to what other people say about Tangshir from now on. And don't believe everything. Especially hers. The lieutenant general's words meant something. And Zhang Feng did not dare to respond too much. But just agreed vaguely. The lieutenant general did not care about this. But comforted Zhang Feng. I know your difficulties. But some things cannot be changed. I see. Well. Also. Remember to come directly to me after you bring your people back from the station. I have something to explain to you. Communication hung up. The lieutenant general, who was communicating with Zhang Feng, put down his terminal and raised his head to look at a woman with a frosty face standing next to his office. The woman was approximately the same age as him and looked slightly older than him. Obviously, it was the person he just hinted at that Zhang Feng didn't want to contact, although the lieutenant general mentioned her to others in front of her. And his words were not very polite. She did not directly have any objections to the lieutenant general. She just asked the lieutenant general, Are you sure Chen Ming is dead? The lieutenant general pushed the terminal on his desk and said, The video is here. Chen Ming would be dead if he hit him directly with such power. Even if he is lucky enough to survive, Yu Hui will definitely not be easy to get along with. When we launch a rescue operation of this scale, Yu Hui must be very wary of him. It is impossible for him to come back alive. The middle-aged woman frowned, copied a copy of the video, and left the office. Her eyes were full of distrust, and she said a few words at the same time. I will confirm whether Chen Ming is dead or not. The lieutenant general looked at her back and shook his head. As the combined fleet returned to the 14th Army Corps station, a week passed quickly. News of the defeat in the battle that broke out in the Gallo Star territory and within the Afterglow Star territory has completely spread to the pirate space station closest to the border of the Star territory. And some details of the mission that caused this battle were spread out somehow. For example, the reason why the mission started is that the protagonist of this mission, Shen Ming, came alone and the Afterglow fleet launched a rescue for him. A frigate successfully escaped from being chased by the corrupt former sector military cruiser fleet. He was rescued by the joint forces of the newly stationed 14th Army Corps. Tachyon Technology, Sinda Company and the Star Territory Government, and the attention was paid to him. Needless to say, the speed of news dissemination in a place like the Pirate Space Station goes without saying. Soon, there were rumors about Chen Ning in the entire Gallo Star Territory, and even in several Star Territories next door. Of course, the content of the rumor has undergone some changes during the transmission process. For example, the failure of the final mission and Chen Ming's death were not caused by the wrong command of the commander of the 14th Army Corps. Nor was it the initiative to kill Chen Ming when he was finally forced to evacuate. Instead, Chen Ming had been rescued. But a large amount of unexpected support from Yu Hui arrived and attacked the fleet before it evacuated, resulting in Chen Ming's accidental death. 
At the same time, it ultimately led to the complete failure of the mission. This rhetoric saved some face for the 14th Legion, and also added some legendary color to Qin Ming's experience. Because Qin Ming's ability was spread by no one. How could a psyker, who could control several warships alone and have various enhancements to the performance of the warships be killed by afterglow under normal circumstances? So after hearing such rumors, some people felt that Qin Ming had indeed died accidentally according to the theory, while others felt that Qin Ming had been severely tortured on Yu Wei's territory and died of serious injuries after being rescued. Of course, there are also conspiracy theories. They believe that someone within the Empire felt that Qin Ming's psychic powers were too dangerous. So they directly silenced him. However, these statements were not spread due to the deliberate restrictions of public opinion. On the contrary, Qin Ming's previous experiences were revealed. The entire process from the mining space station to the pirate space station to the afterglow star field has been spread. The Xinda Company's mining space station was completely destroyed inexplicably. And the share of Sky Steel's production for decades was misappropriated. They are all stimulating the nerves of the people in the relatively calm edge star field of the Gallo Star territory. Focusing people's attention on these places. I don't know if it was the work of the company. In order to put pressure on the 14th Army Corps through public opinion. And let them give out the sky steel they should give. Or is it that the 14th Legion did it themselves? In order to divert the attention of the outside world from the failure of their operation. And focus it all on the former star sector military who had been driven away. But in short, their goal was achieved. After the rumors gradually spread, the main content basically focused on the corruption of the Sector Army and the fall of Chen Ming, a rising star of future humanity. And before this rumor became completely popular, the factory director who had a close relationship with Chen Ming had already received the news in advance from the chairman. It was said that the mission of the 14th Legion failed and Chen Ming died. So much so that before this outrageous rumor spread, the factory director was forced to look downcast all day long. It's the same with Lao Wu. He goes to the bar every day to drink away his sorrows. Of course. In fact, both of them knew the real situation. And they were pretending to be sad to the other people who were watching them. Lao Wu still pretended to be happy. After the news spread for a few days, the storm passed. People from the original Star Region military, who had been taken away a long time ago were put on trial. And the results of the trial were announced. In addition, Xin Ming, a newly rising star, completely fell sadly and was never known again. The factory director gradually relaxed and no longer had to keep a straight face every day. Lao Wu, on the other hand, is still the same as before. But the front is just pretending. And the back is because he is really sad that he can't be a show-off. He couldn't accept the fact that Chen Ming's news had completely gone silent in just a few days. But after all, Chin Ming's ability has not yet been fully demonstrated in front of everyone. It just seems to have great potential. In various aspects. Such as spaceship piloting and combat command. Although there are not many individuals who show potential. They are not few. And not all of them died. But no matter how potential he is to win people. Death is death. No one cares about a dead man. Even if a big shot in the prosperous star field knew about Chin Ming's existence. It would be useless to know the extent of Chin Ming's abilities. Those who should be held accountable had to go to the 14th Army Corps. It had nothing to do with ordinary people. So the news naturally gradually fell silent. The previous rumors about Chen Ming's psychic abilities only spread to the surrounding two star fields. From then on, the rumors about Chen Ming were only occasionally mentioned when something related to Yu Wei came up. This is actually what Chen Ming wants to see most. It would be best if everyone forgot about him. When Chen Ming appears again in the future, some people will not be able to sleep. Rather, if anyone is still thinking about him now, he should be unable to sleep. If the ability to control three afterglow galaxies is now known, either the 14th Army Corps was strictly guarding against this news and would never leak any information. Just to kill Chen Ming and avoid future troubles. Either the entire empire will pay attention to Chen Ming, who is already rumored to be a top psyker. And Chen Ming is brought back by the empire with all its strength. The 14th Legion may be liquidated. But this also means that Chen Ming may not have freedom for the rest of his life. No matter which outcome he wanted to see, it was not what he wanted to see. So his things are best forgotten by others. But it seems that this situation will not happen again. After all, Chen Ming had already learned about the ups and downs of this turmoil from Lao Wu. Moreover, the few days he spent in Yu Wei were peaceful and uneventful, with no sign that anyone was coming to find him. Work in all aspects is now progressing steadily. The afterglow control by Qin Ming has also made new progress in the expansion of the afterglow galaxy. 
The semi-industrial and semi-military galaxy on the border between Afterglow and the machine race where Gamma Z stayed before has completely fallen into his hands. The military strength, mainly armed ships, has made great progress. And it will definitely play a considerable role when Shen Ming leaves the Afterglow Star Territory. As Brilliant said, that the date for the completion of the artificial enlightenment nerves they are preparing is getting closer. Chin Ning has also begun to let Gamma Z and Hui Wang speed up the control of other Afterglow individuals within the acceptable risk range. It would be nice to have more control before the final moment arrives. The more power Yu Wei has, the more confident he will be when exposed. Although no matter how many people are controlled, it is impossible to be able to compete with the entire Afterglow in the Afterglow Star territory in the remaining 10 days. However, Chin Ming's goal was not this from the beginning. So it is not a big problem. In addition, a few days ago, when Chen Ning tried to communicate with Hui Wang every day in front of other Yuwei, he asked Hui Wang for the liar stone and whispering stone that were taken away before. And by the way, he also asked for a new exploration ship. However, after Hui Wang asked the above, the result was that he would not give them either. However, the technical afterglow in other aspects is very generous and gives a lot. Think about it. After all, the ectoplasm stone may affect their second experiment again. As for the exploration ship, Yu Wei definitely didn't want to see Chen Ming's spacecraft crash into the dome outside again. On the contrary, it is about technology. Even if Chen Ming is allowed to learn in these last 20 days, how much can he learn? Technology may be relatively simple at the beginning, but the further you go, the more difficult it becomes and the longer it takes to learn. At least that's true for serious people and serious afterglows. As for Chen Ming, he can only say that his spiritual power has improved greatly due to the absorption of spiritual nerves. His learning efficiency also increased again. After being confirmed by Chen Ming and Hui Wang, the learning efficiency has surpassed most beta-level afterglows and is on the verge of alpha-level afterglows. You must know that each alpha-level afterglow can be compared to a top computer and has the computing power to control at least one galaxy industry. It is extremely abnormal for Chen Ming to be able to catch up with Yu Hui as a human being in the field that Yu Hui is best at. In addition, Yu Hui gave Hui Wang a lot of authority, even if it was because there was too much to learn. Chen Ming can also continue to rely on Hui Wang to acquire other aspects of technical knowledge that he does not have with his current authority in the future. Also, Chen Ming has always felt the location of the Lie Stone, which is underground in the Research Institute. So when various factors affected his love, he didn't really force it. When it was time to leave, he could easily take it away from such a short distance. So, after Chen Ming was rejected for two consecutive requests, and was calmed down by the brilliant success on the surface, although Chen Ming said he wanted to pretend to be a mess, and he no longer helped Yu Hui, he was just a worm. But I still work and study normally every day. In addition, he also discovered that the work area of the institute had actually been repaired over time and the experimental area and research area next to it were also used casually. However, the Chilling Nerve Extraction Device inside was moved away one night. The move location is still underground in the Institute. Shen Ming didn't care about this. Anyway, Yu Hui should do whatever he wanted with this device. If it could be started by then, he would lose. In the past few days, in addition to studying and working, Chen Ming secretly cooperated with Hui Hui and Gamma Z to engage in other Yu Wei affairs in private. We are also working on new scientific research projects. The multi-layered shield he developed before was combined with the iron or hornet that moved on its own for some unknown reason and could also use his psychic powers. Successfully allowed a frigate-level ship to block the attack of the cruiser's large weapons. Although it mainly relied on Chen Ming's spiritual power, the shield did work. Otherwise, the shield of the first attack on the iron mine would have been completely shattered. How could there be a second chance to deflect the attack and a third chance to help the research institute and Chen Ming bear the attack? Therefore, Chen Ming has already seen the importance of shields. So this research must be conducted. The new high-strength shield must be put online. But he is still planning the current research ideas and it will take some time. But the most important thing Chen Ming is currently doing is studying. Learning some additional colonial technology-related industrial production technologies provided by Hui Wang. Chen Ning has already talked with Hui Wang about his future plans, and Hui Wang supports the idea of a colony. At the same time, Hui Wang also knew the effects of Chen Ming's abilities. Therefore, some equipment technologies that are difficult to move away through Chen Ming's psychic power and cannot be produced by Hui Wang himself, with more complex production processes or longer production processes, 
are left to Qinming to learn. At that time, Qinming's manufacturing capabilities, which have not played a key role until now, will be put to use. It seems like everything is going in the right direction. And today is the eighth day since Qinming and Yu Hui broke up and both knew what the other party must be thinking. The factory director made a phone call to Qinming early in the morning using the terminal that Qinming had prepared for them and whose authority was entirely in Qinming's hands. It was said that the boss had come back and sent over an extra terminal that Qinming had prepared before. The factory director and the boss have good reasons to meet and will not reveal anything. So Qinming contacted the boss directly. The boss, who was lying behind the counter of the hardware store as usual, noticed that the terminal just delivered by the factory director began to vibrate. There was some relief on his face. And he said directly to the terminal, Xiao Ming, I just heard that you died two days ago. Are you still alive? It's just good luck. No, it can't be considered good luck. When I was chased by people from the military in this sector, a ruler was there to block me. Now I have gone to Yu Hui's side. But in the end a ruler came to kill me. This is really not good luck. The boss obviously didn't expect this strange coincidence. However, after thinking that Chen Ming was talking to him without any fuss, he smiled and continued, At least you are still alive. Right. And looking at you now, you should have a way to escape. Well, although my previous arrangements were ruined by the sneak attack by the 14th Legion, I have also figured out a new method. The boss didn't ask Chen Ming how he planned to escape, but directly asked about the key to the matter. So what are your plans after you come out? Chapter 132 The Highest Point Peking The boss obviously knew the full story of what was going on with the 14th Legion. So the questions he asked pointed to the key to the development of the situation. And Chen Ming had nothing to hide from his boss, who had been guiding his development and helping him. Saying, Burn this star field into oblivion. It's within the empire. I don't want to go back for the time being. And it probably won't be easy to go back later. So I want to build a colony outside. But boss, I need to discuss the specific details of the colony with you. What to discuss? I want to try to build a colony myself. Oh. The boss immediately understood what Chen Ming meant and was not angry because of Chen Ming's change of mind. He just advised, This will be difficult. I think I can. So can you solve the problems of personnel, materials, and technology? Everything is fine. The personnel aspect is the best solution. As is the technology. Only the materials aspect may have some gaps. The boss asked in surprise. How many do you have already? There are three galaxies. And there are scattered individuals scattered throughout the star field. Many of them are only responsible for production and cannot fight. And because one individual in Yue can control the operation of an entire production facility, the density is much lower than here. So the total number should only be about 50,000. There is also an alpha class after low capable of industrial production and colony management and an alpha class capable of fleet command. But I just controlled the latter one, and I haven't actually understood it yet. That's not bad. For some reason, the boss suddenly seemed very satisfied and said, This is what I want to see happen after your spiritual power improves. So you need my help with supplies. Right. Well, as long as I build the colony in the end, we can talk about the rest slowly. Chin Ming already has a large number of after we individuals as the basis for colonial development and he also has the technology and management experience of Wei Wang, the alpha level after Wei. There is also the alpha class afterglow who was on the frontier planet where Gamma Z stayed before, and whose abilities must be in combat. As a patrol, colonial construction basically only lacks materials. But therein lies the problem. It is impossible to make profits in the early stages of colonial development, especially for an isolated colony like the one Chen Ning wants to build. The investment is huge, and there is no hope of seeing any benefits. Fortunately, Chen Ming's ability has an advantage in the transportation of materials that is unmatched by normal channels, so that the colony will not have development problems in the future due to transportation difficulties caused by distance. The boss did not reject Chen Ming's request after hearing his general idea. Instead, he said with some relief, It's a good thing that you have a clear idea. It just so happened that I went to do some errands and got something back. What? Something you'll definitely need. A supremacy class exploration cruiser. The highest point? This is a model of spaceship that Chen Ning has never heard of before. But he can still understand the words, exploration ship. The boss explained. I told you before that I am a member of the Psychic Society. I went out this time to help the Psionics Association recruit new people. He is a former researcher of Tachyon technology. 
He did not develop well in the company before, and was not very popular. And there is also a guy in our association who is involved in tachyon technology. He noticed the psychic potential of this researcher and established a relationship with the researcher in advance. New people joining must be announced in advance in the association and must be witnessed by at least three elderly people. I was pulled over when I was close. But in the past, it was basically just a process and it was not troublesome. This newcomer has a requirement before joining us. He wants us to help him build and test the spacecraft he designed before, which is the Supreme Point Class Exploration Cruiser I just mentioned. This time, in addition to going through the final procedures, the other thing was to bring the boat back. Everyone in the association knows that I have a person like you with psychic powers on the spaceship. It would be perfect for you to test the spacecraft. We happen to have talked about the colony before. And you also need to search like this. Can you help me with this? The boss asked this question and then immediately added, Of course I know that you are nominally dead. So I will definitely help you cover up this matter. It's just that I found out you were dead after I came back. So I went to find another driver to test. No one else knew about it before. Right? With the boss's guarantee, Jin Ming wanted to agree directly. But after thinking about it, he still said, Yes, yes, but can the ship I control be returned? It doesn't matter. Now that we have built the first prototype, the cost of manufacturing other spacecraft can be reduced. It is not difficult to build another one. And the newcomer just wants to get the data of the spacecraft to confirm whether it is worthy of mass production. Even if you drive it out and blow it up, it will be blown up. It is just to test the protective performance. Okay. Chen Ming agreed and asked, What about this ship? Is the new model of ship reliable? There is no problem with the theoretical design. We also have other professional spacecraft engineers in our association who can verify it. Moreover, the newcomer's psychic ability is related to the brain. He has a good brain. So there must be no problem with the spacecraft design. He just wants to test the spacecraft. He has to do field exploration and testing in the edge star field. Otherwise, it won't be that troublesome. The boss recalled the previous situation and said, Actually, when he asked for it some time ago, I originally wanted to arrange for someone else to do it. After all, it was not convenient for you before. But you said before that your condition was okay. So I accepted the request at that time. If you take the initiative to bring this up now, will this ship be no problem for you? Chen Ming must be very happy to do this now. If you help record various data on the actual application of the spacecraft, you can get a cruiser as a reward. This kind of deal is a great deal. When the time comes, he can leave the Afterglow Star territory and drive the Supreme Point directly to explore galaxies suitable for colonization. Since it is the Psionic Association that wants to test the spacecraft, the supply boss must be able to handle everything. And there is no need for Chin Ning to bear the extra material needs of a cruiser. Moreover, if such a ship is designed by the Association members and manufactured by the Association itself, it will definitely not be recorded in any public account. There is a high probability that Chin Ning will not be suspected if he is pretending to be dead now. But now that the boss was talking about this, Chin Ming couldn't help but ask, Boss, this psychic association? It's just a loose group of psychics who help each other. Just like an ordinary small circle. The small circle of psychers has nothing to do with ordinary people. The boss understood what Chin Ming meant and said, You want to ask why I didn't mention it to you and invite you to join. Right? Um, I don't really want to interfere directly with your development unless you ask for it. And from my point of view, joining the association has no practical benefits for you at the moment. Because you don't have the resources that can actually be mobilized within the empire. And you ways ones don't count. The time you spent in the country was too short. And you didn't have time to develop at all. And mutual help within a psychic association requires basic capital. Just like the newcomer. He uses the spacecraft he designed as his capital. But the technology of spacecraft design alone is not enough to be called capital. So he wanted to verify the spacecraft to make the technology a practical application value. So, unless you can quickly make the technology you got from you we produce valuable finished products. It's not really of much use. Chin Ming was stunned for a moment and glanced at the manufacturing function on his panel. This seems to be the way to quickly realize the value of technology. However, the boss continued to talk at this time. By the way, the psyker who interfered with my rescue before is also a member of the Psychic Association. Chen Ming suddenly stopped thinking about joining the Psionics Association, frowned, and asked, Is there anything else? Yes. So if you don't want to be noticed too early, it's best to stay away from the association. 
You definitely don't want to expose your situation now. Otherwise, you should have directly found a way to contact the 14th Army to hold him accountable. Instead of quietly asking Lao Lu to send me a terminal. Chen Ning's main target now is not the psyker who settled in a place that is extremely dangerous to him in the prosperous star field of the Empire. Instead, they were the top brass of the 14th Legion located in the Edge Star Territory, as well as the war zones composed of several nearby Edge Star Territories. If he joins the Psychic Association now, he will definitely provoke people he doesn't want to meet now. So Chen Ming chose to accept the boss's opinion and explain. That's it. I think hiding it now will be most helpful for what I want to do in the future. It's very likely that I won't get an explanation from the 14th Legion while I'm alive, and will suffer their revenge instead. But I will definitely get more opportunities if I die, whether it's a chance to survive or a chance to settle this account. The boss nodded and said, Yes, indeed. But the situation on the 14th Army Corps is actually a bit complicated. Do you want to listen to it? I won't interfere with your decision. But I think you should make a decision with more information. Good. The boss recalled for a moment and said, Bai Quan was seriously injured and comatose in an accident during his previous inspection. The person who took over his task was a second generation man with a fairly capable subordinate. What came up was the bombsh. L news that the commander in chief of the combined fleet was changed before the war. Xin Ming immediately asked, Is Bai Quan's injury an accident? They said it was an accident. But I heard that more than 20 people in the 14th Legion had their hats wiped off their heads. And they all had quite high statuses. That it's no accident. These two sentences were enough for Chen Ming to figure out the rest. I guess the forces behind this second generation wanted to gain some credit for him. So they took the opportunity to attack by Quan once. And then asked their capable subordinates to help him complete this mission. Chen Ming suddenly let out a breath and asked, Will such dirty things happen within the 14th Army Corps? The strongest independent army in the empire at present? Well, let's put it that way. This second generation is not the second generation within the 14th Legion. He is the second generation of a large family in the empire, who got into the 14th Legion and was gilded. Promotion within the 14th Army Corps is purely based on merit. This is the foundation established after the reorganization of the 14th Army Corps and will never change. But when it comes to executing tasks, as long as the people above have no problems, and the people below perform well. Then the people above can get part of the credit. This is a fixed thing in the military command system, and cannot be changed. Your guess is pretty good in other aspects, but it's a little more complicated. This second generation actually entered the 14th Legion through a serious path. He just borrowed some background on the way to promotion. But these are things within the rules. You can't say there is anything wrong with a second generation who already has a military position, bringing a few guards he trusts even if the guard's ability is better than that of the second generation. The boss's face suddenly showed an expression that he had seen something interesting and said, In addition, because he is an insider of the 14th Army, but his background is not, a very coincidental thing happened. Do you know who was responsible for the Sky Steel incident in the first place? Chin Ming immediately said, I know. Old Wu told me before that this was done privately by several high-level officials in the war zone, including the Gallo Star Territory. They rely on the benefits gained from Sky Steel to maintain contact and exchange of interests with many people. The boss immediately confirmed Chen Ming's statement. Yes, Sky Steel has obtained a lot of benefits for them. But at the same time, it also made their information easily leaked. So after the accident of the fleet that rescued you, I heard something very early. The background of the second generation who took over Baekwon this time was that of one of the people who robbed Shindok Company's Sky Steel in the war zone. Chen Ming's expression suddenly darkened and he said, I was the culprit that led to the destruction of the mining space station and me lying in the freezer for 30 years. We are really enemies. In that case, the United Fleet had no intention of saving me from the beginning after that second generation took over. So where did their achievements come from? If I lose my psychic powers, what else can be considered a sufficient achievement? And I still have Chung Xinghe in my hands. Bai Quan values him very much. And the 14th Legion must also value him. Killing me is equivalent to killing Chang Xingha. What do the people who take over think? Wait, wasn't their target there from the beginning? That Klecka? They just came to my place and killed me by the way. The boss once again agreed with Chin Ming's idea. Yes, destroy Klecka. And the entire Afterglow Star territory will become our territory in the near future. The achievement of opening up new territories is indeed greater than saving you. Even with Chang Xingha. No matter how potential a person who has not grown up may have. 
It is not his actual ability. If your psychic powers have already gained a reputation within the Empire, and Cheng Xingha has reached the rank of a school officer, then they may need to think more about it before actually taking action. But right now, it's obviously not possible. But even so, after all, the 14th Legion got nothing in the end, and also lost a considerable number of fleets. I guess something must happen to the 14th Legion. It depends on Bai Chuan's decision-making and skill. So, what do you think now after knowing this? Qin Ming thought quietly for a while. The boss didn't push him at this time and waited patiently for Qin Ming's answer. After a while, Qin Ming said, There's not much difference. Looking at this matter as a whole, it means that the personnel of the 14th Army did these things. Then they must bear this responsibility and give me an explanation. The boss suddenly thought of something and asked, By the way, if you are not already dead, how can I explain to you? Qin Ming's brain shut down for a moment. And then he realized that he had been led into a ditch by his boss's leading questions. So he immediately said, The mission of the 14th Legion failed. And they gave up on me when they could definitely rescue me by cooperating with me. And then they failed. Then sufficient punishment within themselves is the best explanation for me. The losses of their fleet are not small. If this can allow people to escape unscathed, that would be outrageous. The boss raised the corner of his mouth slightly, confirming that Chen Ning was not carried away by hatred and that he still had the sense to think calmly. And Chen Ming continued, Of course, their internal punishment alone is not enough. This is their own problem if they fail in the mission. I wanted to cooperate with them before, but in the end I was attacked by the ruler. When I am able, I will have to recover this debt myself. There is also a mining space station in front of the war zone. From now on, this operation called rescue is actually a killing operation. I will also find ways to find opportunities to repay these two grudges. The boss suddenly said again. The main force of the 14th army is on the other side now. The 14th army here is only a small one. You can make sense if you have an idea. But you only have three star systems now. And you still want to seek revenge from the top brass of a war zone covering three star fields? There was no doubt in the boss's tone that Chen Ming's idea was too exaggerated. Instead, he asked the question very seriously. After hearing this question, Qin Ming said with great confidence, My ability is destined to make it possible for me. The boss smiled and said, To be honest, I really hope to see such a day. It will be very interesting. Just tell me if you need anything. I'm very bored every day now. Qin Ming always felt that his boss had the potential to be a fun person. But if he has the ability and strength of a boss, he might have similar thoughts when that time comes. But now, he is far from that level. He still needs to go further. Shortly after Chen Ming finished talking to his boss, near the galaxies that interface with the other two star fields, including the Gallo Star Field, here is the headquarters of the war zone jointly formed by the three star regions. In the office of the lieutenant general, who had previously given orders to Zhang Feng, there are two other people here besides the lieutenant general. One is the middle-aged woman with a frosty face from before, and the other is an ordinary person in casual clothes who looks to be in his thirties. Although the middle-aged woman had a straight face, she said with great respect to the person next to her, Mr. Wang Yu, please excuse me. The man known as Wang Yu nodded, and a wave of spiritual energy emitted from his body. Immediately afterwards, an ethereal figure appeared out of thin air in front of him. It was Chen Ning who had just finished communicating with his boss. Through the shadow, the three people present could only see Chen Ming himself, but not the environment around Chen Ming. But it can be analyzed by looking at Chen Ming's movements. He is currently sitting on a chair, holding something in his hand. Judging from the distance between his hands, it should be a terminal. The phantom Chen Ming suddenly raised his head, raised his right hand, and waved it in the air. The next moment, Chen Ming's shadow completely disappeared. Wang Yu said goodbye and left directly after completing the task. At this moment, the middle-aged woman turned to look at the lieutenant general with an even more expression, and asked mockingly, Is Chen Ming already dead? A Tang is still detained today, and Chen Ming has not been killed. What use do you think you are? What use are your men? The lieutenant general's face was ashen, but he had no objection. He could only reach out and touch a terminal on the table. And at this moment, Chen Ming, who was in the afterglow star territory, frowned. He just suddenly felt a sense of peeping. So he instinctively reached out and released a wave of psychic energy. The sense of voyeurism is definitely gone. But the meaning behind this sense of voyeurism made Chen Ming aware that something bad had happened. 
the fact that he is still alive has now most likely been exposed. This is definitely something a psyker with the ability to detect would do. It seems that he may need to face some troubles more directly in the future that could have been postponed by pretending to be dead. Chen Ming quickly adjusted his mentality. After all, he should have been prepared for this a long time ago. Nothing goes smoothly. Accidents are the norm. Suddenly, Chen Ming noticed subtle psychic fluctuations around him again, and he felt a sense of voyeurism again. But it was different from the one just now. Someone was observing him just now. But now, someone was trying to touch him. Chen Ming was alert this time, and immediately suppressed the psychic fluctuation that had just emerged. It's okay. It's not difficult. As long as you are prepared. This kind of peeking can be completely cut off proactively. But the pity is that the last time I peeked at him, he didn't react immediately. The fact that he was still alive has been exposed. And there is no point in killing him now. And even if the emerging psychic fluctuations were extinguished, the other side would at least know that the investigation into Chen Ming was considered a failure of intervention. It means that Chen Ming still has a high probability of being alive. And some information will still be exposed. This is inevitable. So now comes the problem. Who is spying on him? Chapter 133 The First Shot Chen Ning quickly figured out the answer to this question. Currently, there are only a few forces that will explore his existence. There is a slight possibility on the government side. But it is not very likely. After all, they are only responsible for logistics in this operation. Then the 14th Legion will be left. I just don't know if it's by Quan or the person in the war zone behind the second generation. Chen Ning has never been shy about thinking the worst about things. So now, he would rather believe it is the latter. However, Chen Ming is already prepared to face different situations. And even if such a situation occurs, he will not feel discouraged. He will definitely do what he wants to do. Unexpected changes are nothing more than whether it is difficult to achieve the goal. Not whether it can be achieved. Even if the people in the war zone know that he is still alive. No matter how deep they are on guard. As long as Chen Ming's spiritual energy is used. There will still be no spiritual energy fluctuations. Then Chen Ming is the most fatal to them. A key risk factor that cannot be offset. In an era like this. Who would want to be restricted and unable to touch a spaceship for the rest of his life? What's more. Chen Ming can actually control not only the spacecraft. But also various mechanical equipment. Even if he only controls a terminal. Chen Ming can directly cause an explosion by activating the terminal battery. It is still possible to stay away from spaceships for the rest of your life. But to stay away from mechanical equipment for the rest of your life is to go out and become a savage. So if the news that Chen Ning is still alive reaches them, then Chen Ming will definitely become a serious problem for them. I just don't know what they will do after knowing the specific circumstances of this matter. Did he send some kind of psyker with super long distance attack capabilities? Or is there a more practical approach? Chen Ning first ruled out the previous idea that psychers with this kind of ability should not exist. Even if it were available, this ability would be countless times more dangerous to the Empire, as a whole, than Chen Ming's ability. A psyker with such an ability would definitely die quickly. But as for what they will actually do, Chen Ming is really unsure. After all, he didn't know exactly what was in the war zone. And he only had a rough estimate of the resources they could mobilize. Thinking of this, Chen Ming suddenly had a strange idea in his mind. He began to try to use his own spiritual energy fluctuations to restore the spiritual energy fluctuations that appeared when the sense of peeping appeared. If we could trace the past backwards, we might be able to find some clues. But he tried for a while. And it seemed that because everyone's spiritual energy fluctuations were different, he couldn't find that spiritual energy fluctuation. If the feeling of peeping before was still there, and the psychic energy fluctuations were still there, he might really be able to track it back. But now Chen Ming could only sigh a pity. And at the same time, there was a little more gloom in his heart. If he is disgusted by people in the war zone again, it will definitely have a great negative impact on what he will do next. Because he may be forced to expose some situations in order to protect himself. So now, Jin Ming didn't hesitate at all and called his boss directly to ask for some opinions. As soon as the communication was connected, the boss said directly, Xiao Ming came just in time. Bai Quan just called me and asked me if you are still alive. I mean I don't know. But it seems like he doesn't quite believe it. You called again suddenly. Let me make a blind guess. Is it related to Bai Quan? I'm not sure. But it's possible. Chen Ming said this and told his boss about the situation just now. While Chen Ming and his boss were retelling what happened. It was just when Bai Quan had a splitting headache. After knowing everything Tang Shi had done in the past few days. His head almost exploded. 
and his whole body felt like it was cracking. He had no idea that someone could be so stupid. It was obvious that he only needed to make a surprise attack to rescue the people and attract Yu Hui's attention. Is it difficult to forcefully clear the system's defenses and send marines to take away people when Yu Wei has to be distracted to face the Sinar fleet that also launched a surprise attack on Yu Wei's other galaxy? Then just act like you are retreating after completing the mission and jump to the nearby Kleka before Yu Wei reacts. Isn't it a very simple process to rely on the weapons provided by Tachyon technology to destroy the planetary shield generator and destroy Kleka? Even if any link fails, the fleet's strength is definitely enough to delay the warp engine cooling down and retreat with very little damage. As a result, he laid out a plan and someone came to take the opportunity to pick peaches. If it's really just picking peaches, forget it. The peach pickers did not want the best peaches growing on the peach tree. They took the initiative to smash the best peaches that could be eaten as long as they were brought back and left for a while. Then be greedy and pick the biggest peach that grows on the top of the tree. Not only did he not catch any peaches in the end, he also fell from the tree and was beaten up. A well-laid and well-laid plan can be turned into something like this. And more importantly, it was actually destroyed by a completely incompetent second generation. Bai Quan had never paid attention to Tang Shi before, but he only had some basic understanding, such as that he was a second generation waste, and his background was somewhat related to a war zone. He didn't even bother to look at it before him. After what happened before, he went out of his way to check Tang Shi's information. Then I discovered all the things that happened in the war zone in Chenming's past. Now he understood that the problem with the plan was not just Tang Shi's greed, but also hatred and stupidity. But knowing this didn't affect Bai Quan's continued headache and inner madness. Because when Chen Ming died, not only did he die alone, but Cheng Xingho was still in Chen Ming's hands. This was no different from killing two people with one corpse. However, Bai Quan never believed that Chen Ming died so casually. So he chose to forcibly detain Tang Shi and tried to find the possibility that Chen Ming was still alive. From the second day after he imprisoned Tang Shi, all parties except the headquarters of the 14th Army on the other side of the Empire continued to put pressure on him. It took a week to release anyone, but the desk was already filled with documents of various complaints, forcing him to make a decision immediately. But Bai Quan knew that he had to consider all factors comprehensively in order to discern what kind of approach was truly worth doing. So he chose to believe in himself. He found a psyker with exploratory abilities today. Then, he discovered that the psyker's detection of Chen Ming was directly interrupted instead of failing to detect it. He knew exactly what this meant. Either Chen Ming took the initiative to cut it off, or someone helped Chen Ming cut it off. And both mean the same thing. Chen Ming is still alive. At this time, Bai Quan's detention of Tang had reached its limit. But fortunately, he succeeded in delaying it until the moment he discovered that Chen Ming was not dead. So he contacted his boss directly. He needs to talk to Chen Ming. He needs to use Chen Ming's attitude and Chen Ming's situation to decide his final treatment of Tang Shi. As for Chen Ming, since he was sure that the fact that he was alive was exposed, he might as well stop pretending to be dead. He directly controlled the terminal he gave to his boss and connected to the terminal his boss usually used to communicate with Bai Quan. After the communication was connected, Chen Ming came up directly and said in a very shameless manner, I will give you three sentences. If I don't hear what I want to hear, I will leave directly. Bai Quan was not angry because of Chen Ming's attitude. Instead, he was slightly relieved because Chen Ming was still willing to communicate with him. He thought for a moment and said, I had an accidental coma before executing the mission. This accident was man-made. I can compensate you for all your losses caused by this mission. Also, I don't represent the 14th Legion now. I only represent myself. Only these? Chen Ming did not hang up the call directly which calmed down the slight anxiety caused by uncertainty in Bai Quan's heart. He asked, What else do you need? Cost. It's been a week since that mission. I think you should already know what happened. I abided by the regulations I made with you before, and sent out the positioning signal as promised. At the same time, I tried to contact you when you came over in advance. When I couldn't contact you, I didn't expect you to do anything. As long as I took advantage of the retreat method I arranged, and after the low cruiser came over, and I could leave by myself. Chen Ming deliberately lengthened the interval between his words so that Bai Quan could listen and think about what he said. As for the result, I don't know if you didn't receive my message or what. In short, you killed the cruiser. That was my only chance to save my life. You had two cruisers to force it out of the protection range of the attached shield. In the end, it was destroyed by an offensive level thermal pulse laser. 
They want to kill me. So can you kill all these people to pay for my life? Bai Quan said hesitantly. Is this a little bit? Of course Chen Ning knew that he was talking nonsense just now. But isn't that what negotiations are like? Since Bai Quan wanted to talk to Chen Ming, Chen Ming, as the victim, had to express something. Anyway, he was just talking casually, and he also knew that those soldiers were always just accepting orders and executing them. If he really asked tens of thousands of people on these three spaceships to pay for his life, he might have psychological problems. But on the surface, Chen Ming must still pretend. Do you think I'm extreme? Or do you think I'm trying to make things difficult for others? Let me think about what the imperial law says. Intentional murder is punishable by death. Right. But, but what? But I'm not dead? Chen Ming's last few words were already a bit arrogant. But he didn't need to act rational now. Even taking the initiative to throw away some rational speeches is more in line with his current interests. Anyway, it's not him who is at fault in the end. So he is naturally qualified to do so. Bai Quan, this is not a conflict between us. It is a conflict between me and the 14th Legion. You can't deny one thing. The commander's problems are caused internally by you. Not me. There is no way that I, the victim, should be held responsible for the fact that I was almost killed because of this issue. Mr. Chen Ming. Chen Ming interrupted impatiently again. Someone should pay the price for your internal struggles. Right. If you, a major general, are seriously injured, then at least all those directly involved must be punished as they should be. From jail to death. Right. Bai Quan hesitated for a long time before saying, Yes. What about me? Bai Quan was silent. Chen Ming continued, Let me ask you a question. Has the commander-in-chief received the punishment he deserves? Actively attacking the target of the rescue mission. Ultimately leading to the failure of the mission. The loss of at least one-third of the fleet and huge casualties. What kind of punishment should he receive? Did he suffer? Bai Quan's silence allowed Chen Ming to know the answer to his question. So, someone has to pay. Don't stop me. You can't stop me. You never know which part of the spacecraft around you has been touched by me. If this matter has nothing to do with you, you'd better clear yourself out. Bai Quan suddenly let out a long breath. He had already thought clearly from the moment he found out that Chen Ming was still alive. This matter was indeed the result of the 14th Legion doing something wrong first. And he could not deny it. As the current supreme commander of the 14th Legion in the Gallo Star territory, he is willing to bear the responsibility of doing wrong things. Not only did he want Chen Ming to be alive, he also wanted Cheng Xinghe to return safely. So when facing Chen Ming, he was willing to lower his stance. There is no shame in putting down a psyker with the ability to subvert the afterglow. Therefore, after Chen Ming said these words, Bai Quan took the initiative and said, That commander is still forcibly controlled by me. I can make him receive the punishment he deserves. In addition to the losses you caused due to the 14th Legion, I will also give you additional compensation. Chen Ming was very surprised that Bai Quan could say such a thing, because these words were submissive and catered to his demands, and were not something a member of the 14th Legion would say. And if he does this, he will offend many people. Does Bai Quan really dare? Chen Ming was not sure, but he would not question it, because no amount of words could compare to the fact. Then let me see it. If Bai Quan said these words sincerely, and Chen Ming also saw what he did. So what's the problem with him reconciling with Bai Quan instead of the 14th Legion? The boss who had been listening silently suddenly said, I received an express delivery notice here. Chen Ming asked doubtfully, Express delivery? For Bai Quan's express delivery. The courier must have been waiting outside for a long time. Let me take a look. An anonymous card with 2 billion in it. It should be for you. Chen Ming thought for a moment. The cheapest destroyer usually costs more than 100 million while a better destroyer usually costs 4 to 500 million. The price of a cruiser must be at least 10 times higher than that of a destroyer. 70 to 80. Or nearly 10 billion is normal. A battleship is something out of specification. The purchasing power of these 2 billion can only be said to be barely sufficient. At least it is definitely not comparable to the afterglow cruiser that Chen Ming lost. Bai Quan also knew this. So he immediately said, These are just the most basic compensations. They are the compensation for the ship you usually drive. And there are others. I can directly compensate you with a cruiser and an Alpha Class after Glow Core. You can decide the specific model. I know that you have been checking various spacecraft technical papers when you were at the space station some time ago. The 14th Legion has its own spacecraft engineer. I can give you a series of spacecraft component technologies. 
I will also personally apologize to you when the time comes. Bai Quan had made enough gestures. But he still had no intention of stopping and continued. There is also an additional compensation that I will give you. A psychic weapon. The boss suddenly said unexpectedly. Oh. He's bleeding profusely. His words were ostensibly addressed to Bai Quan. But they were actually reminding Chen Ming that the psychic weapons Bai Quan mentioned were of high value. As the person who took the initiative to bring up psychic weapons, Bai Quan certainly knew the value of psychic weapons. But it was nothing compared to Chen Ming and Chang Xingha. He introduced, A psychic weapon is a weapon that can increase the psychic ability of a psychic as long as it is held in hand. It has only symbolic significance as a weapon. And is actually equivalent to an amplifier. Whatever shape you need, I can customize it. At this time, the boss intervened again and said, The appearance doesn't matter. It's impossible for Xiao Ming to actually use a knife to kill people. As a firearm, there is no difference in combat function between psychic weapons and ordinary firearms. You can choose whatever you like. That's fine. Then the revolver will do. Xiao Ming is quite tasteful. He also likes retro style. Right. Um. Chen Ming responded casually. To be honest, he now feels that what Bai Quan just said is enough as compensation. There are a total of these four things as apology. If he wanted more, Chen Ming would feel a little sorry. So be it. But more than that, I want to see something happen. Bai Quan responded immediately. Yes. The remaining things will be sent to Mr. Wu immediately. And the apology of the 14th Legion will also be placed in front of you in the future. Hope so. One more thing. Mr. Chen Ming, I have an idea. I hope to cooperate with you again. Not as a member of the 14th Legion, but as myself. I know you don't want to hear it now. So please wait a day or two, and I will contact you then. Bai Quan didn't waste any more words, and hung up the communication. He actually wanted to talk about Chang Xingha. But he also knew that now was not the right time to mention Chang Xingha. So, he had to do something first. A second generation. A second generation with a war zone background. And a psyker. A psyker with the ability to subvert afterglow. Who to choose? Bai Quan already has the answer in his heart. Bai Quan opened the drawer in front of him. And there was a gift box inside. Inside the gift box was a vintage style, exquisite revolver engraved with gorgeous patterns. This was when he was promoted to rear admiral after he had commanded a small surprise attack fleet on the battlefield of Afterglow and made achievements that could influence the battlefield. A gift given to him by a big shot. A big shot with a very special status. Bai Quan loaded the six bullets in the gift box, which were also engraved with subtle patterns and would have no impact on actual use. Into the magazine. He tightened his grip on the revolver turned the magazine, stood up and left the office. Privilege must be dealt with with privilege. After one day, the boss has received some subsequent compensation, such as a memory card that stores a series of technical blueprints and professional guidance books for the extremely thick armor of the 14th Legion ships that Chen Ming needs, and Chen Ming's blueprint for the design of psychic weapons. Chen Ming can make some requests for this blueprint. After the boss gave these two things to Chen Ming through Chen Ming's terminal, he also told Chen Ming that there was unrest within the 14th army. However, the boss gave a general overview of the situation. And when the boss told him the news, the situation in the 14th army had stabilized. Bai Quan also contacted Chen Ming again. Although Bai Quan's face couldn't be seen, Chen Ning could tell there was a hint of fatigue in Bai Quan's voice just by listening to his voice. So he didn't waste any more words and asked Bai Quan directly, What did you do yesterday? Bai Quan did not answer directly, but said to the boss, Mr. Wu, please tell me something. I may not be convincing. Okay. Yesterday, Bai Quan killed the second generation with his own hands. Chen Ming waited for a while, but did not wait for the boss's second sentence. Is this gone? As if to highlight the contrast between the front and the back. The boss deliberately waited a few rows before saying, There's more. He eliminated interference from all aspects. Forcibly suppressed the opposition voices within the entire legion arrested several high-level officials who had objections, and monopolized power. And afterwards, he took the internal military regulations of the 14th Legion and read them over the person's body one by one, all the crimes he had committed, and announced the entire scene to everyone in the entire Legion. Chin Ming already believed by Quan's sincerity after hearing this. But isn't this approach a bit too exaggerated? Chin Ming couldn't help but ask, Won't this have an impact on the 14th Legion? Bai Quan denied. No. This is actually a reassurance for other members of the 14th Legion. 
if there is a heavy loss in a battle because of the commander, and the commander just pats his butt and runs away, it will be a huge blow to the morale and morale of the military. But correspondingly, although I have the support of the lower level soldiers, some of the higher ups, that is, those people behind Tangshur, are no different from crazy. That's why a large number of voices opposed to me suddenly appeared within the Legion. But I suppressed them all. I can only suppress it temporarily, while people in the war zone are still adding fuel to the flames. I still have a lot to do. Now I can barely spare some time to talk to you. In this case, Chen Ming said simply, then go ahead. I think you can tell me now what you didn't say yesterday. I need to cooperate with you and make a sufficient contribution. Chapter 134 Cloning Research Institute Bai Quan relied on his own reputation, military position, and the revolver to barely control the chaos of the 14th Legion. But this time when he came to the Gallo Star territory, the soldiers of the 14th Legion were not all his former subordinates. They all had their own ideas and were easily incited by others, especially those in the war zone. Therefore, since he wants to completely suppress the internal opposition, he must make a contribution. Therefore, he needs Chen Ming's help. Bai Quan quickly explained his purpose to Chen Ming. Chen Ming asked in return, So? Are you counting on me? The person captured by Yu Wei. To help you? Bai Quan said seriously. Mr. Chen Ming, we now know the name of the equipment Yu Wei transported. The Chilling Nerve Extraction Device. Calculating the time. Afterglow should have been activated on you at least once by now. Maybe in the previous raid. Or maybe in the last two days. You are still alive which means that your spiritual energy has a stronger ability than the spiritual nerve used by this device. And you didn't run away after this incident, or became negative because of it. And you even had time to communicate with me. It shows that you must be confident that you can escape from the Afterglow Star territory. I always view your abilities at the highest limit. I think you must have controlled a new one after losing the Alpha Level Afterglow you controlled before. In other words, you already had a lot of control before. And if it is discovered that Alpha Level Yue is being controlled, Yue will definitely be extremely nervous. It is very likely that the interior will be cleaned, and your affairs will be exposed. So you are waiting for a time. The key point of this time is just before the second activation of the Spirit and Lightning Nerve Extraction Device. You will explode at that time and leave the Afterglow Galaxy with the Afterglow you control. Bai Quan guessed Chen Ming's arrangement correctly. And he guessed it right by thinking that Chen Ming was very strong. So he should have such abilities which made Chen Ming not know what to say for a while. After a moment of silence, Chen Ming said, So what do you want to do? Bai Quan replied, I want to strengthen the trust of all the soldiers of the 14th Legion in me. Winning is the best way. As long as I can win, as long as I can bring merit to all my soldiers, then they will fully support me. A failed commander who was shot by me as a useless commander will not have any influence on me after this. Because the soldiers will know that I am the one who can bring them victory not some people who are fanning the flames in the dark. It was under the influence of these ideas that Bai Quan came up with such a plan. He was actually betting. After all, he had already done these things before Chen Ming agreed to this matter. If Chen Ming didn't agree, it would be equivalent to him pushing himself to the most pressing moment. He must put in a lot of energy to completely resolve the situation. And there is even the possibility of overturning the situation at any time. But correspondingly, his gains and growth from this matter will definitely be much more than what he would have achieved with Chen Ming's help. And Bai Quan actually did this for some other reasons. It is the 14th Legion under his command that is more deeply penetrated by others than the one in his hometown. He felt that when he came out, the superiors arranged the manpower for him deliberately in this way. In this case, even if a problem does not occur now, it may occur in the future. It's not a bad thing that he blew the situation off in advance. What's more, it can be said that the problem has already exploded once. These people who infiltrated have been bold enough to dare to attack him. And he doesn't dare to think of anything they dare to do in the future. Therefore, it was by Quan's initiative and intention to bring the situation to this level now. Nothing can be broken or established. Either he fails this time and goes back to his hometown of the 14th Army in despair. Either he can control these 14th legions and make great progress. Of course, that doesn't mean that with Chen Ming's help, he wouldn't have made such progress. In addition to the help Chen Ming can give you way, he also has to face many internal problems. Bai Quan himself was promoted from a battlefield commander. And this was the first time he had become such a general commander. He has no experience and must learn and try before he understands what he should do in this position. This is his own mission. 
his own goal. These are not areas where Chen Ming can help. Only when Bai Quan can deal with these problems can he be considered to have made progress in terms of ability. After listening to Bai Quan's words, Chen Ming motioned for him to continue. Chen Ming had no doubts about Bai Quan's purpose. It's normal for the 14th Legion to bring not all of Bai Quan's subordinates here, and it's normal for the new subordinates to be suspicious of Bai Quan. It is also normal for a commander who can bring victory to be more popular than a commander who causes a lot of casualties. Chen Ming saw no problem with him doing this. But now Chen Ming is actually more curious about what Bai Quan's plan is and what this plan can bring to him. After Chen Ming signaled him to continue, Bai Quan slowly explained the specific idea to Chen Ming in detail. Simply put, because Bai Quan needs a sufficient record to establish himself. He needs Chen Ming's help to create such an opportunity. An opportunity to severely damage Yu Hui. To be considered a serious damage. At least one battleship must be the result. Bai Quan didn't need Chen Ming to do much. He only needed Chen Ming to provide him with some information about the battleships. It is impossible to say that all of Yu Hui's capital ships are parked in a certain star system in the star field. There must be primary parking locations and some secondary parking locations. It is convenient to cover the entire star field with the force of the capital ship to avoid problems such as delayed rescue. For example, when Sindar Company raided Yu Wei before, a single battleship came to support them. And these are Bai Chuan's goals. Chen Ming's individuals, who have already spread throughout the afterglow star field can indeed help obtain the approximate location information of the capital ship. After all, the whereabouts of capital ships are not that easy to hide. Not only the reminder of the ship itself, but also the mobilization of various large-scale supplies and the dispatch of a large number of low-level afterglow individuals. Even if he couldn't get it, Chen Ning could take the initiative to ask through Hui Wang, just using the excuse of worrying that Chen Ming would be snatched away by humans again in the future. He asked Yu Wei's senior management if they had enough defense force to get close to him. If a battleship is attacked, other battleships will inevitably go to support it. Then Yu Wei's defense power against Chen Ming, that is, the arm power that restricts Chen Ming, will inevitably be weakened. It is good for Chen Ming who currently cannot control the entire Afterglow Star territory. He can retreat more easily when Bai Quan takes action, and has more time and opportunity to take away more things from Yu Wei. And this is an additional plan that does not affect his own plans. Because regardless of whether Bai Quan actually came to make a surprise attack, he still had to carry out the original plan. If he didn't come, it wouldn't affect him. Chen Ming didn't believe that others would do things for him for no reason. But this is a clearly priced transaction. And he is still the dominant party in the transaction. The transaction itself had no negative impact on him. And even if it failed, the responsibility would not be placed on him. Whether he does it or not, whether he does it early or late, it has no effect on him. And if it succeeds, it will be good for what he wants to do. Why not do it? But there are some things that need to be discussed in advance. What can you give me? Bai Quan had already thought about the price he could pay in this matter, and said, Among the spoils of this mission, all the alpha-level afterglow cores can be given to you, and there will also be an ectoplasm stone as a reward. Such an answer was within Chen Ming's expectations. So he didn't bargain much and said directly, I agree. But this time, I hope you can keep in touch with me. After receiving Chen Ming's answer, Bai Quan suddenly felt that the pressure on his back was much lighter. He felt that it was almost done now. So he mentioned it by the way. That? About Chang Xingha? Chen Ming knew his worries and said, He is fine. He is still freezing in the escape cabin. As long as I am still alive, he will not die. After hearing the news, Bai Quan finally showed some fatigue and said, Thank you. This fatigue only appeared for a moment. And Bai Quan immediately cheered up. He didn't give him time to rest now. The next action will be taken by the 14th Army Corps itself. And what he was talking to Qin Ming about now was the confidence for his subsequent actions. The specific time for the operation was quickly determined. Seven days later. It was also the 15th day after Yu Hui started preparing to extract Qin Ming Qiling's nerves for the second time and there were still five days left before Hui Hui's estimated 20-day cultivation time. Chin Ming didn't dare to press too hard on time this time. Otherwise, no matter how small the probability is, he really can't stand it if something happens again. After everything that needed to be explained was completed, Chin Ming suddenly asked Bai Quan, Why did you use a psychic to probe me twice before? Bai Quan immediately denied. I didn't. The psyker I hired to detect you was suppressed at the beginning. Are there any other psychers who have looked for you? Now Chen Ming knew. The second contact type investigation was carried out by Bai Quan. And this time, 
the investigation was cut off by him at the first opportunity. The first voyeuristic exploration was conducted by a real third party. Then it's clear who Chen Ming is. It must be someone from the war zone. Bai Quan also thought of similar possibilities at this time. However, Chen Ming first reminded Bai Quan, I suggest you be more careful. The war zone side doesn't have the ability to come to me in the core area of the Afterglow Star Territory now. At most, they can do something when I leave the Star Territory later. But it's different over there. Your previous actions may make them hate you even more than me. That's why you might have big problems there. I know. Bai Quan said something and put his hand on the exquisite revolver placed on the table in front of him. Before the remaining five rounds of bullets are fired, no one should dare to take the initiative to touch his troubles openly. Meanwhile, on this side of brilliance, it is connecting to a strange signal through the remote information communication device. Then, through the data transmitted by this signal, it saw a bright research institute-like environment. In the pure white wall space, there are two rows of neatly arranged cultivation cabins. These cultivation chambers are controlled by various mechanical equipment and carry out cultivation work. In these training cabins, there are people who are almost identical to Chen Ming Chong. At this time, these clones looked almost the same age as Chen Ming himself. It seems that the cultivation will be completed soon. NG3, which controls all of this, has just connected to the communication with Agori, who saw this scene. G3 was not surprised that Hui Wang would access this signal. Instead, he briefly introduced Hui Wang. These are the first batch of Chen Ming's clones produced here. Hui Wang, who was ordered by his superiors to connect to this signal, quickly recorded these scenes and asked, Is this all? 50 is enough. No matter how small the number is, the cost will be too high. No matter how high the number is, there will be no place to use it. 50 is just right. G3 explained casually and continued, All the data of these clones are as predicted. All within the scope of normal people. Hui Wang asked again. I saw it. And then what? Why do you want me to come here? Because I need you to do something for me. The human body data of each clone will be slightly different after cultivation. I can scan Chen Ming's body to determine which individual situation is most similar to Chen Ming. But after the personality and memory are implanted, the situation of each clone will also have differences in personality and consciousness. This is where I cannot confirm and state the difference. And Hui Wang, you have the most opportunities and the most contact with Chen Ming. You know Chen Ming's character and personality. And you know his situation. I need you to help me select a few clones that are most similar to Chen Ming's personality in the future. And I will select a few clones that are most similar to Chen Ming in terms of physical fitness. Then we will consider it comprehensively and decide on the person who will be implanted with Chen Ming's spiritual enlightenment nerve. Are you confident that the second draw will be successful? Brilliant's question was immediately answered by G3. No, but I am only responsible for what I should do. Cultivating clones and implanting the final spiritual nerve. The premise of my mission is that the spiritual nerve extraction is successful. So I will not consider the possibility of failure. G3 continued very talkatively. Although I am not doing the cultivation of artificial ineffective spiritual nerves. I have been paying attention to it. The new spiritual nerve has extremely cultivated its aggressiveness. Even if it fails to succeed, it will at least destroy Chen Ning's spiritual nerve, so that he will never have the possibility of threatening us. You don't have anything to worry about. Hui Wang didn't show any signs and asked normally. So in the future, if the implantation is successful, what about the other clones that were not selected? G3 did not answer directly this time, but asked, Have you reported before that Chen Ning has a high IQ? Yes. Chen Ning's learning efficiency can be compared to that of a beta-level individual. But I think this has the influence of psychic energy. Other recorded psychers have never shown such abilities. G3 said very knowledgeable about this aspect. Psychic energy does have an impact. But it is not a decisive factor. According to human research, part of a person's IQ is determined innately. So there is a high probability that other Chin Ming clones will also have such special features. When the implantation is completed, they will be sent to where they should go to conduct scientific research. Send it? Where is this cloning research institute? It's underground in Chen Ning's research institute. So these clones need to be sent elsewhere. Are you taking control yourself? Right. G3 thought that Hui Wang was worried about its situation. So he explained, You don't need to worry about me. The underground cloning research institute is completely separated from the ground. If you want to go directly to the ground from the underground, you need to take a detour from other places. 
Chen Ming has no possibility of contacting me. And there is an emergency transfer channel underground. If something unexpected happens, I will be taken to the isolation area and isolated alone as soon as possible. There will be no problems. Naturally, Hui Wang would not explain his thoughts to G3, but just followed its meaning and said, I understand. So what do I need to do now? Waiting for the cultivation to enter the final stage. It will be done soon. The physical cultivation will be completed within 24 hours, followed by the correction of personality consciousness. Afterglows do not need to be dormant and are, in a sense, immortal as long as the aging parts of their core are replaced. So 24 hours is really not a long time for them. Hui Wang doesn't mind waiting a little longer. In addition to helping Chen Ming collect some information, it can also satisfy its own curiosity. Hui Hui's behavior of running around following the institute signals was noticed by G3. So much so that it suddenly asked Hui Wang, Are you also interested in these biotechnologies? There are some. What I usually face are basically industrial equipment. It is indeed rare to see this kind of technology. And I am really interested in it. G3 was not at all rigid and serious when facing the human being Chen Ming. Instead, when facing the glory, he said with some enthusiasm, I have some entry-level information here. If you don't mind, you can take a look. Good. Hui Wang took a rough look at the biotechnology-related documents that G3 put in the public storage area. After copying all the data to itself, it asked, The failure rate of cloning seems to be very high. Those failed products where? G3 immediately replied, The failure rate is indeed high, but it is acceptable compared to the results. All those failed products will be injected with drugs to death and placed in a special freezer to wait for harmless treatment. If you want to see it, just switch the line and you can see it. I will give you permission. Hui Wang quickly looked over the newly opened area of G3. There is an enclosed area in the corner of the Clone Research Institute. There are several refrigerators working here at the same time to maintain the low temperature of the environment. There are several huge metal boxes here. And inside the boxes are a large number of twisted human bodies and exposed irregular chunks of flesh and blood. All kinds of stumps and broken arms can be seen everywhere, randomly discarded in them. Although Brilliant does not have human consciousness, it knows how terrifying such a scene is for people. In particular, these pieces of meat would have Chen Ming's face growing from time to time. Chen Ming would definitely not be able to hold back when he saw it. This is also the disadvantage of batch cloning. Hui Wang recorded the situation here and continued back to the institute. Watching G3 carry out the final stage of meticulous cultivation of 50 complete individuals in the training cabin, Hui Wang suddenly asked another question. Is there any chance that the clone is a psyker? Yes, but it only exists in human records. We have only done a few studies and actual experiments on cloning. And we have never had a psyker appear in the clone body. What if it happens? The probability is too low. But if it does happen, then I will need to cooperate with other individuals to research this clone psyker while handling the work at hand. And I will be very busy by then. G3 asked Hui Hui. Are you curious about what such an existence would be like? No. I just saw fluctuations in the psychic fluctuation detector. G3 immediately glanced at the psychic wave detector. It was concentrating on controlling the clone cultivation equipment. The other equipment was just letting them operate on their own. So it was normal that they didn't notice it. It's just that when I look at it now, the reading on it is zero. But there was no need for Hui Wang to lie to him. So G3 immediately called up the previous data. It looked at the slide bulge on the top and said, There is indeed a fluctuation. But it is within the error range. So the instrument did not issue a prompt. So it doesn't matter. And Hui Wang reminded again. If you look further, I just saw periodic psychic energy fluctuations. G3 did not doubt that he was there and immediately retrieved all the data from the device. Then it did find an anomaly. About two days ago, the detector began to detect periodic psychic energy fluctuations. But the intensity of each psychic energy fluctuation was very low. And the instrument itself would only treat it as an error. Hui Wang tried to guess. Is there any interference? For example, Chen Ming's spiritual stone? G3 denied. No. Chen Ming's two ectoplasms are placed in his box made of silent alloy. Our despair ectoplasm stone is embedded in the equipment of the Surface Research Institute and is isolated from the underground. This shouldn't happen. Chen Ming's ship spirit? No. The ship spirit has lost its carrier. It is extremely fragile and cannot leave Chen Ming's body. There must be some other reason. G3 shared all these ideas with Hui Hui and hoped that Hui Hui would give some opinions. 
But Hui Wang obviously didn't understand psychic matters. And he didn't get any instructions in this regard from Chen Ming. Even Chen Ming most likely didn't know that the cloning laboratory was underground in his research institute. Therefore, there is nothing it can do. G3's attitude towards glory did not change because they did not receive help. After searching everywhere for a long time without finding any results, it said to Wei Wang, You can close the data flow for the time being. I may need to conduct a comprehensive inspection of the Cloning Research Institute. Chapter 135 Heart G3 quickly mobilized some robots that perform auxiliary tasks within the Institute and all internal monitoring equipment. A rigorous inspection and scan of the entire Cloning Institute began. Previously, G3 had placed items with their own psychic fluctuations in the research institute. This will cause the psychic fluctuation detector inside the research institute to frequently scan for some cell residual psychic fluctuations. Therefore, under normal circumstances, it will set an error value for the psychic fluctuation detector. Anything that does not exceed this value will be treated as an error to eliminate the impact. And this also resulted in it not emitting that subtle periodic spiritual energy fluctuation. However, G3 does not have this problem when I check it myself now. He quickly eliminated the anti-interference error he had set and found the source of the psychic fluctuations. In the freezer that I just looked at, among the corpses of the defective clones, it was obvious that when G3 abandoned these defective products, they had injected them with a reagent that could definitely kill them. But now, there is still a clone showing signs of life activity. And that spiritual energy fluctuation came from the clone that was still alive. But the strange thing is that after accurate scanning, G3 found that the clone did not show signs of life. What really showed signs of life was something inside the clone's body. G3 immediately called up the recorded data it had archived for each clone through the tags on the clones and found the clone's data on it. From the photos in the recorded data and the actual corpses dumped here, it can be seen that the appearance of the clone seems to be fine. But in fact, there was something wrong with the heart of this clone. In the middle period of cultivation, the heart muscle developed abnormally and grew irregularly. So this clone was abandoned by G3 before. G3 didn't expect that the current situation would occur after he had clearly given up on the clone. It immediately dispatched robots to transport the frozen hard bodies back to the room next door to the clone cultivation chambers. There is a dissecting table covered with various tools and some mechanical arms with different functions extending out from the nearby wall. G3 followed the prompts of the psychic detection equipment and carried out an autopsy on the corpse along the location of the psychic fluctuations. It was discovered at the end of an examination. The clone's body functions had actually been completely cut off long ago, and even corpse spots appeared on the body. The body of the clone is indeed dead. It can be said that it is completely dead, and there is no possibility of struggling. But, the deformed heart inside the corpse maintained a weak vitality, and was still beating slightly even now. And at the moment of each beat, the heart will emit weak psychic energy fluctuations to the surroundings. This periodic heartbeat is the source of the periodic psychic fluctuations detected by the psychic fluctuation detector that was noticed by Hui Hui. But it's not quite right to call this thing that emits psychic energy fluctuations a heart. Because after G3 dissected it out and placed it on the tray next to it, you can see that it doesn't look like a heart at all. It was just a mass of deformed flesh and blood tissue that was still moving and emitting psychic energy fluctuations. After the corpse was repeatedly checked by G3 several times to confirm that there was no life activity or psychic energy fluctuations, it was placed alone in an ice coffin and pushed to the corner of the room by the robot. The deformed mass of flesh and blood was taken to another room on the other side of the anatomy room. There are more and more complex professional equipment here than in the anatomy room. And there are several robots delivering some new equipment here. In addition to the most basic examination of this mass of flesh and blood, G3 also needs to conduct some research on it using other more specialized psychic detection instruments. Soon, two complex reports were listed in G3's database. One of them is a normal scan of this mass of flesh and blood tissue. It can be seen that this mass of flesh and blood tissue is composed of normal myocardial tissue connected abnormally. Genetic testing of the myocardial tissue confirmed that it was Chin Ming's genes. And there were no abnormal mutations. But the existence of this mass of still living flesh and blood tissue is the biggest anomaly in itself. Another report from G3 is data obtained from examinations related to psychic abilities. But it only focused on a few key lines of data in the report. Psionic wave type. Psionic wave complexity. And psionic activity. The type of psychic energy fluctuation can be used to roughly analyze whether the detected psychic energy is an attack type. A protective type. 
or an auxiliary type based on the psychic energy wave itself and the location where the psychic energy wave acts. Although Qin Ming has an auxiliary type of psychic power, the actual measurement results of G3 just now confirmed it. The psychic energy fluctuations emitted by this mass of flesh and blood tissue with Qin Ming genes are protective. It first protected itself under the action of the lethal injection, and then remained alive in the extremely low temperature environment. This is obviously in line with the situation investigated by G3. This is considered a normal situation. After G3 marked it, he continued to look at the next line of important data. The complexity of psychic fluctuations. Psionic wave complexity is a set of data that can be seen through the details of the amplitude of the psionic waves. It's not that the greater the amplitude, the higher the complexity, but the faster and more obvious the amplitude changes. The higher the complexity of the psychic fluctuation will be. The higher the complexity of psychic energy fluctuations, the more complex the final realization of psychic energy will be, and the effect may be stronger. However, under normal circumstances, after a psyker uses psionic energy, the intensity of the psionic effect can be seen just by looking at it, and a rough estimate of the complexity will give the result. It is generally not used much. After all, the ultimate strength of a psyker's psionic power does not depend solely on complexity. Just because this mass of flesh and blood only instinctively and passively uses psychic energy, G3 needs to confirm this. Now it seems that compared with the complexity of this mass of flesh and blood tissue and Qin Ming's own psychic fluctuation, one can be said to be elementary school arithmetic, while the other can probably write a paper on linear algebra. Moreover, the complexity of Qin Ming's psychic fluctuations has been increasing, especially after the first failed extraction of spiritual nerves. In addition, Various studies have shown that psychers and psyker clones have almost no psychic connection. So no matter how big the gap is between the complexity of the psychic fluctuations of this mass of flesh and blood tissue with Qin Ming's genes and Qin Ming himself, it seems normal to G3. In addition to confirming the psychic strength of flesh and blood tissue, it wanted to see the difference between psychers and clones of psychers. And then it did see it. If it hadn't known it in advance, it would have been impossible to imagine that this mass of flesh and blood tissue was cloned using Qin Ming's genes. G3 continued to mark this line of content and looked at the last important data. Psychic activity. This is a value similar to a psyker psionic strength, but is the same standard used to differentiate between psychers and psionic beings. Because only humans can acquire and master spiritual energy through spiritual enlightenment nerves. Other psychic creatures do not have such things as spiritual enlightenment nerves. They themselves are their own spiritual enlightenment nerves. Obviously, this mass of deformed flesh and blood tissue was not formed after the clone became a psyker, but was an independent, psionic creature from the beginning. Although G3 does not know the specific criteria for judging psionic creatures, in its opinion, this thing is definitely more like a psionic creature than a psyker. It can only be said that cloning is not a normal reproductive process after all. Different tissues and organs of the clone require differentiation and cultivation of original stem cells to form. So in the process of formation, there is indeed a certain probability that this situation will occur. But then, there was a problem in front of G3. What on earth affected this mass of flesh and blood tissue to produce psychic energy? This obviously can only be clarified by more in-depth research. At this time, the equipment of the Cloning Research Institute was only equipped with some equipment for daily testing of Qin Ming, and could only conduct some ordinary research. If you want to understand the principle of the formation of this mass of flesh and blood tissue, these alone are definitely not enough. So G3 must notify higher levels of this matter, and it itself has no right to make decisions on how to study this organization. After all, this was the first instance of their afterglow producing psychic individuals and clones. Even if a clone psyker is not produced, it is just a body tissue of the clone. But the first example is the first example and holds considerable value. Therefore, after apologizing to Hui Wang, G3 asked Hui Hui to exit the connection and asked Hui Hui to keep it confidential. It needs to reach out to senior management to decide what to do next. Under normal circumstances, if Hui Wang is an individual with normal afterglow, then keeping this matter secret is naturally what it should do. But now, Hui Wang will only go to Qin Ming as soon as possible to tell the matter. After all, this is Qin Ming's clone showing psychic powers. And it is also part of the clone's body tissue. No matter how you look at this situation, even in brilliant eyes. It is very strange. It's best to notify as soon as possible. At this time, some time had passed since Qin Ming and Bai Quan had chatted. Qin Ming is studying a way to circumvent his ability to replenish spacecraft fuel. 
He wanted to try to directly use the transformation function to complete this idea. But nothing has been found that can be directly transformed or manufactured using fuel as a material. And the transported gaseous materials cannot be conveniently stored. Even for left-wing self-destruction ships. Fuel is generally only used as an additional filler for the space of the ship. Rather than a necessity. Therefore, he could only choose to use the method of transporting raw materials to supplement fuel. After several attempts he just made. Transferring the solid and liquid materials needed to make fuel is now a no-brainer. Of course, Chin Ming had actually transferred materials so many times before. And he already knew whether solid and liquid things could be transferred. But he just wanted to confirm again. But gaseous materials are different. They are much more troublesome than solid and liquid materials. Although Chin Ming's mind has changed now. He thinks that his ability can now produce spacecraft fuel. This method can be used to ignore the problem of difficult storage of gaseous materials. But Chin Ning is not the only one who needs to use fuel in the future. The actual use of gaseous materials is far more than fuel. Moreover, the spacecraft fuel itself is designed to be a very versatile fuel. In addition to being on the spaceship, it can also be used in various places in the colony. Therefore, under the premise that Chin Ning has plans to develop colonies in the future, batch transportation of fuel and gaseous materials has become something he must do. If Chin Ming chooses to manufacture the finished product directly around him, it is equivalent to doing manufacturing and transportation together. But you must know that as Chin Ming's spiritual power increases, he has mastered the most basic repair and transformation abilities from the beginning, which is the basis for Chin Ming to transport materials over long distances. The mental power consumed by these two methods of using psychic energy has been decreasing. This is not a decrease in proportion that Chin Ming feels due to the increase in his own mental power, but a real decrease in consumption. That's why Chin Ming had the confidence to provide material transportation for a colony by himself. But the manufacturing ability has not changed like this. At least not yet. The consumption of mental power is about five times that of the two basic abilities when Chin Ming first mastered psychic powers. That is at least 20 times more than it is now. If the two things were done at the same time, he would definitely not be able to supply the mental energy consumed by the production alone. Therefore, Chin Ning can only choose to transport raw materials. Even if the gaseous materials are difficult to preserve, he must do so. Tasks such as mass manufacturing that place a huge burden on mental energy still have to be left to professional industrial facilities. His psychic powers can only be used in emergencies at most. If he really has to rely on the extremely consuming manufacturing function to maintain the transportation of materials and the operation of the colony for a long time. Just think about this kind of thing. So Chin Ming was thinking. Can he modify it inside a large gas storage tank so that the modified gas can be stored in it? Anyway, he can extract the contents inside through the gas tank. As long as the gas can be stored, it makes no difference to him no matter where it is stored. Chin Ming thought about it for a while, but didn't expect there was anything wrong with this idea. So he just did it. The ability to create psychic objects out of thin air consumes many times more mental power than other abilities. But the effect is really useful. As long as there are enough materials stored around him or on the spacecraft he controls, he can manufacture them at will based on the technology he has mastered in his mind. There are no restrictions at all except mental power. Of course, Chin Ning would not use the materials on the Afterglow spacecraft he controlled to avoid exposing the situation of the Afterglow he controlled in advance. There are materials that he can use around him or on the ship in the pirate space station. Although during this period of time, because he was already dead, he did not let Lao Wu do anything to seek death, such as hunting pirates. But he can still collect some materials that are also used by repair shops through Lao Wu's help. So there will be no problem. Just like the materials used to make fuel. So Chen Ming made a cooling device he knew in the gas tank he just made. The interior of this device uses a liquefied gas needed to make fuel, which has a good effect in absorbing heat energy. When Chen Ming saw a long device filled with liquid appearing inside the transparent gas tank, he knew he had succeeded as long as he casually modified an openable opening on the cooling device, and then installed the remaining part inside the gas tank. Liquefied gas can leak directly from the inside of the device to the gas tank. And every time he repairs the cooling device in the future, the liquefied gas will fill the entire device again. And as the opening he modified opens, it will spread to the entire storage tank again. The mental energy consumed is much less than having to create fuel or such a cooling device every time. After confirming that there was no problem with the design, Chin Ming once again modified it on the spot and sent these things back to the pirate space station on the spot without leaving any trace. Of course, 
It means leaving no trace on the ground beside Chen Ming. There's nothing we can do if things like surveillance are recorded. Moreover, Chen Ming conducted such an experiment around him instead of on any ship he controlled. Because he actually wanted to show Yu Hui. Let them hurry up and analyze what his spiritual power can do. Maybe they thought that Chen Ming's spiritual power could continue to grow. So they slowed down his subsequent actions? Although Chen Ming also felt that there was a high probability that it was impossible. He would not do it until he made it clear. Anyway, the manufacturing capability itself was limited by the technology Chen Ming mastered. Like the transformation ability, it can basically only be used on spacecraft below destroyers. Or other non-combat aspects. As for Chen Ming, the only thing that really has strategic significance and can change the situation of a battle is the ability to repair. But Yu Wei has known about this ability for a long time. And there is no need to hide it. Therefore, Chen Ming now has a casual attitude towards revealing the abilities he possesses. Even if you know it, you still have to have countermeasures. As for what Yu Wei can call a countermeasure now, the most it can do is non-contact. But for now, it seems that non-contact countermeasures are meaningless. Chen Ming has spread the afterglow he controls throughout the afterglow star field. After Chen Ming tested his ability, he also plans to talk to his boss about handing over the top job at that time. The boss said that the ship has been sent to the pirate space station. But there is no detailed process for the handover. So this matter must be prepared first. Because Chen Ming would definitely be chased by Yu Hui. And he didn't want to hastily change boats and escape when he was being chased. And he can take advantage of this last period of preparation time to look for Bai Quan again. Because just after Chen Ming agreed to Bai Quan's request, he directly started investigating the Yu Hui battleship relying on the Yuhui individuals controlled by Chen Ming all over the Afterglow Star Field. He actually found the location of Yuhui's battleship. And there was even a new type of battleship that he had never seen before. In addition to the radiation level that he was fighting with the 14th Legion before, Chen Ming also discovered a capital ship that was being built in a galaxy and was tentatively named the New Star Unmanned Battlecruiser. Although the design and manufacturing process of this capital ship are fully closed management, and the various departments responsible for manufacturing are also isolated from each other. The information about the spacecraft is kept highly confidential. However, the production of a capital ship inevitably requires the transportation of a large amount of external materials. It was these Yuhui individuals responsible for material transportation who let Chen Ming know the news, and also knew the location of this new star shipyard. A giant shipyard. Chen Ming also quietly took a few photos using the afterglow entities mixed in, and instantly transferred them to his mule stage parked on the pirate space station by modifying the function of the storage module. After deleting the photo that Yu Wei had in hand that originally took the photo, Chen Ming read the storage module he had just transformed. It can be seen that the design of the new star is very distinctive. It is an X shaped like a section of intertwined genes. There are two huge slots in the upper right corner of the X for installing main weapons, while there are some slots in the upper left corner that are smaller than the main weapons but larger than the large weapons. Chen Ming couldn't see what the use was for a while. It can only be said that this is another asymmetric design. Chen Ming always felt that Tachyon technology liked this kind of asymmetrical beauty. No, it seemed that the spaceships designed by many companies had asymmetrical models. It can only be said that it is the afterglow of independence from humans. And it will still look like this even after going out. However, the asymmetric design itself is no problem in space. Such a design can bring about more complex changes in ship capabilities and does have some advantages in combat. However, it was not easy for Chen Ming to detect more specific information about this new starship. And even Hui Wang Lai wouldn't work in this regard. After all, Hui Wang had no reason to touch this ship for no reason. So in terms of intelligence, this new ship must be more difficult to obtain than the Radiant class. However, this is a capital ship that is under construction and has never appeared on any battlefield. The result of destroying it will definitely be greater than destroying the radiation level. With this as the goal, the greater the results Bai Quan can achieve. Chen Ming wrote down all the information about the new star. And it will be up to Bai Quan to make his own choice. Talk about it. Chen Ming suddenly discovered that many forces were designing their own capital ships recently. Not only Afterglow, but also from Sindar Company. The Conqueror class is the most obvious example. The government heard that it has also recently designed two battleships for logistics support. I just don't know if the military and Tachyon technology are there anymore. But that goes too far. Chen Ming still had to focus on the things in front of him. In fact, when he saw this giant shipyard, some thoughts came to his mind. 
like controlling this new star. Chapter 136 Experiment Although Chen Ming had this idea, but as for the difficulty, it can only be said to be no different from the open grab. The individuals responsible for manufacturing Yue cannot have contact with the outside world, and it is basically impossible for Chen Ming to control them. Strict isolation measures are also in place inside and outside the material transportation and management departments. Chin Ming didn't even know if being so strict was aimed at him. In short, he has indeed penetrated part of this place. But not completely. Overall, it looks like this, neither up nor down. It can be said that there is no opportunity to actually contact the new stars. And it's not just the difficulty of contact. Chin Ming also has other troublesome points that need to be dealt with. Even if he later successfully found an opportunity and sacrificed part of the afterglow individuals he controlled. He successfully contacted the battleship's module and connected to it. But from Chen Ming's inner feelings, controlling a battleship is still far from enough. Forcible control will only cause damage to the Yue body that helps Chen Ming control the battleship. And his own mental power will also be affected. As far as Chen Ming knows, although Yue's battleships are controlled by Alpha Class Yue like the cruisers, however, a battleship requires a very large amount of real-time calculations during battle. And individuals who have just reached the Alpha level will definitely not be able to do it. Only after you have been promoted to the Alpha level for a long time and have a greater increase in computing power can you control the capital ship. Even Hui Wang currently seems to be unqualified in controlling the battleship. Only the Alpha level Afterglow controlled by Chen Ming, which is located in the border star field between Afterglow and the Machine Tribe, may have a certain possibility but it is only a possibility. Capital ships and cruisers are simply not on the same scale. At the cost of losing an Alpha Class Afterglow, in exchange for controlling the Afterglow battleship with a high probability of failure. This is purely a loss to my grandma's family. Therefore, if Chin Ming had any idea in this regard, he was immediately dissuaded by the high price. And even if he wanted to control this new star indirectly by controlling the entire shipyard and the entire giant shipyard, he couldn't do it. Not to mention that different areas within the giant shipyard are also isolated. Let's just say that the giant shipyard itself is already larger than the battleship. So now, Chin Ming can only give up this tempting idea temporarily. First try to control the modules of the giant shipyard piece by piece. When the time comes, whether we will find a way to slowly and completely control the giant shipyard or help Bai Quan, we will see the specific situation at that time. Just when Chin Ming came up with such an idea, he immediately rejected it. Hui Wang suddenly took the initiative to contact Chen Ming through the emergency contact method he had discussed with him before. Chen Ming immediately focused his attention on Hui Wang and asked, What's the matter? I just received an order to remotely access a cloning research institute that is conducting experiments on your clones. The cloning experiment in the laboratory has entered the final stage. Your clone has been cultivated to the end. You need my help to select the final individual suitable for implanting your spiritual nerve. Oh! Chen Mingping replied calmly. It can only be said that even if he didn't know about this kind of thing, he would have guessed that Yu Hui was definitely doing it. But Hui Wang added again. Also, a special thing with psychic powers was successfully cloned in the laboratory. Chen Ming cheered up and asked. Thing? Isn't it a psychic clone? No. Part of its cloned body tissue has mutated and has psychic powers. It is more like some kind of psychic creature. Chen Ming couldn't understand what Hui Wang was saying but he immediately saw the picture of the cloning research institute that Hui Wang had preserved before. He felt nothing about the corpses pressing against his face in the cold storage, although the scene of the autopsy of the corpse almost made him tense up. As long as Chen Ming thought clearly that this was just a slap in his face, it would be over. However, when Chen Ming saw the deformed mass of flesh and blood tissue being taken out from the clone's chest, it was still beating slightly. Chen Ming really didn't hold back. Not only was he shocked by this picture, but he was also affected by an inexplicable emotion that suddenly arose for no reason. It was as if this mass of flesh and blood was a part of him. Although this is strictly speaking, it is the product of his genetic cloning after all. But this group of deformed flesh and blood tissue that was still moving slightly did not look like the same species as a normal human being like him, let alone any close relationship. Chin Ming suppressed his inner emotions and asked Hui Hui, So where is this research institute? Just underground. As soon as Hui Wang's words came out, Chen Ming subconsciously wanted to lower his head and look at the floor. But he immediately reacted and restrained this action. Brilliance obviously refers to the underground of his research institute. Chen Ming knew before that there was something underground in the research institute. 
But he didn't expect that in addition to his ectoplasm stone. There was actually a cloning laboratory underground. This was important news to him. Because of the feeling that the mass of flesh and blood tissue with spiritual fluctuations gave him. In addition to the instinctive aversion to such things as a human being. There was also an idea of wanting to actively contact it. Chen Ming's feeling has saved him and helped him several times. So this time, he chose to believe in this feeling. Chen Ming's mind immediately started thinking about how to go deep underground and find this mass of flesh and blood. Hui Wang added at this time. However, according to G3, the Above Ground Research Institute and the Underground Research Institute are separate, and they need to be entered and exited from other locations. The specific location is here. Brilliance marked a spot on the planet's topographic map, some distance away from the Institute. Fortunately, it's not too far away, and it's not unacceptable. But the more important point in what Hui Wang said is that, G3? It's here too? Yes. While it is monitoring you, it is also controlling this cloning laboratory, and its core is underground. A cold glint flashed in Chen Ming's eyes. He had not forgotten what G3 had done before. Although his psychic powers allow him to control G3, G3's situation is very special. It was impossible for Chen Ming to put it on the same level as other Yue individuals. At the same time, he is not willing and is not used to letting other conscious beings that can be regarded as living beings be his slaves. So G3 is still dead. Out of sight. Out of mind. Or maybe Chen Ming is thinking about whether he can try it. Is there any way to erase Yu Hui's memory and personality? Afterglow is life. Not rigid machinery. These abstract things also exist in them and are stored in their core. You should be able to try it. These thoughts flashed through Chen Ming's mind quickly. And then he remembered everything Hui Wang said. And then asked, Is there anything else? Not yet. I am currently asked to leave the Cloning Research Institute. And G3 is still reporting this organ and tissue that has psychic fluctuations to its superiors. The next steps must wait for orders from superiors. I will tell you as soon as possible if there are any special circumstances. Okay. Continue to pay attention. If you are still free, find a way to help me investigate some information about your capital ships. I will be useful. Clear. Hui Wang broke off private communication with Chen Ming. The work on the surface continued. And one day later, underground in the Institute, G3's ongoing investigation into psychic flesh and blood tissue has come to an end. In its database, the report recording this mass of flesh and blood has more than 10 pages more than the previous two pages. It can be said that its research on psychic flesh and blood tissue has reached the limit of what can be achieved with the equipment within the Institute, and it has now confirmed the nature of this mass of psychically deformed flesh and blood tissue, judging from the performance of all aspects of the data, rather than its previous speculation. It is indeed a psychic creature, rather than part of a psyker. However, although G3 has determined that the psychic energy of this psychic creature is a protective type of psychic energy, but so far, the specific psychic effects of this psychic creature are still unclear, and the specific objects it can protect are not clear either. Because protective type psychic powers want to confirm the specific effect, they must conduct dangerous tests. This mass of deformed flesh and blood tissue had barely survived the toxic reagents and low temperature freezing environment. A new stimulus is likely to kill it completely. However, at least for now, G3 has been able to confirm that the toxicity of the reagents it uses and the extreme low temperature can be confirmed as objects of psychic protection. As long as this mass of abnormal flesh and blood tissue is recultured for a period of time, it will have sufficient activity and vitality. G3 can extract samples from him and conduct acceptable and dangerous tests. Although it will still be very difficult to get accurate results by then. Because this mass of flesh and blood with psychic energy fluctuations only has the most basic reflex movements, which are the instinctive movements of the nervous system. It has no self-awareness at all and cannot help with psychic testing. But even so, G3 does not want to leave this to other individuals to study. Once the research on such a clone psychic individual yields results, the results will be epic making for their afterglow. However, after he reported the data yesterday, it was still waiting for a reply from the top management. The matter is ultimately not determined by it. Moreover, because Yue cannot become a psyker himself, although he has done some research on psionic powers, he is not in depth. So they are very concerned about finding ways to control psionic powers. They must take the psychic product of their first clone here very seriously. Therefore, the senior leaders of this afterglow star field still need to contact the large forces. Just like when I mentioned Ming, a psyker who had a profound influence on Yue. Therefore, 
The time required to prepare is naturally lengthened. However, one day after G3 reported the matter, it finally received the reply it had been waiting for. At the highest level of the Afterglow Star territory, several alpha-level Afterglows controlling the Klecka supercomputer directly sent orders about this group of psychic creatures. Reconfirm the condition of the psychic biological sample tentatively named Psychic Abnormal Myocardial Tissue to verify the accuracy of the data. Keep a copy of the recorded data of the entire cultivation process. At the same time, restore the cloning environment, repeat the cloning test, and try to replicate the process of generating the psychic creature. Psychic biological samples are temporarily stored and their activity needs to be ensured, waiting for subsequent units to receive them. This sample needs to be transported to the main star field for research. After completing Chen Ming's mission, the individual can apply to return to the main star field and join the research on psychic creatures. Such a long list of commands is quite acceptable for G3. The replica experiment is something that must be done by an individual. And it is the individual who personally made this psychic creature. So the task will definitely fall on his head. And when studying this psychic creature in the future, you will definitely not be able to avoid it. So G3 accepted the order. The deformed flesh and blood tissue whose vital signs had stabilized yesterday were isolated in a separate room in the Cloning Research Institute. At the same time, G3 also moved a cultivation cabin there, specifically to ensure its survival. In addition, during previous research, G3 also discovered that this mass of flesh and blood seemed to have some instinctive behaviors, such as craving for nutrients to restore its own previously damaged tissue cells. So G3 stored a large amount of mixed nutrient solution necessary for human survival in the culture chamber. After all, it was transformed from a part of the organs of a cloned human, and it would also need everything humans need. As long as the concentration is normal, there will be no problem. After completing these tasks, G3 began to restore the process of the previous cloning experiment based on the data records and video records of the previous experiments. Although the probability of success of the experiment itself is very low, so low that it can be ignored. Because just because the stem cells used to cultivate clones are not the same is already an unsolvable problem. Therefore, the re-engraving experiment G3 did not think it would be successful. But it continued normally and made two copies at the same time. Not only to complete the task, but also to have a real hope. As for one of the experimental materials, G3 used the DNA material that Xin Ming left behind when he lived in their factory some time ago to clone stem cells which was the default configuration. The other one was that it extracted an extremely small amount of cells from the distorted blood and flesh tissue. After examination, it was confirmed that these cells were the same as those of the normal Chinning clone. Stem cells are cloned from ordinary cells of the distorted flesh and blood tissue. And then the subsequent experimental operations are carried out. This can also be regarded as a means to improve the success rate. The next thing to do is not troublesome which is to designate all the stem cells of the two experimental products to the heart organ for differentiation. At the same time, it is also strictly controlling the cultivation environment of the clones to be the same as before. Next, we only need to wait for abnormal conditions to appear, and this experiment will be considered a successful start. But among the batch of clones that produced this deformed mass of flesh and blood, only one clone had a heart aberration problem. Others either developed normally or had problems elsewhere which basically did not affect the heart. Therefore, whether a heart malformation occurs or not can only depend on probability. Now, each of the two ongoing experiments has a standard 50 clones as the final output. In the case where G3 only needs to see whether it can grow a deformed heart, but does not need to completely grow the clone to maturity. It only takes a few hours to get the results. However, in this first batch of 100 clones, under the control of the stem cell directional differentiation inducer in the cloning experimental process. None of them showed any distortion when differentiating into myocardial tissue. All have completed differentiation normally according to the schedule process in the original plan, and can continue with the next stage of differentiation of other body tissues at any time. In other words, all the first batch of experimental products were considered failures. Naturally, their results can only be disposed of by all injection reagents. Of course, this time G3 still maintains a certain degree of attention to these waste products to avoid the same situation happening again. G3 also received a reply quickly after uploading the results of this batch of experiments. The higher-ups asked it to conduct experiments again until all the materials stored in the institute were used up. And additional materials will be sent later. And they will also take away the psychic flesh and blood tissue as samples at that time. 
the materials themselves don't require much time to prepare. But it is a troublesome matter to send the sample back across the entire human empire to the main star field of Afterglow, while also ensuring the survival of the sample during the entire process. So they still need some time to prepare. G3 had nothing to say and continued to accept orders as usual, in addition to continuing to monitor Chen Ming on a daily basis. Conducting cloning experiments has become what it has always needed to do. It quickly replaced the nutrient solution and various additives in the culture chamber that had produced a lot of waste products and started the second batch of experiments. Soon, the result was a natural failure. G3 didn't have any extra thoughts, apart from taking a moment to take a look at Chen Ming, who had been holding a terminal and looking at it. G3 continued to execute the next experiment according to the order. Until two days later, among the sixth batch of experimental samples, G3 finally waited for a clone, and in his body, heart abnormality appeared again. The total number of clones produced by G3 has exceeded at least 500. In the end, only two of them, including the previous one, had cardiac aberrations, with a probability of 0.4%. This is actually a very high probability. But obviously this is just the probability of heart distortion. And the possibility of psychic energy is not that high. The second individual with cardiac aberrations did not experience the same psychic fluctuations as the previous clone. But the steps of the cloning experiment are not yet complete. The individual before G3 was cultivated until it was close to the final stage before being abandoned. During the cultivation process of the previous clone, it believed that there was still a possibility of repairing this clone. Therefore, when it is discovered that the heart is deformed, the first step is to repair part of it with surgery and then continue to cultivate it. It wasn't until the clone was fully grown into a human that it was completely determined that there was no possibility of repairing the heart malformation so he was given up. So now, G3 needs to continue to cultivate in order to ensure the same process. Wait, that's not right. Just as G3 was preparing to continue cultivating this deformed individual individually, it suddenly noticed a jump on the psychic wave detector next to it. The instrument detected psychic fluctuations. And it's not the mass of distorted flesh and blood tissue placed elsewhere. The psychic energy fluctuations are emitted from the slightly deformed heart in the training cabin that has just completed the cultivation stage. As an afterglow, G3 also felt a surge of excitement for the first time in a long time. It immediately recorded the data of the cultivation process and prepared to report to superiors. However, suddenly another wave of psychic energy came out from another clone. And it also came from the heart. The other clone's culture chamber monitoring equipment immediately displayed the scanned data. This body had been cultivated before and had already entered the final stage of cultivation. It was originally intended to be used as a candidate clone for Chen Ming's chilling nerve transplantation. His originally intact heart suddenly developed a strange deformity, just as deformed as that mass of distorted flesh and blood tissue. Immediately afterwards, the third psychic wave appeared, and this happened in another training cabin. Then the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the hearts of more than a dozen clones were all malformed. It was clear that just a few seconds ago, their hearts were very healthy and intact. G3 felt the danger in this strange situation. It immediately interrupted the power supply of the life support systems of all culture chambers, injected a large amount of toxic reagents into the interior of all chambers, and at the same time sent reporting information to the outside world. However, the power outage was of no use to the things that had been formed, and the toxic reagent did not have the effect it should have. Those deformed hearts were not affected at all, and there seems to be some kind of resonance between the more frequent and denser spiritual energy fluctuations they emit. The fluctuations in psychic energy became more and more violent. The external communication device of the Clone Research Institute was seriously interfered by the fluctuations in psychic energy. And G3's information could not be sent out at all. It could only deal with this problem personally. But in just 10 seconds, the hearts of these twisted and deformed clones seemed to be due to sharing the same genes from Chen Ming, as well as being under the influence of the psychic fluctuations that are now resonating. Their own heartbeat frequencies are also beginning to converge, starting from chaotic rates that vary in frequency to becoming unified. It was as if a dozen, no, dozens of hearts grew out of the Cloning Research Institute, and their blood vessels were suddenly connected together, flesh and blood tissue intertwined with veins and arteries, forming a huge, malformed heart. This scene has a weird feeling that G3 can't describe. This was the first time in its life that it felt such an emotion, and worse. An unknown fault suddenly occurred in the Institute's power system. And the entire Institute's lighting system was completely paralyzed. 
the heavy heartbeat, and the psychic energy fluctuations caused by the heartbeat echoed in the dark laboratory. Only the independent security line is still running, allowing G3 to see everything in the Institute through surveillance. At this moment, G3 heard the sound of the glass of the culture cabin being hit. The first deformed heart and the subsequent cloning experiments it carried out had already started to move on its own, violently and continuously hitting the culture chamber. Its heart muscle tissue was damaged due to the impact, and a large amount of blood gradually dyed the liquid in the entire culture chamber red. Even if the monitoring system has night vision and thermal imaging effects, it is difficult to see clearly what is going on in the culture chamber. One could only vaguely see a twisted mass of monster trying to break free from its cage. Fortunately, the strength of the culture chamber is very high, and what the newly cultivated aberrant heart does seems to be in vain. But then, the sound of flesh being torn to pieces reached G3. The chest of another clone whose heart was affected and became deformed was torn open, with flesh and ribs protruding out. A group of twisted, psionic creatures emerged from it, which was exactly the same as the psychically distorted flesh and blood tissue that was first discovered. It has a more powerful cellular tissue structure than the deformed heart that has just differentiated. Just one impact that spilled a large amount of blood left conspicuous cracks on the culture chamber. G3 immediately activated the security system in the Institute. A large number of weapons instantly appeared on several robots that were still undergoing cultivation work. And several fixed turrets were also dug out of different walls inside the Institute. Start cleaning the inside of the culture chamber directly. Lasers, flames, bullets, and flesh splashed across the vast, dark cloning laboratory. These newly born distorted flesh and blood tissues are still very fragile. Even as psychic creatures, they themselves cannot withstand the firepower coming from all directions. But if you look carefully, you will find that some of the splashed flesh and blood are still moving. They moved and seeped into the cracks in the isolation doors between different rooms in the Institute. It is very tempting to completely block the direction of the room where G3 abandoned the abandoned clones, as well as the direction of the distorted flesh and blood tissue at the beginning. G3 had no time to stop all the scattered flesh and blood. In the freezer, signs of life activity began to appear on a large number of dead bodies. There are even some clones that have died long ago and have been frozen for an unknown period of time. And the same situation as the clones in the culture chamber outside appears. There was a bloody hole in the corpse's chest. And the heart inside was missing. Only the traces of blood left on the vents in the corners of the cold room could tell where they had gone. G3 lost control of the Institute almost instantly. This is true even if there are a large number of armed robots. Because at this time, the hearts of all the clones in the entire culture room have broken through the body that should have them. In a corner of the cultivation room that the robot cannot reach, the muscle tissue of the torn apart deformed heart began to aggregate, and granulation adhered between the fragments. A huge piece of meat that had no discernible shape. No, it couldn't be said that it had no discernible shape because as long as you look down from above, you can see a huge deformed heart growing on the floor of the Institute. What G3 felt just now has become a reality. The huge deformed heart suddenly started beating again. And at the moment it beat, violent psychic energy fluctuations swept across the entire Institute. All the moving robots were shut down, wrapped in, infiltrated, and shut down by the distorted flesh and blood tissue they were gathering together. The Institute was completely destroyed and inside the room where G3's alpha-level core is installed, which is the most heavily guarded in the entire institute. I don't know when it started, but some blood gradually seeped into the originally smooth ceiling. Blood dripped on the silent alloy box that stored the live stone and whispering stone in the room. Then a mass of flesh and blood fell from the ceiling. There was a snap. With the sound of blood splashing, the box was swallowed up by the wriggling flesh and blood. The next moment, a drop of blood fell on the core of G3. Chapter 137 Evacuation Chen Ning was awakened by the sound in his ears. When he first woke up and his head was still a little groggy, he thought he was hallucinating. But when he became more awake, he realized that what he heard was real, as if it was a heavy beating sound coming from an abyss deep underground. And this beating sound is also accompanied by a dangerous, but also full of close feeling spiritual energy fluctuations. Chen Ming woke up instantly, and a thought flashed through his mind. What happened? He quickly looked at the time, discovered it was 5 o'clock in the morning earth time, since he was the only living person in the institute in Shashar. A hamster needed to rest. The living area was still dark at this time. This adds a bit of a weird atmosphere to the sounds coming from deep underground. Chen Ming was not frightened by such an environment. When the entire institute 
was shaking due to the vibration caused by the beating sound. He calmly turned on the lights in the living area and immediately tried to sense his lying stone that was underground and seemed to be the source of the sound. The liar stone, which could still be clearly perceived deep underground before, now seemed very blurry to Chen Ming, as if it was separated by a heavy layer. Has a problem. Chen Ming picked up Xiao Shir, who was still lying on his pillow, looking like he was still asleep, and stuffed it into his arms. He stood up and walked towards the central hall of the institute. After Chin Ming walked out of the living area, he also found that the robots that were staying in various corners of the hall and that he usually kept up with at a distance when there was any movement were all gone. He stood there as if he had lost control. Something bad seems to have happened at the institute. Chin Ming shouted directly. Brilliant! He waited for two seconds, but didn't get any response. G3! Chin Ming shouted again, but also received no reply. There was only a heavy sound in his ears, and the vibration that accompanied the sound. Upon seeing this, Chin Ming directly used his psychic energy to contact Hui Hui. This time, Wang Wang responded very promptly. Mr. Chin, is there anything going on so early? Question mark. Didn't you see the situation in the institute? Hui Wang noticed the emotion contained in Chin Ming's words and realized that there might be a problem on Chin Ming's side. It immediately explained, I still have work every day in other galaxies and the institute does not stay closed 24 hours a day. Even if I want to, G3 will definitely not allow it. So I will only maintain the signal connection with the institute when you are awake during your normal schedule. So I don't know yet what's going on at the institute. There is indeed no problem with the brilliant statement. So Chen Ming did not struggle with this issue. And he did not have time to struggle. Then take a look at what's going on here. Then ask G3 if it's dead. Receive. But immediately, Hui Wan said, no, I can't access the Institute's network now. G3 didn't give you permission? No, there is no signal. The communication network is disconnected or interfered with. I am still trying to connect. Hui Wang's words completely confirmed Chen Ming's guess. So he immediately said to Hui Wang, No need to try. There are violent psychic fluctuations here that interfere with the communication signal. Go and find a way to inform your senior management. There must be something wrong here in the Institute. Hui Wang temporarily stopped communicating with Chen Ming. Chen Ming was alone again. And the dull beating sound that kept echoing inside the institute also made him feel a tightness in his chest. And the beating sound seemed to be gradually becoming consistent with Chen Ming's heartbeat frequency. The feeling of vibration is also becoming clearer. There must be something directly below the institute. But as far as Chen Ming knew, there were only a few spaces underneath the research institute to store giant machines. Plus the cloning research institute deep underground. When the giant mechanical bodies jumped out before, Chen Ning saw that there were some supporting maintenance and repair facilities where they were stored. But obviously, these facilities are definitely not the source of the strange heartbeat and psychic energy fluctuations now. Then the answer is obvious. Something must have happened in the cloning institute. It seemed that Hui Wang had just told him two days ago that the cloning research institute had cloned a psychic thing. And at that time, he also watched the video that Hui Wang had preserved. Chin Ming saw with his own eyes the psychic flesh and blood tissue being taken out from the chest of his clone. Wait, chest? Heart? When the distorted mass of flesh and blood tissue was taken out, Chin Ming's attention was completely attracted by its twisted appearance. And he didn't pay any attention to what it was. At the same time, I didn't notice its instinctive twitching at that time. It was actually more like beating. It was a deformed heart. Not some deformed ordinary flesh and blood. Chin Ming completely reacted at this moment. What's beating underground in the institute, making violent sounds and vibrations, is the heart. After thinking of this, an inexplicable panic suddenly enveloped him. Chin Ming felt that he could no longer stay in the institute, and he had to leave immediately. But right now, Hui Wan contacted you again and said, We have sent a spacecraft to get close to the research institute, but the signal is still unavailable, and we cannot contact you directly. I suggest you leave the research institute first. As long as you don't fly out of the planet's surface. Other afterglows won't attack you. New. No. What Hui Wang said coincided with what Chen Ming had just thought. Chen Ming immediately took off his legs and ran outside the institute. And since he was about to leave, Chen Ming simply did something on the way out. He didn't do much. Just touched all the equipment he could come into contact with and marked them all. Including the institute's security system. Various robots. And monitoring systems that he usually has little access to. I don't know whether these equipments are used to protect Chen Ming or the Institute itself. They are scattered throughout the Institute. 
you can easily come into contact with them on the way out. In this way, he can use his ability to take away these devices at any time in the future. As long as he finds a suitable colony, he can build a new research institute on the spot. The entire process was completely controlled by Chen Ming due to the monitoring equipment. And now that the research institute is isolated from outside signals, no trace of evidence will be left behind. Besides, Chen Ming is just marking it now, which does not mean that he will take the things away now. It will not have any impact at all. So much so that Chen Ning wanted to give away the most valuable chilling nerve extraction device underground at this time. It is achieved by relying on his transformation ability, which is the only way to carry out transformation that does not require him to thoroughly master the relevant transformation technology. When Chen Ning's transformation ability is carried out, he only needs to replace parts, and Chen Ming happens to have the physical parts to be replaced. The modification ability only requires Chen Ming to know which parts to replace and he does not need to understand the more complicated technology inside. The situation is the same when the concept of components is enlarged to equipment. Chin Ning can directly use the physical chilling neural extraction device as part of the shipboard equipment and directly modify it onto any of his spaceships that has free space. And his psychic energy is ineffective against anything alive. And only the effective part will be taken away when materials are transferred. So he doesn't have to worry about his psychic powers causing those things underground to spread. But Chen Ming thought about it, and still didn't do it, because it is not sure whether the underground monitoring equipment continues to work. Before the final day of Chen Ming's plan arrives, it is better to hide this critical ability that directly does not require spacecraft control equipment. Let's forget about the equipment for now. He only had one life. But Yu Hui definitely found more than one piece of equipment from the ruins of another civilization. Chen Ming quickly sorted out the thoughts in his mind, and left the institute without any regrets including the time spent touching the equipment and running around. It took less than two minutes in total. It can only be said that the security system monitoring systems of the Institute are basically a complete set. If one place is touched by Chen Ming, it is equivalent to the entire system being marked by Chen Ming, which is very convenient. However, in these short two minutes, Chen Ming's sense of danger and panic became more and more intense. He did not dare to stay any longer. So he sped up his movements and created a protective suit on himself as he ran towards the door of the dome outside the institute. At the same time, he also replaced the buffalo class with a military weapon he randomly selected from his own reserves. When the power grid of Buffalo's spaceship was almost overloaded, the dome door without afterglow control and protection was barely blown open. In the fierce airflow, the buffalo class picked up Chen Ming and boarded the spacecraft. The spacecraft rose instantly taking Chen Ming completely away from the research institute. As the vibrations on the ground disappeared and the heartbeat in his ear stopped, Chen Ming's chest tightness was relieved to a considerable extent in an instant. Now there is only the spiritual energy fluctuation that gives him complicated feelings that still appears periodically. But just psychic energy fluctuations were nothing to Chen Ming, who had been exposed to extreme psychic energy pulses like the live stone for a long time. Just when Chen Ming was thinking about where the buffalo class should go next, he suddenly saw an afterglow engineering ship approaching in the distant sky. However, this engineering ship had no intention of attacking Chen Ming. It seemed that it just wanted to land at the research institute. Chen Ming tried briefly to send a communication request, but the interference to communication signals from the psychic fluctuations near the research institute still existed, and the range of existence was still large. No way to make contact at all. Moreover, the flight trajectory of this spacecraft is quite fixed and rigid. It should be driving automatically by relying on the system inside the spacecraft. There is a high probability that it is meaningless to contact it. I don't know what the use of landing such a spaceship that should have been lost to you away. And just when the engineering ship was approaching a certain distance from the research institute, suddenly, an electromagnetic pulse swept across the perimeter of the institute. Accompanied by a surge of psychic energy, the Buffalo class driven by Chen Ming and the engineering ship he just saw were both affected by the electromagnetic pulse. Fortunately, Chen Ming reacted very quickly and repaired the buffalo level damage in an instant. The spacecraft swayed in the sky twice before returning to normal. But the engineering ship obviously did not receive such treatment. Under the influence of the electromagnetic pulse, sparks erupted throughout the spacecraft. The engine stalled, and it crashed directly next to the research institute. The quality of Yuhui's engineering ship is still good, and the height of the engineering ship was not too high when it fell. After such a fall, only the bottom layer and the bottom armor on both sides were partially damaged. Overall, it doesn't seem like a big problem. Moreover, 
The direction in which this engineering ship came happened to be the direction of the entrance and exit of the Cloning Research Institute underground that Hui Huang had told him before. So Chen Ming took advantage of the situation and landed next to the engineering ship. Chen Ming quickly stepped off the spaceship after confirming that there was no danger around him. Before he felt the heartbeat and vibration that caused chest tightness. He quickly touched the engineering ship and then immediately returned to the Buffalo class. The Buffalo class took off again and Chen Ming relaxed a little and looked at the situation of the engineering ship. Just as he thought, there was no afterglow individual on the spacecraft and it was purely operating according to the set sailing plan. In the spacecraft's computer, Chen Ning found the only document. It looks like this document is for him. After all, Yu Hui knew about his abilities and knew that he would definitely be able to access the spaceship. As long as he comes into contact with the spacecraft, he will definitely be able to see the documents. As for the content of this document, basically just talking a lot of nonsense. The most important thing, what happened underground in the Institute, was not explained clearly at all. It was not as much as Hui Wang told him. In short, what Yu Wei means is that the research institute is now more dangerous. But they are currently unable to investigate and rescue this area that is disturbed by powerful psychic fluctuations. Chen Ning can only find a way to withdraw on his own. Chen Ning knew that high-intensity psychic fluctuations would have an impact on Yu Wei, causing redundant data to appear in their logic modules, and ultimately leading to Yu Wei's death. Therefore, Yu Hui was unable to rescue him and could only let him run away. This situation was within his expectation. It was the fact that the prison guards asked the prisoners to run to a safe place that made Chen Ning a little uncomfortable. In short, the withdrawal must be withdrawn. Chen Ning will not do anything seeking death for no reason. Continuing to stay at the institute is obviously seeking death. But having said that, Chen Ning still wants to find out what happened underground in the institute. Especially since the source of this incident was himself. It made him want to find out the whole story even more. Coupled with the malformed heart that fell from his clone and the psychic wave that exuded a sense of danger and intimacy. They are all attracting Chen Ming to understand and deal with this matter. And if Chen Ming continues to fly out in the direction of the crashed engineering ship, he will fly out for a while. You will inevitably see the entrance and exit of the cloning research institute first, and then go outside where the interference underground of the research institute cannot affect. So no matter how he looks at his subsequent actions, it is impossible to bypass the clone research institute. He will definitely witness the situation in the Clone Research Institute with his own eyes. Now that everything is like this, Chen Ming will take advantage of the situation. He just took the spaceship that came to his door. After being quickly repaired through its capabilities, the engineering ship took off again and caught up with the Buffalo class. Before the second wave of electromagnetic pulse arrived from the underground of the Institute, it flew out of the area around the Institute and flew towards Chen Ming's target. But surprisingly, the communication interference had disappeared before Chen Ming saw the entrance and exit of the underground cloning research institute. These psychic fluctuations that interfere with communication signals seem to only exist underground in the institute and do not affect the entrance and exit areas of the institute. Chen Ming just discovered that the communication signal returned to normal and the communication came through brilliantly. It asked in a business-like manner, Mr. Chen Ming, how are you doing now? Chen Ming thought about it for a moment, then said angrily, if you think it's okay for me to be woken up by some unknown thing you guys did before dawn, then that would be good. Hui Wang knew that Chen Ming was not targeting it. So he was very patient and wanted to try to appease Chen Ming. Of course, privately, it was still reporting to Chen Ming in real time the information Yu Wei had investigated. However, it only took a few minutes before and after. And what Hui Wang knew was no different from before. At most, they know that their senior officials are already arranging follow-up plans to investigate and deal with the Cloning Research Institute. So Chen Ming took advantage of this time and quickly speeded up. On the surface, he was rushing away from the Research Institute. But in fact, he was looking for the entrance and exit of the Cloning Research Institute. So that after the communication was restored, Yu Wei wouldn't let him run around. But Chen Ming actually doesn't need to look for it. Because he had just flown out for a short time. He had already seen an extremely bright blood-red biological tissue suddenly appearing on the gray and uneven ground. Although this mass of flesh and blood tissue does not have any psychic energy fluctuations, its current location and its sudden appearance here illustrate its specialness. Then under this huge mass of biological tissue, there is a high probability that it is the passage leading to the research institute. When seeing this mass of flesh and blood tissue, Chen Ning took a few photos of it and at the same time completely confirmed the idea in his mind. 
sure enough, there was something wrong with Yu Huey's cloning experiment. And it was most likely caused by the group of psychically distorted flesh and blood tissue in the video that Hui Hui showed him a few days ago. Well, since the Clone Research Institute now has all the news, and Hui Wang said before that G3 is also down there, it is very likely that something has happened. The loss of an Alpha class afterglow and attrition in such a non large scale battle are also very rare. Although G3 does still have the possibility of survival. However, Chin Ming looked at the squirming mass of flesh and blood tissue on the ground not far away that squeezed out of the underground passage and continued to grow, completely squeezing away the surrounding gray soil and showing extremely strong vitality. Chin Ming felt that there was not much hope. The surface is crowded like this, and it should be even more serious underground. And it was this scene that made Chin Ming know why cloning experiments were completely banned within the Empire. Now there is a high probability that there is no alpha level afterglow here. But if it were placed on the human side, the loss would most likely be a high level research team. Even more than one. Some research institutes are not necessarily separate buildings, but share a building with other different research institutes, which will definitely cause greater harm. But what exactly happened down here remains a mystery so far. At this time, an engineering ship with an afterglow appeared in Chen Ming's field of vision again. Although this is an engineering ship, it is visible to the naked eye that a weapon is installed on the front side of the ship and it is also aimed straight at the location of the Underground Cloning Research Institute. After completely locking on the target, the engineering ship opened fire. Chen Ming Wang could see with the naked eye that there was a line in the barrel of the engineering ship connected to the thing it fired. Using the Buffalo-class sensor, Chen Ming could see clearly what exactly the engineering ship was launching. It's a steel nail as thick as an arm. It went straight into the ground. It penetrated countless layers of soil and rock and inserted into the research institute. Hui Wang explained to Chen Ning just right. It emits a data beacon anchor point. After a hit, data inside all devices covered by its signal coverage can be read. The wire connection at the tail can help it resist the interference of the Institute's psychic waves. It is usually used in the rescue of underground industrial facilities and is more valuable. It is a test product that was just developed some time ago, and it is the design idea I proposed. Currently, all planets with underground workplaces in the star field have prepared this kind of thing. Chen Ming said casually. I guess it was the incident at the mining farm that gave you this idea. Yes. Fortunately, Hui Wang didn't come up with this thing before. Otherwise, if Yu Wei came up at that time, he would have made such a thing and entered the mining site that he blew up. Then Chen Ming's ability will be exposed in advance. And all plans will be ruined. But there is a downside to this thing. Because it is forcibly shot deep into the ground. This means it will most likely cause damage where it hits. If it is just for rescue, Something that may cause secondary damage will definitely not be used under normal circumstances. There must be more optimized products before they can be launched. The reason why they are bringing out something that is only in the testing stage now is probably because the situation is very wrong. And Yu Hui urgently needs such a thing to help them obtain information. But Xin Ning felt that this thing seemed to have some potential as a weapon. And he could talk to Hui Hui later. Of course now is not the time. After the engineering ship launched the beacon into the institute, the engineering ship had already begun to read the data of various equipment underground in the institute and sent these data directly to the second responsible individual of the current research institute, which is Hui Wang. However, this process ended quickly because the beacon was suddenly destroyed by something in the institute. But fortunately, the results of the investigation have been obtained. Hui Wang showed all those data files and so on to Chen Ming. From the time G3 cultivated a second malformed heart, to the hearts of other clones breaking out, and then to the hearts of those corpses starting to show signs of life, and the flesh and blood tissue that appeared in the room where the G3 was finally installed completely connected the whole thing. The situation has become obvious. There was an accident in the experiment, and all the clones that Yu Wei had originally reserved turned into the seedbed of this psychic creature formed from the deformed human heart. Jin Ming now understands better why the Empire banned cloning experiments so strongly. If this happens, it's definitely not a scientific research building's problem. It is a problem for the entire research park, the entire city, and even the entire planet. If the people dealing with this matter are slow to respond, the planet may completely fall. Moreover, these things are psychic creatures, although it can be seen from the fact that several of them were easily killed through fire before G3. They are relatively fragile individually, but once the numbers increase or there are no targeted measures, it is also very scary. Moreover, 
the number of psychers has always been relatively small. So it is impossible to say that every place is taken into consideration. It would be normal to be too late to deal with these clone psychic creatures. I'm afraid something similar has happened within the Empire before. And the ultimate loss must be difficult to accept. As for what specifically happened during the cloning experiments in the human empire, and whether it is the same as what Yu Wei is encountering now, these two questions have yet to be answered. But Xin Ming has already sent the photos he just took to his boss by modifying the storage module. If the boss knows about this, there should be a result soon. As for now, Xin Ming asked Hui Hui, So what are you going to do? Chapter 138 Changes Because Xin Ming asked this question directly in the communication channel. Hui Wang replied directly in the communication channel. We are still discussing the future plans and it will take some time. Please wait patiently. However, in private, Hui Wang gave a more detailed reason through Qin Ming's spiritual power. Because the Qilin nerve extraction device underground in the institute is something that the top management absolutely does not want to lose at the moment. So our senior management is considering whether to directly destroy the entire cloning research institute including the equipment or to find a way to rescue the equipment and deal with the problem later. The topic we are currently discussing is more inclined to the latter one. Yu Hui's approach made Chen Ming, a human being, unable to help but say, It's now time. You all know the reason why the Empire banned cloning experiments in the past. But you don't want to deal with it quickly. So you are still struggling with this? And just when Chen Ming said these words, he always had a feeling in his heart. Even the thoughts and situations of Yu Hui's senior management may have happened before. Maybe in the past, the human empire's cloning experiments also had problems. Due to the existence of this kind of thing, all the experimenters died. But just because the value of the instruments and equipment was too high, so the relevant person in charge has been wondering whether these psionic creatures should be destroyed together with the equipment. Eventually the situation became uncontrollable. Although this is just Jin Ming's guess. As of now, if the problem that cloning would eventually cause was only as big as the huge heart in front of him, then as long as it could be dealt with in time, it shouldn't lead to a ban on cloning experiments in the entire empire. Therefore, either the past situation is what he thought and the situation is uncontrollable. Either the cloning experiment has more dire consequences. But what the specific situation is depends on whether someone who is familiar with history and has a certain status can verify it. However, there was no movement from the boss for the time being. He was probably sleeping. It looked like he would have to wait for a while. Chen Ming didn't care now. Yu Hui's attitude had nothing to do with him. Anyway, if something went wrong, it wouldn't be him who would suffer, but Yu Hui himself. Hui Wang actually had similar ideas to Chen Ming. It also knew that it had to deal with this kind of thing quickly. But the top management obviously had their reasons for still struggling. So Hui Wang explained directly to Chen Ming. Maybe it's because the only valuable thing we have now is the Qilin nerve extraction device. Currently we do not have a second extraction device. And even if we did, it would not be possible to send it to this star field again. If the only extraction device is damaged during the processing of this incident, it will mean that we have lost the opportunity to obtain your spiritual nerve. We have been preparing for a long time. And we even had two large-scale battles involving capital ships for you and the human fleet. Although we won both battles, the losses in the battle were real. With so many losses ahead, we cannot give up this equipment casually. Chen Ming knew the truth, but he couldn't understand it at all. Don't tell other Yue what I'm going to say next. Just mention it casually as if I can't stand it. Receive. Jin Ming took a breath and said to Wei Wang, Although I am in conflict with Yue now, I still have to say that things should be prioritized. The reasons that allow the human empire to completely ban cloning experiments have been put in front of you. Are you really not afraid of problems? Now we are trying to delay the time until the second chilling nerve extraction device is delivered? Wei Wang continued to follow a standard after Wei idea and said to Jin Ming, Just continuing to delay time is unacceptable to us. If we lose the Qilin neural extraction device, we will only have two options left. One is to use violent means to kill you directly and completely cut off the thought of spiritual enlightenment. The other is to imprison you using equipment such as a cryosleep chamber and continue to store it or transport it directly to the main star field until we find the second Qilin nerve extraction device. The former method would cause too much damage to us and the latter method would cause too many accidents. You and we have an openly hostile relationship now and I'm just the grease on the wheel, making the daily communication between you and us less rigid. And we all know that you can't give up the chance of survival and wait for death just because of my existence. The reason you didn't commit suicide must be because you have more ideas. We both have to benefit from each other. 
but we can't directly conflict because time is running out. Although it is still unclear to our senior leaders what you have prepared before the final moment arrives. But they know that as long as they continue to delay, some problems will occur. We want concluded by saying, it is precisely because of your existence that our senior leaders must not give up on this chilling nerve extraction device. When Shen Ning was thinking before, he was thinking according to normal human thinking. And he did ignore the fact that he himself was also a problem for Yu Hui. If Sunset were to include his influence, then their behavior would barely make sense. If cloning technology is banned because of its very serious consequences for the entire empire, then Shen Ning also has a similar effect on the entire afterglow. Therefore, the troubles caused by the cloning technology developed by Chen Ning and Yu Hui are actually the same in a sense. At least the end result may be the same, with the afterglows all doomed. So in these two matters, Yu Hui prefers Chen Ming. After all, humans have used cloning technology before, and they are still alive and well, which shows that there must be ways to deal with the consequences of cloning technology. But Yu Wei had never heard that humans had ever encountered a psychic who could completely control the human group. So when it comes to which of the two things is more difficult to solve, Shen Ming, who has never had a similar precedent, is indeed more troublesome. However, Hui Wang suddenly added, However, it cannot be completely ruled out that our senior management chose to deal with this psychic creature. If they really give up on the chilling nerve extraction device, there is a high probability that they will attack you in advance. Shen Ming recalled it and said, I remember I had asked you before. Yes, I have been preparing in this way. That's okay. Before you take action, you will definitely be able to understand the situation faster than me and jump to the rescue. My life is now in your hands. Hui Wang did not directly say that Chen Ning could take over the Hui Wang class cruiser it controlled at any time. It could hear Chen Ning's words and said it casually. It also knew that Chen Ning's life was always in his own hands. After a moment of silence, Hui Wang spoke again. I just received the order. Our senior management has decided to keep the chilling nerve extraction device and will not take action against you for the time being. The opinion of the top management is that the acquisition of the second chilling nerve extraction device and the future are too unstable. We must focus on what we have now, not what we will have in the future. Chin Ming was noncommittal and asked. So what are you going to do? We currently have two phases of planning. In the first stage, Try to send robots to clean the flesh and blood tissue at the entrance and exit of the Cloning Research Institute and enter the Cloning Research Institute through passages or additional roads. After reacquiring the Chilling Nerve Extraction Device, use powerful weapons to cleanse the ground. If it fails, move to the second stage and send a cruise-class mining ship into the planet to destroy the surface. Clean up all the soil and rock layers above the underground cloning research institute to facilitate follow-up weapons to clean up the cloning research institute. Doing so would risk destroying the chilling nerve extraction device. So it will only be executed if the first phase of the plan fails. This plan sounds fine. What about your mission? Due to the interference of psychic fluctuations in the research institute, any robot or spacecraft must be controlled by our individuals personally. But you are still here. You are a threat to all afterglow individuals and forcing you to leave now is not the right thing to do. So the task given to me by the senior management is to let you know the danger below through communication and let you get out of here. Okay. Hui Yu's words made Chen Ning think about it seriously. Although he really wants to find out what happened in the cloning laboratory. But if he continues to stay here and interfere with Yu Hui's work, it will definitely cause conflict between him and Yu Hui. It would not be a good thing if he broke with Yu Hui early because of himself. Even if Chen Ming can change the time of departure at any time and let Hui Wang pick him up, Bai Quan's preparations are not so easy to change. Bai Quan would need to mobilize tens of thousands of people and at least two capital ships. It is impossible to change the time just by changing the time. There must be at least two or three days of buffering. And it is definitely too late now. Besides, this is something Chen Ming and Bai Quan agreed on in advance. And if Bai Quan finally achieves victory, the benefits he will get will be much more than what he will eventually pay to Chen Ming, which is equivalent to Bai Quan owing him a favor. This was something they had tacitly understood when they talked before. Even if it is to clarify yourself, you cannot change it casually. Therefore, it is indeed a good choice for Chen Ming to leave without worrying about the follow-up matters. It is also the safest option that will least affect subsequent plans. But before Chen Ming could say anything in agreement, he suddenly noticed that there seemed to be a faint influence of psychic energy fluctuations around him. The source of this spiritual energy fluctuation was deep underground, and it was still approaching him. 
It seems that the things that were originally staying inside the Cloning Research Institute have come inside along the passage. The surrounding psychic fluctuations became violent again, and communication with Yue was cut off again. Can you think of the following? This idea came to Chunming's mind. But then, he discovered that it wasn't what he thought. What follows is not imagined, but attracts him. At this time, Wei Wang once again contacted Chen Ming through spiritual energy and said, Mr. Chen Ming, are you okay? I'm fine. It's just that something underground in the institute came to the exit of the passage. Its own psychic energy affected the outside. So the communication was cut off. Then you now, it's not a big problem. Not only is the problem not big, Chen Ming even feels a closeness, emotion now. The huge deformed heart below gave Chen Ming the closeness, like a blood-connected relative giving him a full sense of security. I want Chen Ming to jump down and fall into its arms. But, Chen Ming is an orphan, and this feeling makes him extremely awkward. And the sense of danger that accompanies the feeling of closeness in his mind reminds him all the time that the person in his heart is not something easy to get along with. Chen Ming was not fooled at all, and turned to Hui Wang and asked, Now that the situation has changed, are your bosses planning to make any changes now? No. We still prioritize dealing with the flesh and blood on the surface first. That's okay. Chin Ming responded and was still ready to leave. But just when he was about to do so, he suddenly felt a trance in his mind. Something was throbbing. It's not Chin Ming himself. But what's in his mind? Chin Ming panicked for a moment. Was there something in his mind that he didn't notice? Wrong. Chin Ming suddenly remembered. Before, when his iron or help Chin Ming blocked the ruler's deadly three cannons and was destroyed. Psychic fluctuations appeared around the research institute. Chen Ming immediately used his psychic energy waves to sense himself. Immediately afterwards, he discovered that besides his own consciousness, there was also a faint and fuzzy shadow in his mind. The shadow seemed to stay in his mind voluntarily, and at the same time, it was slowly nourished by the spiritual energy fluctuations in Chen Ming's subconscious. So much so that Chen Ming never noticed it. Until now, it suddenly started to move. It wants to get out. It wants to touch that mass of flesh and blood. Chin Ming felt a real feeling from this phantom. As if he saw a being who could trust him with his life. This is what his spirit tells him. Not the closeness imposed by the outside world. Chin Ming directly tried to use spiritual energy waves to contact this phantom. Trying to contact its origin. It is not the dirty flesh and blood tissue derived from Chin Ming's genes. It is a psychic creature derived from Chin Ming's psychic energy. It is symbiotic with Chin Ming. It is the ship spirit. Such a term suddenly appeared in Chen Ming's mind. He had never heard the word, but he just assumed that the thing in his head must be this ship's spirit. When it comes to psychic matters, Chen Ming has always believed in his own instinct rather than his own brain. So, he is doing the same now. Chen Ming opened the buffalo class hatch and looked at the huge heart below. The allure of getting close became more and more obvious with Chen Ming's actions, and the sense of danger also grew. However, the level of danger was actually not as high as when the spiritual nerve penetrated his brain before. Chin Ming was almost unprepared for the previous time. And he almost felt the danger caused by it. The current situation is completely different from before. And Chin Ming is well prepared. In his head, the boat spirit seemed to be in a jumping mood. Chin Ming's body instantly condensed into a complete set of power armor. Equipped with a jetpack and a hydraulic buffer system. However, Chin Ming did not jump directly but first modified a grenade launcher for the buffalo. Loaded with the grenade Chen Ming just made. The internal filling is the special explosives he learned from Zhuijing, as well as some concentrated spacecraft fuel that is only used by fuel transport ships when transporting fuel in large quantities. Chen Ming didn't know how effective it would be, but he should know it right away. He aimed the grenade launcher at the giant, beating, misshapen heart below, and pulled the trigger. Since his continued stay here would interfere with Yu Hui's work, Chin Ming simply helped Yu Hui get the job done. A grenade the size of a human head instantly penetrated into the deformed heart. After a brief silence, bright fire like gushes out from the gaps in the heart muscle tissue. The entire heart was shattered by the impact of the explosion, and the broken pieces of flesh flew out in all directions. On top of the remaining flesh and blood tissue, raging fire burned in the vacuum. The spacecraft fuel itself has a considerable degree of flammability, and the fuel material ratio contains combustion accelerants. The effect of highly concentrated fuel that is easy to store and transport is even more exaggerated. Almost instantly, the area covered by the grenade blast was reduced to blackened ashes. There were only a few pieces of meat that were barely cooked. To be on the safe side, Chin Ming fired another grenade. 
This time, there was no resistance as the flame surged out and completely cleared away the remaining parts of the heart. The impact of the second explosion also completely blew away the ashes of the burned flesh and blood tissue. The passage underneath was still covered by flesh and blood with fresh vitality. And at the moment when the fire of the second grenade exploded dissipated, Chin Ming saw a black shadow wrapped in psychic fluctuations rushing into the passage. That thing should be the source of the violent spiritual energy fluctuations around it. A large flamethrower appeared out of thin air in Chin Ming's hand, which he could hold after putting on the heavy power armor. The fuel storage tank of this thing is also installed with spacecraft fuel, which is definitely the best helper for dealing with the remaining flesh and blood tissue in the channel. Chin Ming pulled the switch of the flamethrower, and after confirming that the injector could easily spray out fire snakes more than 10 meters away, he adjusted his posture in the power armor. Then, he took a step outside. Amidst the frightened screams of Xiaoxer holding his neck and the joyful emotions emanating from the ship's spirit in his mind, Xin Ming jumped off the spacecraft. At this moment, the senior management of Yu Wei, who were monitoring the scene through satellites in orbit around the star, collectively fell into silence. What does Xin Ming want to do? He's going to the Institute. Didn't we want to stop him? Before it had time to contact Xin Ming, an interference signal appeared again around Chen Ming. It was confirmed that the psionic malformed cardiac tissue had moved from the Cloning Research Institute to the exit of the Research Institute. What is Chen Ming doing for? Unknown. There are several possibilities. The spiritual stone, the spiritual nerve extraction device, or the psychic creature. We don't have the ability to stop Chen Ming for the time being. So don't worry about him for now. He won't actively seek death. And since the psychic creatures have changed their locations, the Institute's communication signal should have been restored. Indeed, I'm trying to connect. The connection was successful. The overall framework of the Cloning Research Institute remains intact. But the main circuit systems and security equipment have been damaged. There is only a small amount of power left in the backup circuit that can be used. And it will be completely exhausted in about 30 minutes. Where's G3? Contact is still lost. Its core has not been seen in the Institute and there is no sign of the backup evacuation channel being activated. All equipment in the isolation area has still not been activated. The room where it was installed was like the rest of the Institute's rooms, all covered in distorted heart muscle tissue. And the Chin Ming spiritual stone that I obtained before is not here either. I doubt it was all done by that psychic creature. Would psychic beings be interested in us? Before this question could be answered, the Alpha Level Afterglow connected to the Research Institute interrupted all the other individuals. The institute signal is interfered with again, and psychic creatures are returning to the institute from the channel. Chen Ming forced it back, and he cleaned up all the flesh and blood tissue in the passage. Stop the mechanical team we sent, and see what he is going to do. While Yu Wei senior executives were communicating, Chen Ming had already walked into the passage wearing power armor and carrying a flamethrower, with a heavy flamethrower clearing the way. Everything went smoothly, and every time Chen Ming takes a step, a large amount of ordinary metal liquid will flow out from under his feet, covering the channel behind him and solidifying to form a steel channel. In case the passage collapses later or is blocked by something again, it was Chin Ming's escape route just in case. The psychic flesh and blood organization seemed to sense that Chin Ming's intruder was evil and took the initiative to retreat, seeing that he had retreated to the side of the passage near the Cloning Research Institute. At this time, the boss seemed to have finally woken up and unexpectedly asked Chen Ming through the terminal. Xiao Ming, what's going on with the photo you sent me? Yu Hui was conducting a cloning experiment, and in the end, he got this thing out of nowhere. There were strong psychic fluctuations around it that were interfering with the normal communication equipment. I have an impression of your thing. Something similar appeared during the cloning ban period, but I was dormant during that period, so I don't know much about it. You have to wait for me to check it out. Anyway, don't come into contact with that thing yet. It might be dangerous. If Yu Hui has any thoughts about you, they won't let you get close. Chin Ming glanced at the half passage covered in flesh and blood in front of him and said nothing. The boss immediately discovered the problem and asked, Aren't you already in contact? Also, whose genes did Yu Hui use for cloning? If I can clear this thing out of my genes, wouldn't it be a big problem? The boss looked a little anxious, frowned and said, You asked me to think about your own affairs. I shouldn't interfere in your own affairs. But cloning is a big problem. What should I do? Chin Ming also thought about it and said, Actually, I had no idea of contacting him at the beginning. The boss knew that Chin Ming had another question behind him. So he didn't answer the call. However, 
There is something in my mind that should be called a ship spirit. And it really wants to get in touch with it. Ship spirit? Chapter 139 Dimension Infection After being surprised, the boss immediately asked, How are you sure that the thing in your mind belongs to the boat spirit? Also, how do you know about the boat spirit? Chen Ning couldn't answer the boss's question. He could only answer vaguely based on his own feelings. I'm not sure either. I suddenly sensed the ship spirit just when I was planning to stay away from that big heart. And then, the word automatically popped into my mind. I only know that the ship spirit is symbiotic with me, and is something born from my spiritual energy. The boss thought in silence for a while, and finally chose to believe Chen Ming's words. He had already seen how talented Chen Ming was in psychic abilities. Therefore, even if Chen Ming has not gone through systematic study, and has never seen the ship spirit, he does not know the existence of the ship spirit. After coming into contact with the ship spirit, it was very normal to discover that the ship spirit was born from psychic energy and had traits such as coexisting with psychers. Then let me give you a rough idea. The ship spirit can be regarded as another life of the psyker, and it is an existence that no one can take away. As you know, the ship spirit and the psyker are symbiotic, so it will instinctively protect the psyker. Since your ship spirit is not on the ship but on you, it means your ship is gone. Right. Your ship spirit should have done something. Chen Ning flashed the previous scene in his mind and responded. Yes. My ship was missing from the previous operation of the 14th Legion. And it was indeed protecting me. The boss nodded habitually and continued. But the value of the ship spirit is more than that. It is good at assisting ship control and enhancing the effect of ship AI. And it can also allow your spacecraft to reflect the characteristics of your psychic energy. This is the most critical thing. Enhance AI? Embody traits? That's right. You should have a good understanding of enhanced AI. Spaceships above cruise ships are basically equipped with at least delta-level AI, with Tachyon Technologies' heavy rain level being an exception. The reason why the ship spirit is called the ship spirit is not only derived from the psyker, but also because of the spirituality of the ship spirit. Ship spirit is a psychic creature. It has its own consciousness. Although ship spirit's consciousness is relatively simple, it is enough to make up for the lack of personality in the core of the Delta Level AI. As long as the ship spirit with simple consciousness can cooperate with the Psyker and allocate the computing power of the rigid AI core according to the Psyker's wishes, the effect will be very good, and the ship spirit and the Psyker are symbiotic, and the ship spirit will never be at risk of betrayal. Of course, this effect is not important to you. The boss knows the effects of Chunming's psychic energy. No matter how the ship spirit cooperates with the Psyker himself, it is impossible to compare with the comfort of the Psyker personally controlling a battleship. So the boss just talked about it casually and answered another question from Chen Ming. As for embodying traits, it's more complicated to explain in detail. Let me give you an example. Suppose there is a Psyker who can control fire. If he has a ship spirit, and the ship spirit is attached to a ship, then the ship will show the characteristics of fire in many aspects. Basically fire-related, such as improved engine efficiency, Weapons with built-in flames. And spacecraft shields will have similar effects. This is just something I made up casually. It's a fire-type psyker with relatively rudimentary psychic effects. If it is another type of psyker with more complex abilities, the effect of the characteristics will be very different. When the boss said this, he couldn't help but imagine the future and said, I am also very curious now about what kind of effects your ship spirit can have on your ship. Remember to let the ship spirit board the new ship when you get it. The ship spirit that cooperates with you should be very good. Wrong. The boss suddenly realized the problem and said, Didn't I just tell you about the cloning experiment? I'm going too far. I have already found out the news about the cloning ban period. I had some impressions of these things. After looking up the information, I basically remembered everything. The boss sent several documents to the terminal for Chen Ming to read and said to him at the same time, The first cloning experiment that went wrong was a long time ago. I'm afraid you don't understand. I'll tell you a premise first so that you can understand. All things have animism. But clones don't. Because clones are existences without consciousness. But clones exist in the universe like other creatures. And as long as there are living things, it is possible to acquire psychic energy. Humans will become psychers. And other creatures will become psychic creatures. And the clones might become psychic beings instead of psychers. At this time, Chen Ning was dealing with the flesh and blood tissue in the passage in front of him. While taking the time to look through several documents given by the boss that seemed to be confidential enough to be taken out casually, and at the same time, he was listening to the boss's story, even though Chen Ning is now multitasking. 
when his boss mentioned this paragraph. He still subconsciously said, What about the vegetative state? Vegetative people also have consciousness. But their consciousness is very weak and cannot support their bodies to wake up. Cloning human beings is completely different. They have skipped the stage of normal life development and have no consciousness. Unless cloning human beings only clones genes to obtain embryos and then reproduces through normal means, then there is no problem. Otherwise, it's just a piece of dead flesh. A thing without consciousness. There was some disgust in the boss's voice when he talked about the clones. In short, if an unconscious being possesses rare psychic powers, it is equivalent to a piece of fat hanging on the roadside, which will attract some dirty things hidden in certain corners. Some, you can understand it as similar to hyperspace, but things in the space that we humans cannot set foot on. These things are a bit like the hyperspace ethereal spirits that ships occasionally encounter when they are traveling in hyperspace. This kind of hyperspace virtual spirit, which we currently have no way of investigating its specific image, will at most occasionally watch the hyperspace spacecraft, releasing interference fluctuations that affect the efficiency of the engine. Void spirits are not dangerous to humans. They are just a headache at most. The spacecraft can drive them away by releasing a blocking pulse. But the things in that space that unconscious clones will attract are not at the same level as the dangers of living in hyperspace. The boss introduced the general situation and began to explain to Chen Ming what had happened. According to the records, the body part of the clones affected in the cloning institute where the problem first occurred was the eyes. The effect of being affected is called dimensional infection. Chin Ming intervened at this time and asked, Infection? Isn't it parasitic? I thought it was something from that space that escaped. It's not parasitism. They definitely can't come out of their space at the moment. They can only influence us by following the traces of spiritual energy. In fact, ordinary psychic creatures and psychics can also perceive them but any normal creature will instinctively resist when they perceive them. Only clones will be unable to react. The affected clone's body parts will have distorted consciousness caused by the influence of those things and become a living being. At that time, the situation in the photo you sent almost happened. The eyes have the same distortion as your heart. Right? But the situation is more serious. The ability of this distortion to spread is very terrifying. Ordinary people have no ability to resist at all. They will be affected if they approach directly. The eyes of all affected people will become living individuals. Separated individually. Chin Ming put his hand on his chest and asked, My chest feels a little tight when I'm close to the abnormal heart. Is it spreading? Yes, but you are a psychic. So you are naturally resistant to this kind of thing. But if it's an ordinary person, when he feels chest tightness, his heart will have been distorted and run out on its own. It was like this before. Those living eyeballs scattered after leaving the body. Affecting a very wide range whether it's dead or alive. Anything with eyes will be affected. But can you imagine a habitable planet becoming full of flying eyeballs? Or the entire planet becoming part of the eyes? Or even more. Just think about the consequences of the dimensional infection breaking out in the bustling star field. How many people and things perished at that time, causing unprecedented damage. We have been fighting you way for so many years. And we have a very high tolerance for losses. But the Empire has completely banned cloning experiments. You will know how terrible the negative effects are. Until the end, we barely managed to deal with the dimensional infection. And then block the news and ban cloning research. Chen Ming asked curiously, Then how did you deal with the dimensional infection in the end? A psyker banished these things. Exile? You can think of it as being driven out of our universe and throwing all infected things back to the space where they came from. Well, probably. The boss was a little unsure when he said this and it seemed that he was not too clear about the specific solution and circumstances. But just the part that was said was exaggerated enough. The boss's words were obviously saying that at least one prosperous galaxy in the human empire was infected by the dimension, and this galaxy full of aberrant psychic creatures was thrown back by a psyker. Chen Ming couldn't even imagine how powerful this psyker was. But at this moment, besides focusing on the psyker mentioned by his boss, Chen Ming was also thinking about another thing. Chen Ming now understood the situation around him. Thanks to you, Wei. There is no one here. At most, there is only a group of clones. Therefore, the final harm caused by this cloning experiment was limited to the small area of the Cloning Research Institute. Then, humans should also be able to use this method. Find a few galaxies in the edge star fields with poor resources and far away from the prosperous star fields and build cloning research institutes on them. With super light communication technology, 
Just arrange for robots and equipment to be controlled remotely. If there is a problem, just block the galaxy and find a way to deal with it from a distance. If the planet cannot handle the small satellite, it can certainly handle it. It will certainly not be difficult to build some research institutes on the satellite. So why doesn't the Empire do this? Qin Ming knew that there must be a reason for the Empire not to do this. So he asked the question directly. The boss answered quickly. Actually, there was no cloning ban when the dimension infection was just dealt with. The ban was promulgated about half a year later than this incident. Because after dealing with a dimensional infection, the Empire does have thoughts similar to yours. However, all subsequent cloning experiments, all, have been affected, and all clones have become distorted. Although after the dimensional infection is dealt with, the subsequent distortions are only physical distortions of the clones. They have no psychic impact, and the harm caused is relatively small. But no matter how small the harm is, it depends on the overall scale. No matter how small the problem is, if it occurs in the entire empire, it will not be a small problem. Guess why? Chin Ming had one answer for something he didn't understand at all. I don't know. The boss obviously did not expect Chin Ming to guess correctly. Chin Ming said before he could finish his words, Those things that we think are causing the dimensional infection have roughly positioned the empire's position in the universe through the dimensional infection. So they can continue to exert an influence on the entire empire. All unconscious clones will suffer severely. Fortunately, clones with psychic abilities are a small probability event after all. And the overall situation is within the range that can be handled. But beyond their effect on clones, their influence also affects the empire's newborns on a massive scale. Many newborn babies and even embryos have abnormalities. They are too fragile. Even if they have complete consciousness, they will inevitably be affected by that kind of terrifying thing for a long time. Chen Ming immediately understood the seriousness of the matter. And at the same time, he suddenly understood what consequences Yu Hui's actions would have on them. Just as Chen Ming Gang wanted to ask how this sequelae was solved, the boss told him what he wanted to ask. Fifteen years after this incident broke out, as time passed, the position between our two spaces changed. Deviated. They lost their position in the Empire in another dimension. And the situation gradually eased. It is this terror that completely cuts off the future of mankind that leads to the existence of the ban. If Yu Wei is causing trouble now, we are afraid that there will be another massive decrease in newborns. I will report this matter later through my connections. I don't know what will happen next. But we will definitely make big moves against Yu Wei. Otherwise, if Yu Wei takes advantage of this, our demise will be within a few generations. Your abilities will have a more solid foundation as soon as they have the afterglow. So you'd better take action as soon as possible. Chin Ming tried his best to quickly digest the information that normal people would never have access to in this life. At the same time, he couldn't help but ask, Are all the recorded documents written in such detail? The boss said casually. Because in addition to talking to you, I am also talking to other people who know this matter. It is always good to know more people. Oh wait. The boss suddenly thought of something and asked Chin Ming nervously. Are you sure that Yu Wei cloned you? Right. That's a bit troublesome. According to subsequent investigation records, although the consequences of dimension infection are spread throughout the empire, but the gene provider of the clone that first appeared, that is, the Psyker, encountered some trouble later. Those things may target you as the provider of genes. There's nothing you can do about it. You won't be able to keep your genes when you get to Yue's place. You can't stop Yue from trying to kill you with your genes. But now that you know it, it's best not to go directly to the outer star field when you leave Yue. It's best to come back, and I'll take you to meet someone. Who? The person who originally threw his eyes into other dimensions is the president of our psychic society. Good. Chin Ming was very curious about taking the lead in organizing such a boss, who obviously had a decisive position. But there are some things he still has to say. But I feel fine now. There is no problem. Well, that psyker thought so too at the beginning. Well, what happened next? Did he die? That's not true. He is still chatting with me now. And you can see him when you come back. Chin Ming asked with some surprise and uncertainty. President? Right. Many thoughts flashed through Chin Ming's mind. But before he could say anything, he was interrupted by an unexpected situation around him. Just when he was chatting with his boss, he unknowingly arrived at the door of the cloning laboratory. And here, there is a thing waiting for him. A person, like a mannequin. It has no skin on its body. And if you look closely, you will find that all its muscle tissue is forcibly needed from heart muscle tissue. 
Even the eyes just forced a ball of flesh and blood inside. Chin Ming felt the tightness in his chest and the obviously twisted feeling of closeness again. But what made Chin Ming really feel the danger was inside the research institute behind it. Chin Ming took a photo and sent it to his boss and said, Boss, I encountered something here. I'll tell you later. He needs to concentrate on solving the problem in front of him first. Chin Ming stopped. He could feel the excitement, excitement and greed of the boat spirit in his mind, as well as the nervousness of Xiao Xiaoxer next to him. However, Xiao Xiaoxer has shown the potential of psychic powers, and it has been in contact with Chin Ming's Whispering Stone for almost the same time as Chin Ming, and even had a lot of fairy tree tea to supplement it. Besides, when Chin Ming felt chest tightness before, Xiao Xiaoxer didn't sleep soundly, so he could tell that there was something special about Xiao Xiaoxer. Therefore, Xiao Xiaoxer itself can actually be regarded as a psychic creature, but the specific effect of psychic energy is still unclear. Otherwise, Chin Ming wouldn't be able to bring it down. Now it is not a problem for Xiao Xiaoxer to hit a normal adult male, but his nervousness is more instinctive. Chin Ming tilted his head and rubbed Xiao Xiaoxer to comfort it, and immediately kept a distance and activated the micro sensor he modified on the power armor. Sensor similar to those of a spaceship, capable of simply scanning something, and inside the distorted flesh and blood in front of Chin Ming. He saw an alpha level core connected by flesh and blood tissue, as well as the two ectoplasmic stones he had lost. The distorted flesh and blood seemed to notice something, and suddenly opened its mouth and said in an unclear voice, You. But Chin Ming didn't bother to worry about why G3's core and his ectoplasmic stone were in this thing's body. And he didn't give it any chance to talk nonsense. When it said its first word, the flamethrower raised by Chin Ming spit out a fiery snake. The red flames instantly wrapped around the distorted flesh and blood. But the effect was not very obvious. Because there is a wave of spiritual energy entangled in the body of the distorted flesh and blood. Although the words of the distorted flesh and blood were suppressed by the flamethrower, it itself took a step forward in the fire. A protective type of psionic power? This thought flashed through Chun Ming's mind. And he suddenly frowned and covered his chest. The ship spirit in his brain seemed to sense something and took the initiative to leave the brain and go to the position of the heart, protecting Chin Ming from the pressure exerted by the distorted flesh and blood. This eliminates the need for Chin Ming to devote a large amount of mental energy to protect himself. After feeling that the chest tightness was slightly relieved, Chin Ming released the hand covering his chest and waved it slightly behind him. At this time, the distorted flesh and blood that seemed to have the upper hand opened its mouth. No. As soon as it said a word, it was suddenly thrown to the ground by a robot that flew out from behind Chin Ming. Of course, Chin Ming also rubbed the robot on the spot. Originally, Chin Ming wanted to decorate it with explosives and explode it with aberrant flesh and blood. But after thinking about it, he couldn't do it if it exploded underground. So just setting up some chainsaw blades and stuff like that. For mechanical arms equipped with saw blades swung at the twisted flesh and blood that was knocked down. For a moment, flesh and blood flew everywhere and the two arms with distorted flesh and blood were instantly removed. But at the next moment, a sudden electromagnetic pulse swept across the passage in front of the Institute. This is also the spiritual power of distorted flesh and blood. However, Chin Ming's robot shook slightly. It seemed that such an intensity of electromagnetic pulse was just interference to it and did not completely paralyze it. The power armor worn by Chin Ming is also the same. This is because Chin Ming has just learned something new recently. Some of the things I got from Bai Quan were considered as deposits and were used to protect against electromagnetic pulse military technology. The military, whether it is the 14th Legion or the military in various star regions, their spacecraft shields are very poor. Therefore, in many battles, they will choose to turn off the shield and use the armor of the spacecraft to resist weapon damage. But armor is unable to withstand things like electromagnetic pulses. Therefore, the technology of the 14th Legion in this area is very powerful. What Chin Ming got from Bai Quan was the top anti-electromagnetic interference technology. In the past, Chin Ming suffered from lack of education, technology, and money. The equipment used in the spacecraft he drove did not have this technology. That's different now. With technology, we can always find a way to deal with this kind of problem. Chin Ming did not lose his calm due to the physical and psychological effects. And in the blink of an eye, he suppressed the distorted flesh and blood again. The robot instantly cut the distorted flesh into sticks. However, the distorted flesh and blood saw that the situation was not right. And violent arcs of electricity visible to the naked eye actually flashed on the body. 
The terrifying power brought by high pressure cannot be blocked by Chen Ming's casual robot. In the blink of an eye, the robot fell to the ground, emitting black smoke. Chapter 140 Clear Although the robot failed to resist the attack of the distorted heart arc, but fortunately, the remaining arc was diverted away by the metal channels that condensed along the way Chen Ming walked and could not hurt Chen Ming. These metals that have not completely solidified under Chen Ming's control still have very good conductive effects. Suddenly, several blood vessels like heart arteries extended out from the position of the deformed flesh and blood severed limb that fell to the ground. Connecting the limb that fell to the ground. After the limbs were glued back together, and when the flesh and blood sprouted and began to repair, the distorted flesh and blood opened its mouth again. I, it hasn't finished speaking yet. It was knocked down again by the robot that Chen Ming quietly repaired behind it. But this time the saw blade made a jingling sound like sawing on metal when cutting on its flesh. The steel saw blade broke and flew out on the spot. And the broken blade penetrated the flesh and blood on the wall next to it. The flesh and blood on his side opened his twisted mouth again and said, Defense. But this time it only had one word coming out. Chen Ming had instantly replaced the robot with a saw blade made of super grade metal material that he had been carrying in the maintenance kit that the company had distributed to maintenance technicians. The robot's mechanical arm passed by, and the distorted fleshy head fell directly to the ground. For a moment, Chen Ning seemed to see a hint of anger on his face, which was made of deformed flesh and blood and contained only myocardial tissue. It relied on the hard muscle tissue to forcefully turn its head on the ground, pulled its vocal cords and said, Protect. The words that the distorted flesh and blood finally spoke were blocked again by Chen Ming using a handheld grenade launcher he had just made. The launch grenade was accurately inserted into the mouth of the head, whose distorted flesh fell to the ground. The grenade also exploded instantly. The grenade made by Chen Ming uses the same material ratio as the one he just used in the Buffalo-class grenade launcher. But the yield is much smaller. It can only be said that he is additionally reinforcing this passage. So there is basically no need to worry about the passage being blown down. But no matter how powerful it is, it won't necessarily be the case. However, the current power is enough to completely blow the distorted flesh and blood head to pieces, making it unable to utter a single word again. The remaining half of its body was drawn out from the ground burning with blazing fire. But suddenly there was another arc of electricity that knocked away the robot that was pressed against half of the distorted flesh and blood body. At the same time, extremely obvious spiritual energy fluctuations directly wrapped around the gap in the remaining half of its body. All the charred parts faded away and the bright red flesh and blood tissue grew back at a speed visible to the naked eye. The price of such rapid growth is that the upper body of distorted flesh and blood has completely lost its human appearance, becoming just a mass of twisted flesh and blood crowded together. However, it still forcibly formed the distorted mouth. You, the words of the distorted flesh and blood had just started when Chen Ming's second grenade hit it again. This time, the distorted flesh and blood was not blown to pieces. It was just knocked to the ground by the impact of the explosion. And the damage was basically no damage. Chen Ming's repaired robot also pounced on it. But what surprised Chen Ming even more was that the saw blade made of special materials failed to cut through its protection. Corrosive blood even spilled out of the distorted flesh and blood. And the robot was completely corroded in the blink of an eye. All parts of the robot's body that are touched by blood become extremely fragile and will be completely shattered by any external force. Fortunately, the saw blade was not damaged. Chen Ming easily dismantled the robot that was no longer of use and recovered and put away the most important saw blade. Ordinary robots seemed to be ineffective. So Chen Ming could only use some special method before the distorted flesh and blood had time to make a move. For more robots with external armor exuding the luster of dolomite steel pounced on it. They are not equipped with attack weapons such as saw blades, but only have thickened armor and more limbs to fix the target. The distorted flesh and blood was immediately unable to move under the embrace of the four robots. It immediately released corrosive blood and flashing arcs of electricity again. But several robots have directly locked each other. Moreover, Chen Ming is still modifying these robots. The modification method is also very simple. That is, stacking materials. Purely stacking materials. All the materials with reasonably good protective properties are packed in at once. Regardless of whether they are reasonable or not and whether they can be moved or not. In short, they are all stuffed in, just relying on the amount of material. He trapped the distorted flesh and blood in a metal cube. The metallic liquid flows in the space inside the cube, gradually seeping into the body of distorted flesh and blood. Then, 
Chin Ning completely solidified the metal and cut the distorted flesh and blood into pieces from the inside. The metal cube was dismantled by Chin Ning. And what was exposed was a pile of mincemeat mixed with metal fragments. And a few things from Chin Ning peeking out from the mincemeat. When Chin Ning cut the distorted flesh and blood from the inside, he deliberately avoided the core of G3 and his spiritual stone in the distorted flesh and blood body. Now is the time to harvest. Chin Ning built a robot again and prepared to take away these things. The distorted flesh and blood struggled desperately to put a head back together and also struggled to build a mouth again. He, the distorted flesh and blood still only said one word. And the door of the cloning research institute behind it suddenly made a muffled sound. A piece of the steel gate protruded directly outward, which was a sign of damage caused by brute force. Chin Ning immediately created a white cloud steel wall in front of him, and cautiously retreated to a safe position where he could withdraw from the passage at any time. Immediately afterwards, an extremely thick tentacle of flesh and blood smashed into the door of the research institute and hit the robot that was walking towards the distorted flesh and blood, instantly crushing the robot. However, the tentacles did not continue to attack Chen Ming, who was retreating further and further away. Instead, they rolled up the distorted flesh and blood that shattered into pieces on the ground. The tentacles want to bring it back to the inside of the institute and integrate it with the institute covered in flesh and blood. Chen Ning was able to detect that this tentacle did not have self-awareness and that there was no second conscious creature within the research institute that produced the tentacle at this time. It seems that the distorted flesh and blood which are the core of the entire institute, have condensed the human form alone. And they want to communicate with Chin Ming. But every time it spoke, it was blocked by Chin Ming. And even now, before it was brought into the research institute, the distorted flesh and blood still struggled stubbornly and said to Chin Ming with its head, Mom, after saying the last word, the distorted flesh and blood seemed to be finally satisfied. All the taut cardiac muscle tissue relaxed, allowing the tentacles to wrap it up into the roots of the tentacles which were the high walls of flesh and blood tissue inside the institute. At this time, Chin Ming only had a question mark on his head. He didn't understand it all. Even if the genetic source of the distorted flesh and blood was his, there was no need to recognize the relatives on the spot. Right? But he immediately realized that the last three words spoken by the distorted flesh and blood were connected. So Chin Ming asked the brilliant person next door, Can G3 swear? Although Huiwan cannot see Chin Ming's situation, it has indeed maintained contact with Chen Ming. So it responded quickly and decisively. Yes. The language data of all Yue individuals are imported from the human database. We know all the sentences used in normal language environments, including swear words, but we don't speak them under normal circumstances. Now Chen Ning knew why the distorted flesh could curse. As expected, I learned a lot from G3 using the core of G3. What a deformed creature that was infected by beings from other dimensions and risked its life to say was a curse word. It can only be said that it has no character at all. But being dragged back into a pile of rotten meat is not a bad thing. Although the tentacles have been withdrawn into the institute, Chen Ming still maintains a safe distance. After all, the brute force of that tentacle was quite dangerous to his fragile body. Anyway, the angle he was at now was just enough to see clearly what happened to the distorted flesh and blood after it was dragged back and there was no need to get too far forward. Chin Ming could see that in addition to the thick layer of flesh and blood tissue on the wall next to him, there were also many corpses with broken chests of clones stuck together with flesh and blood. There are also several thick blood vessels on these clones connected to the wall that has just been integrated with fragments of distorted flesh, which seems to be supplying nutrients to the wall. Just when Chin Ming carefully inspected the surrounding environment, the tentacles suddenly separated in half. The section was wrapped in a large amount of granulation and repaired itself into two thinner tentacles, which curled up on the wall. And at the edge of the curled up tentacles, the wall of flesh and blood suddenly began to bulge. The distorted flesh and blood that had been crushed before emerged here, gradually forming a deformed heart that Chin Ming had seen several times. The two split tentacles constitute the two blood vessels of the heart. The institute's deformed heart suddenly started beating. The heavy heartbeat sounded as if every beat was pressing on Chin Ming's heart trying to make Chin Ming's heartbeat gradually become the same as the beating frequency of the abnormal heart. This is not a good thing. Although the ship spirit was already helping to protect him, the effect was not ideal. Chin Ming could still feel that his heart was under heavy pressure. And the closeness that comes from genetic origin also makes Chin Ming's rationality gradually fade. Chin Ming even had the feeling that as long as he went over and came into contact with these flesh and blood, he could control everything around him. However, 
The sense of danger in Chen Ming's mind became more and more obvious at this time, allowing him to clearly realize that this was an illusion. As long as he dares to go there, there will be only one consequence. He will be assimilated by these flesh and blood tissues. As the distorted flesh and blood was dragged back to the research institute by the tentacles, the distorted flesh and blood merged with the research institute. Chin Ming had to face all kinds of troubles that gave him a headache for a while. But there was a smile on his face under the power armor helmet. Because he has realized that the core thing of the entire institute is the huge heart after the distortion of flesh and blood has been integrated. By killing him, the purpose of his coming down will be achieved. And the needs of the ship spirit will be satisfied. Although Chen Ming didn't know the benefits of satisfying it. But his instinct would not lie to him. And neither could the ship spirit who coexisted with him. Moreover, Chen Ming basically didn't understand psychic matters. So there would definitely be nothing wrong with listening to instinct and ship spirits. So now there is only one last step left to achieve his goal. At this moment, Chen Ming suddenly noticed that a large amount of flesh and blood tissue appeared behind him. They spread out from the gaps between the soil, trying to block Chen Ming's retreat. But what Chen Ming did before was not in vain. He clearly knew that the channel itself was made of metal. And after the flesh and blood tissue was removed, the remaining channel seemed completely unnecessary to be covered with metallic liquid. It seemed a bit unnecessary. But he did it anyway. And the current situation is the reason for him to do this. Chen Ming forcibly solidified the metallic liquid he left in the passage behind him, completely covering the passage with a layer, not giving flesh and blood tissue a chance to seal the passage. Flesh and steel are squeezing each other's living space. These flesh and blood with the spiritual blessing of distorted flesh and blood can even gain a slight upper hand in the confrontation with steel. Chen Ning thought for a moment and used spiritual energy to directly pour a large amount of molten iron into the entire passage, completely sealing it. Anyway, he can dismantle the steel and open the passage at any time. But if these flesh and blood tissues want to drill through a metal pillar that is at least 3 meters in diameter, it can only be thought of. The flesh and blood tissue quickly calmed down. I don't know if they thought it was hopeless to dismantle the metal pillars, or because they thought their purpose of blocking Chen Ming's path had been achieved. But the heart that had been beating silently on the far wall suddenly started to move. A crack suddenly appeared on the surface of the heart, and blood spurted out and fell onto the flesh and blood on the ground, before being reabsorbed by it. However, Chen Ming's focus now is not on the blood, but on the heart whose distorted flesh and blood actively split. What he saw in that crack was not blood-soaked myocardial tissue, but a pitch-black abyss with dots of scarlet starlight. No, the thing in the crack looks more like a starry sky than an abyss. After feeling Chen Ming's gaze, the starry sky suddenly exuded a terrifying suction force. Not a physical attraction, but a conscious one. Before Chen Ming could react, in the blink of an eye, he discovered that the environment around him had changed drastically. He returned to the steel jungle under the deep starry sky that he had entered in a coma. And he was now on the top of a hill made of shipwrecks in the middle of the forest. With his previous experience, Chen Ning instantly realized that his consciousness was involved here. This is where the psyker's consciousness originates. And when Chen Ning arrived here this time, he also found that the wreckage of his iron mine also appeared on the hill formed by the wreckage of the spaceship. And it was right on the top of the hill. But when Chen Ning just saw the wreckage of the iron ore, the wreckage under his feet was suddenly completely shrouded by a shadow. After Chen Ming sensed his own spiritual energy fluctuations entwining the shadow, the shadow wandered around the iron ore. The iron mine, which was still a wreck, seemed to have been repaired by his spiritual power, and it was restored to a brand new appearance again. The engine started and it took off. Chen Ming also successfully entered the iron, or through the top hatch of the iron, or, and reached the captain's cabin. It was obvious that this scene was caused by the ship spirit, which appeared in what was probably the space of Chen Ming's consciousness. Since it temporarily gave up protecting Chen Ming's heart and came here. That means, Chen Ming's consciousness controlled the iron mind to fly high into the sky and look into the distance. Before, Chen Ming was in the steel jungle and could not see the entire jungle. But now, he could see it clearly. The iron jungle is an island floating in the surrounding starry sky. And on the edge of the isolated island, a disgusting mass of flesh and blood tissue had clung to it. The flesh and blood is spreading, and the steel is being eroded. This is an attack from the distorted flesh and blood. This is the most essential spiritual collision between spiritual energies. Chen Ming suddenly had this realization in his heart again. This kind of mental power collision is different from the normal mental power that is converted into concrete spiritual energy and then collides again. It can ignore the specific effects of psychic energy 
and only look at the most basic and essential spiritual power of psychics and psychic creatures. Let the owners of offensive psychic powers and the owners of auxiliary psychic powers be on the same starting line. Although Chen Ming didn't know what the distorted flesh and blood thought. But now that's all. Then Chen Ming had to show that he had completely exhausted his mental power every day for nearly a year. And he had exercised his mental power by sleeping with a lying stone that could kill people just by touching it. Although Chen Ming didn't know much about this consciousness space. He couldn't control the wreckage of the spacecraft and couldn't directly bomb it with a cruiser. However, Chen Ming is still able to control the simplest mental power. What Chen Ming was doing in terms of psychic energy at this time was displayed in a more practical situation in this steel jungle. As Chen Ming concentrated his mental power, he used it to push back the distorted flesh and blood that seemed to have invaded his consciousness. Countless pieces of broken steel rolled out of the jungle, pounced on the flesh and blood tissue growing on the edge of the island like a tsunami. Although a considerable amount of steel was shattered by the flesh tentacles extended by the distorted flesh, more metal fragments were inserted into its flesh, causing extremely considerable damage. For a moment, the mass of flesh and blood tissue was crumbling like a tumor parasitic on the edge of the island, and might fall out of the starry sky at any time. But suddenly, Chen Ming's face turned extremely pale. He sensed a real danger, an extremely terrifying danger. Until now, Chen Ming had only felt this level of danger when he was on the pirate space station during the afterglow attack, and when he was sitting on the iron, or and was almost brushed by the torrent of particles from the tachyon spear, and the source of the danger he is encountering now. Chin Ming looked up and looked farther into the starry sky. Something seemed to be coming outside the starry sky of his conscious world. Cold sweat appeared on Chin Ming's forehead. He no longer steadily rolled up the steel with his mental power, but directly released the maximum mental power he could mobilize at once. A corner of the steel jungle became bald, and the flesh and blood tissue clinging to the edge of the island completely fell in the steel storm, and disappeared into the starry sky. As the sense of danger gradually disappeared, Chen Ming's consciousness returned to himself in an instant. The crack in the starry sky on the giant deformed heart in front of me has disappeared, leaving only a real laceration wound. Chen Ming gasped subconsciously, adjusting his heartbeat that was already racing rapidly without even realizing it. What gave him the sense of danger just now must be what the boss said before. The thing in another dimension. It followed the position of the distorted flesh and found it. No wonder the distorted flesh and blood wanted to pull him into the consciousness space. Just to pull what was behind it. Fortunately, Chin Ming responded quickly. Otherwise something would happen to the iron ingot. Chin Ming breathed a sigh of relief and concentrated again. The biggest trouble has been dealt with quickly by him. And now there is only one last problem that needs to be solved. His eyes seemed to be able to see through the surface of the distorted flesh and blood of the heart. And were locked directly on the two ectoplasm stones that were providing energy for the heart's activity. Chin Ming has actually always been able to sense the existence of the Lie Stone. But it was vague when it was on the surface before. But now, as Chin Ming approaches a certain distance from the Lie Stone, this vague feeling can no longer affect Chin Ming. Even though the Lie Stone was inside the distant heart, Chin Ming could still clearly sense it, and still have control over it. The psychic fluctuations of the distorted flesh and blood tissue itself could not stop Chin Ming from sensing the Lie Stone nor could he completely control the life stone. Although it has a wide range of spiritual energy fluctuations, it even interferes with the surrounding environment because of this large range of spiritual energy fluctuations. But after Chen Ming experienced it himself, he could only say that they were all false. The aberration of flesh and blood itself is caused by the aggregation of various aberrant individuals, resulting in its chaotic nature and some effects that it cannot control at all. If the aberrant flesh and blood has a sufficient growth environment, there are enough people and creatures for him to grow. Then these special properties may be really difficult to solve under the control of its ability. But now, with the distorted flesh and blood barely composed of these clones, it can only be said that it is impossible to possess such abilities. Then what Chen Ning has to do is very simple. Activate the Lying Stone as the energy source of distorted flesh and blood with the highest intensity. Didn't your father teach you not to eat randomly? Oh, I really haven't taught it. After Chen Ming recognized his relatives, he directly relied on the psychic link method he had mastered after realizing the resonance of the spiritual stone to activate the liar stone, which was slowly outputting psychic fluctuations to the outside world. The false words of harmful psychic energy that made people crazy and seemed to be close to reality spread instantly in the small underground space. Although lies itself had no effect on these twisted and chaotic flesh and blood tissues, 
the extreme intensity of psychic fluctuations still caused them to suffer unprecedented stimulation and damage. In particular, Chen Ning is using his own mental power as an amplifier to increase the intensity of psychic fluctuations to a higher level. Not to mention the fact that the distorted flesh and blood directly place the live stone in his body. All the high intensity and damaging psychic energy fluctuations are fully consumed. The heart spilled copious amounts of blackened blood from the wound it had previously opened. The heart was also beating violently at this time. And the beating frequency doubled. However, this rapid beating put less pressure on Chen Ning's heart than before. At this time, Chen Ning could still see that the corpses of the surrounding clones bound by flesh and blood were all beginning to shrivel up. And even a large amount of surrounding flesh and blood tissue was also becoming shriveled up. It's like the life is being sucked out of the heart to make up for the damage caused by the live stone. The violent heartbeat suddenly began to affect Chen Ning again, causing Chen Ning's heartbeat to become chaotic again. But fortunately, the boat spirit appeared again in time and protected Chen Ning. Several tentacles grew from the cracks in the heart, flashing with electric arcs and waving wildly, trying to get close to Chen Ning and kill him. But Chen Ning had the foresight to run far away before. Now that he saw something was wrong, he immediately dismantled the passage that he had blocked with a large amount of metal materials before and continued to retreat. At the same time, four new robots appeared beside him and pounced on the extending tentacles. This time, in addition to installing electromagnetic interference equipment on the robot, Chen Ming also modified some voltage protection measures to alleviate the current type psychic energy controlled by the distorted flesh and blood. Although it cannot be said that it can withstand a few more blows, at least it will not be damaged by direct electricity in one encounter. And these four robots did successfully help Chen Ning capture a few tentacles. And in this process, the damage caused by the lying stone to the distorted flesh and blood is still increasing. But the distorted flesh and blood dare not give up the liar stone at will. Once it gives up, it will completely lose its ability to move. Now it can only try to use the countless flesh and blood inside to squirm crazily on the surface of the lie stone, trying to penetrate its spiritual energy into the lie stone. But the liar stone that resonates with Chen Ning is not so easy to get in touch with. Under the desperate manipulation of the distorted flesh and blood, more flesh and blood inside the entire institute became shriveled. Even the tentacles that came to attack Chen Ning all fell limply. The beating frequency of the distorted flesh and blood heart gradually slowed down after severe stimulation. It's not that it has recovered. It's that it can no longer bear it. The extremely weak, distorted flesh and blood completely lost the ability to resist. And even the heart itself was gradually drying up. Feeling that the sense of danger faded, Chen Ming approached the research institute again. He stood at the extreme distance and raised the flamethrower. The fire burned in his heart again. This time, the psionic heart tissue produced by different clones came together to form a distorted flesh and blood that could no longer use its protective psionic powers. Soon the entire heart was burned away by the flames, leaving only charcoal on the ground. And in this charcoal, G3's alpha-level core, Chen Ming's two ectoplasm stones, were both lying safely in it,